Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and check everything's working. I think we are somewhat stable. I'm kind of getting readings all over the place in OBS here, but hopefully it's going to hold out pretty well um, for now. So yeah, hopefully uh, my internet is not going to keep uh, screwing me around. But if it does buffer, just refresh and hopefully everything uh, will work fine. Looks like it's uh, going okay so far though. So there we go. Right, and uh, so in chat we have, um, I see Fade was in the last stream, so she gets uh, she gets the super hashtag early crew. <laughs> and uh, I saw Hell here, Melza, and Cantadia Saravan. Welcome to the stream, guys. How are you all doing? So you, uh, you guys have seen the current infinite screen of awesomeness right now. Um, but we have a poll up here for what you guys want me to add in uh, in this stream, or what you want me to work on. So we got a choice of four things. We've got chicken coops, cooking stations, more foods, or work on more of the industrial stuff. So Currently we have, um, looking like we have five, uh, seven votes now, and uh, most of it has gone towards, we've got three chicken coops right here, so I guess that's the most popular thing, followed by the industrial, followed by cooking stations and foods. Okay, um, so that's what it is so far, so I guess we can have a go and try some stuff with that. Um, I currently have an idea how we're going to do it. I was actually doing a bit of research into it today. So yeah, hopefully it's all going to be good. And we have Hell in the chat with me as well. So uh, if I miss anything, I'm sure he'll let me know. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we've got eight votes now, uh, more industrial. OK, so kind of a toss up between chicken coops and uh, more industrial at this point. So that's fine. Uh, we can kind of go a bit uh, ahead with a bit of both. Uh, side vote for more muppetry. More muppetry. <laughs> well, that's the that's just me in general, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm a muppet. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely me in general. So okay, it's very uh, very balanced so far. Let's just uh, I'll wait a little bit just to see if we get any more votes coming in here. Uh, and faces uh, and my gloves, <laughs> those gram encrusted rubber gloves. <laughs> Uh, I had to make that a. Um, I guess what I could use is for that as the base. I could use the hazmat gloves um, as the base item for that. Now I think about it. I'm not sure what ability they would have though. Um, but yeah, okay, I'll, I'll leave it up a little bit more, and then we'll see. Um, just see if anyone else pops in and votes. But if not, then I guess we'll. Uh, if it's going to be a choice of these two, I guess we'll flip a coin, and then we'll go for whatever it lands on. So either head, we can do you know heads for chicken coops or tails for more industrial. So we'll see what it we'll see what it lands on in that case. So yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait about a minute more, um, and see how we go, and then if it's whatever it is then we'll go from there so yeah just keeping an eye on the poll here i actually prefer the huge polls as well because they seem to be because the straw ones from nightbot are really good but these ones seem to be that they you know the straw ones you can add as many options as you want but these ones kind of update more in real time so it's a lot it's kind of a lot easier to see i don't have to keep refreshing the page and they're like instant as well so as you guys vote um it pretty much goes ahead and uh, instantly updates there which is really really nice so all right. Well, as long as we spend as much time with Max on the poll, I'm sure everybody will be happy. Of course, because everyone wants to see my head on a poll. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that that that'd be shillings. Get him, boys. <laughs> it's like no. <laughs> All right. So once it takes up to eight minutes, I think we'll go ahead and call the poll there. So it looks like the uh, looks like the choices then is definitely veering towards the chicken coops or the more industrial so yeah looks like we're gonna be i'm gonna be getting out a coin flipping it dropping it by accident picking it up trying again dropping it <laughs> all right so there we go guys we are we are at that point i just saw a couple more people pop into the stream though so uh, if you guys um if you guys want to vote in the poll get your votes in now um for what you want to see me add so it's going once it is going twice and i think we are sold to the highest bidders, which is chicken coops and more industrial. So uh, they were both uh, they were both tied in the vote here. So let's see what we got. See what we can do. So I'm going to get a coin out. Uh, I'm going to flip a coin. Uh, if I can find or we could just go straight industrial chicken farming and feed the world. <laughs> industrial chicken farming. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You, I, I will eventually allow you to be able to automate like the collection of eggs and stuff. Um, I do intend for that to happen. So if you played like modern Minecraft, where you have like transport pipes and I'm, you know, auto depositing of items and stuff, that is planned. So 
yeah, oh, there's wow. a, a, lot, a lot of stuff like that is planned for Fennec, so it's going to be pretty cool. Um, add in Fady Wicker yeah. crafting mods with cauldron and all. I actually found a good cauldron model on the Unity Asset Store. It's it's a, it's like all uh, it's like got like purple liquid inside it and everything. It's re it's actually really cool. <laughs> um, let's see. So uh, I guess uh, I don't have a coin to flip, so I'll flip my debit card and we'll see what uh, we'll see what we got here. So <laughs> so uh, chip side up, we're doing uh, we're doing chicken coops. Chip side down, we're doing industrial. So here we go. Let me just throw my card up in the air, catch it. That's, uh, this, that's such an excuse, Max. I, I'm just picturing you walking down the street and somebody going, do you got any change? Industry and... Oh, they just threw a coin at me and I completely lost where it went. <laughs> I, I just had a, I just had a coin Max just like... Begging for change. <laughs> I don't even know where it went. <laughs> I just said, ow! <laughs> She's throwing coins at me! Right, I got I got, it, I got, it, I got one. And then, why, why is there a nut down on well, the What floor? did you expect to happen when you said you were on a pole? <laughs> well, this is just, she's still throwing coins at me. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> okay, I got, I, I, I got two, I got two of the coins. I don't know where the third one went, but that's all right. I got, I got two. <laughs> she, she's, she's lining it up here. She's got all the coins like aligned, and she's like getting ready to like. It's like the fucking peanut gallery right here. <laughs> <laughs> all right so here we go then we'll go have a flip so uh icy's in the stream says that uh, industry plus chicken equals kfc popeyes versus zombies <laughs> there we go <laughs> so let's go and have a flip so okay here we go i've got a coin this time so heads for the chicken coops tails for industry so let's go and flip it drop it catch it flip it again uh okay heads so i guess we're doing the uh guess we're doing the chicken coops one then Alrighty, so this is gonna be in this is gonna be a bit in depth, but here we go then. So chicken coops, let's get started. So let's go and close this other stuff down that I don't need for now. Um, says making it rain, and Melza says money for the poor. <laughs> money for the. <laughs> Can you throw a coin for a poor boy? <laughs> All right, here we go then. So let's go over from Visual Studio because I actually have a block already written that can uh, somewhat do what I want to do. So. Let me have a look here. And I've already got the, uh, a while ago, I did already write the stuff for actually being able to catch a chicken. So pretty much if you kill it when, when you're using your fist, instead of actually killing it, it will actually go into your inventory as an item. So I've kind of got something along those lines. Uh, Fade says, come on, Max. I have, I, I threw four pence to you. That must be worth at least one item of, uh, of clothes off. <laughs> All right, hang on. I'll take off a sock. Here we go. <laughs> here you go, here you go, Fanny. The, the, the sock is off right here. Just I'm, I'm waving it around. <laughs> oh, actually, that's quite quite nice. Uh, quite a nice little fan effect there. That's cooling me down. <laughs> here, if you're gonna go Darkness Falls style, snare snare trap should be added to the chicken coops. Snare traps, what yeah. The other two are called. That one collects meat, the other collects eggs and feathers. Yeah, well, you got the, the the kind of like the nest lock will collect the eggs and feathers and stuff. But what I was thinking of doing is like the way st the way starvation did it was they had it like um they had it where you would like put the chickens as items into the block and then it would go ahead and and turn those you know with, with like chicken feed and stuff and it would turn those into like eggs and stuff over time for the way i wanted to do it was to actually have entities walking around in the world and have our block kind of be like okay how many and how many chickens around it and if there's chickens is there chicken feed inside it and if there is and it's like oh, okay maybe take some of that chicken feed and have a have a chance to turn it into uh have a chance to turn it into an egg kind of thing like that might be pretty cool um there you go. And Fade says, yeah, sorry, guys. He takes more off the food. <laughs> uh, a Fady Wiccan starts to turn Trader wrecked into a toad. <laughs> How'd that even work? I don't know. Fade just, Fade just like go, goes up to him and goes, put some bloody claws on then. <laughs> just turns into no, a toad. We have a contradictory comment there, though. Come on, Max. I threw four pence at you. That should be at least one item of clothing. Yeah, that's the thing. I took off a sock. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, did, didn't say which item of clothing, did you? So there you go. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Then, so we are going to go with. Um, I'm going to look at my transformer block because that's the um, that's the one thing that I've kind of written to allow for more properties to be accepted. So let me go ahead and show you um, these. So this is actually one of the first uh, one of the first things I wrote like a long time ago. So might be a little bit uh, might be a little bit interesting. So 
This essentially creates a tile entity. So you guys have seen the Transformers in action. They take in items, they auto-craft for you, and they push items out. Um, now, what they have is, um, if we go down a lot, there's a lot of stuff here. This this is where it sets up the workstation. So it sets whether it requires power, and if it has power sources, whether it requires heat underneath, and what those heat sources can be. Um, and you can see this one, I've got whether it requires blocks nearby. So it can you can specify it by name or tag, um, and the range of those as well. So what we could do is have another another feature here that says uh, re set required nearby entities, and then pass in the names of the entities from the uh, from the XML. So that could potentially work um, for that, because then we could go um, then it calculates all the lookup coordinates to to, to check as well. So. There's pretty much uh, there's pretty much that because we've all, we've all also got like the uh, you know how many you need around so we've got like nearby block count we got the range um, so how you know how far out it looks and things like that so we could do that for we could do that as well um, and Faye says uh, so, sorry guys uh, no it says uh, 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 happy birthday Null who is Null hmm <laughs> let me see uh, fox fox that tail says Belza who is Null is it someone's birthday today. If it is, then... my birthday today. Oh, it's your birthday, hell! Well, happy birthday, dude! Yeah! Hooray! I was gonna say, who's Null? Hmm. <laughs> I, I, I think that's because we didn't enter the name. You get because you do like birthday and then like the name of the person who it is, and then like we'll put that name in there. Um, uh... But yeah, so one of those cards. But happy birthday, hell! How you doing? <laughs> oh, birthday... I had to cancel a birthday party, but at least I'm getting to spend some time with you guys. You had to cancel your birthday party, why? Oh. It... Body's broken today. Oh, I see. Oh, that sucks. Are you gonna like do it at a later point in time then? Just to kind of like postpone it a I bit. I assume so. Yeah. 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 Just like do it like a few days or in a week or something like that. There we go. And how you doing, Raven? Welcome to the stream. It says uh, hello, Max, and hello, chat. Thank you, Raven, for popping in. All right. So chicken coop time then, I guess. So we also have this thing called. Uh, it's a, a thing that I have called a property parser. Essentially, all this does is it, it's a, it's an independent class that looks up the properties in the XML that I add. Uh, makes it easier just to do it there. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and show you this class here. So this is a I did this independently because there's a lot of code in here. Essentially, um, pretty much gets all the data and stuff, and it kind of I have to use like regular expression lookups to make it work, but you can see there's a lot of code in here. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of code in here uh, just to make this work. So, you know, there's, there's more, there's more, there's more, and there's more, and there's more, and there's still more. There you go. So you, you can see there's like 840 lines of code in here pretty much. And we're going to make this class even bigger because that's what we like to do. So the first thing we need to do is add a couple of new properties in them. So we're going to go ahead and do it this way. So we're going to say... Uh, uh, we're going to do protected string. So this is what it's going to be in the XML. So in the XML, if you want to make these yourself, um, you're just going to have, you're just going to be able to add these properties and things, and hopefully it will work like that. So protected string. Um, so the name uh, prop, and we'll call it require nearby entities, and that's going to be uh, require nearby entities. All right, so we're going to do that one. Um, and then we're also going to have protected string. And then we're going to call it prop. And we're going to say uh, nearby entity names. So you'll be able to specify like a list of which entities it will look for around it. Um, so let's do that. So we're going to call it uh, same here. So nearby, pretty much like our blocks. So nearby entity names. Welcome in, Ravi. And then we're going to go from here. So, how you doing, Raven? Thank you very much for popping in, by the way. Uh, protected string. And then we're going to call it uh, prop and nearby uh, entity uh, count. So, how many we need around it. And the reason I put them all in strings like this is so that I can refer to them in the code and not have typos. Because um, then if we just refer, refer to it from this one variable name, um, it reduces, thanks to code completion, will reduce um, the amount of typos you have, um, which is always good. Nearby entity count. Um, and then we're going to do uh, the range at which it looks for those entities as well. So we're going to go protected, uh, protected string. And then prop nearby entity count, uh, not count, sorry, uh, range. Um, and that's going to be like a, 
an X Y Z range of how uh, how nearby. Well, actually, this in this case, an X Y range because the way entities are looked up is a little bit different. Uh, how you doing, Daniel? Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay, so we're gonna go nearby. Uh, so we're gonna go nearby entity range. There we go. Ooh, I think hell's gonna. Did you get Did you get a birthday message, dude? I think, oh, I did. I think you had it. He's like, "Hey, man, happy birthday!" <laughs> All right, so then we also need to add um, the transformation oh, data here as well. So let's go ahead and do this here. So we're going to go for, um, let's go ahead and see what we got here. So require power, require heat. Um, okay, so we're going to add now the past versions of the properties here. So the next one we're going to go, uh, going to be public. And the first one is going to be a Boolean value, and that's going to be require nearby entities. Um, so by default that would be false, um, but we can set it to true if it requires it. Uh, then we need to go ahead and say uh, public list of, of a type string, uh, nearby entity names, and then public uh, list, um, no, this one we can do public int uh, nearby entity count. And then we can do a public vector three or vector three i, um, and this is going to be. Uh, I think I just got it nearby. Uh, yeah, nearby entity range. There we go. So then we can go ahead and cast it to these things, and then pass it into our pass it into our tile entity right here as well. Um, and then it says, Hell's happy birthday. Now, uh, take it, take it, however many shotgun shells to the face for your age. <laughs> oh, that's <not laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's like, today will be your last day. <laughs> it's like, damn. Um, okay. Well, so I'm on this side of chat. I got Nightbot to defend me. It's all right. Yeah, because Nightbot can disable the weapon, so it's all good. Um, okay, yeah. so let's go ahead and see now. Um, so I've got a method here called check required blocks nearby. Um, so we're going to pretty much do a similar one for um, check required entities nearby. So let's go ahead and add a new method here to do that. Okay. So we're going to say because it all this all this class does is it's um, it's turning the XML data into something that Myco can read. That's pretty much what it's doing. So this isn't actually doing the oh let's do a look up here. This is just like okay the user has put this in. Uh, so this is what I need to turn it into for my code to read it. That's pretty much what this class does. So nothing uh, pretty much. Uh, th this is the, the the dull part. This is the the, the data passing part. So this is going to uh, so check whether the block requires entities around it. And if so, we'll output the data. There we go. That's pretty much all it does. So we're going to have, we'll use a protective method here. Nightbot floating with, flirting with Melza. Oh. Uh, and uh, Daniel saying, uh, you can't disable my fireball. Shooting range, shooting range. <laughs> oh, yeah. With held in the shooting range. <laughs> oh, that was such a good stream. Oh, I was like, okay, was, got it. Yeah. That, I, I, that, was, that was so good, though. I was like, hey, the hell, this is like a shooting range. And you as you with a bloody rocket launcher. <laughs> shooting range. <laughs> shooting range. <laughs> so I was like, damn, just destroy the whole freaking building. Uh, okay. So it's going to be protected void and check uh, nearby. Um, how else I call it? Have I got it? Call it check. Uh, no, we need check require entities nearby. Um, so let's do that. Check require entities nearby. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then we pretty much. Uh, I think the way I do this is I set a load of uh, default values at the start. Um, yeah, I pretty much just set the load of default values at the start and then go from there. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set our default values in just in case people don't, because these properties are going to be optional. So you want to make sure that this has default values in case people don't put those things in. So all we need to do is assign default values for these new things that we created down here. So if I just grab these, um, which are these new these four properties right here. So let's go and grab these four here. Let me just copy these just to kind of have everything up here. So this is going to error out for us right now because we're just going to go from here. So we're just going to say, uh, so for that, first of all, we're going to say this dot require nearby entities, and we're going to set that by default. It's it's usually set when it's uh, when it's uninitialized. It's set to false, but we'll just we'll, we'll just exclusively set it to false here. Um, Required in by entities. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that one. 
Um, and I think we're going to have to do. Yeah, I think once we get this, uh, once we get this set up, it'll it'll take all this red text out. What's that little bit of info that you have coming up there? What's is that? Just a general help? Yeah, it pretty much just tells you, oh, this this bit of code is incorrect, and you need to do this to fix it. Um, so okay, this cool. is just going to be an empty list. Uh, so just initialize this to a new list, um, and then we're just going to have an empty one. Uh, there we go. And then it's going to go the next one nearby entity count. We'll just set this dot nearby entity count, and we'll set we'll initialize that to zero, um, and then we'll also which as it's an integer type, even if it's uninitialized, it will initialize zero. But I do this just to stop nulls because if you don't initialize a new list, for example, that will that will give you a null ref. So I like to do this at the start just for just for safety reasons, just so that I can't go ahead go ahead and fuck it up later. Um, so then this nearby entity range. And then that's going to be a new vector three i, and then dot zero. Um, actually, I think I can just set it to vector three i dot zero, right? Yeah, vector three i dot zero. Um, have I done that in this one? Uh, vector three i one one. Actually, no, I've set I set it to one one one. So let's do it for this one here. I think I can do uh, vector three i dot one. I think I can do it this way. Yeah, it looks like we've got a little bit going on in chat, but it's just pretty much Daniel and Nightbot trying to re resolve their relationship <laughs> problems. So, you know. And Mel's are firing some rockets in the background there as well, I see. It's all good. Mm -hmm. uh, static read only vector 3, vector 3.1. Um, so, yeah, I think that we can set to vector 3.1. And then, of course, for our new class, then we can also set to vector 3.1. Saves us uh, initializing a new uh, a new one. So, essentially, a vector 3.1 is literally just one uh one 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 <laughs> that's pretty much all it is um so it's just a, a shorthand way to to write it all right so now we've got to do is we've got to check for the properties um that we have as well so and if so we have a pass it so let's do so the first thing checks whether they need nearby entities or not so let's kind of try and do it in the same order as my previous function like i said it's been like a it's been like a year since i've written this so i'm gonna to have to refer to old code just to see what i did so first one check if uh nearby entities specified and set true if so okay so then we're gonna go string uh nearby entities Daniel's filing a divorce with Nightbot because he's apparently Nightbot's cheating on uh, him with <laughs> with me. Oh dear. <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm 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 I'm, sure, I'm I'm I think Nightbot would go into the arms of another person if he's always shooting it. So you know, I can't I can't I can't blame it. <laughs> and I see the hell shooting range. <laughs> All right. So string nearby entities needed, and then we're going to say um if and then property helpers. Because I got a, uh, I got a I'm property class. To... Yeah. I will not incriminate Nightbot or myself because I'm not aware if there's a prenup or not. <laughs> um... <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're going to check the properties exist. Um, and how have I cast that? Um, it's just uh, properties exist. Prop require no blocks out. Uh, oh, have I got a property exist function here? Yeah, I do. Okay, I've kind of set this in the in the class here. Um, Okay, um, so in that case, I can just set, I can just do it from this class here. Okay, so I don't have to use my property helpers class, although I, I will probably later on write that to, I will probably later on change this um, so that it does use my static class instead. Um, so let's try this way. So this uh, property. Daniel says, this is, it's all out of love. <laughs> so love for shooting my shotgun. Love for shooting the shotgun. Well, there we go. Um, so the key we want to check is prop uh, require nearby entities, which is right there. And then out nearby entities needed. Um, okay, there we go. So we can just say if that's if that's a thing, um, we're going to try and uh, pass that value that we get as a boolean value. And if we can, if we can, then assign it. If not, then go ahead and throw an exception because the user has put something in stupid in. And that's the kind of thing I would do. So exceptions are good. So here we go. So we're going to say um, if, and then we're going to say string, uh, string passes dot try parse bool. 
and then we're just going to go and put the input which is now nearby entities needed and then we're going to we're going to go ahead and output um, this to our property required nearby entities so if it does do it then it's all fine but what we want to do is we want to say if it doesn't do it then we want to throw an exception so we're going to go ahead and do this we're going to say throw new exception and we're going to say uh, require nearby entities property could actually we're going to say we'll do it this way this is a bit this by the way property daniel says we've got to have some form of entertainment you all know you love it <laughs> well, nothing wrong with watching max code but a little drama during coding is perfect way to pass the time hmm, well there you go that's it if that's what folks should vote then there you go uh prop required in nearby entities um so we're just going to say this uh, could not be passed as a true or false value. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll say, so yeah, if we can't pass it as a true or false value, then um, it's all good. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to say if, um, then we're going to say, and if it's set to false, we don't need to do anything else in this method, right? We don't need to put, initialize any other method, any other variables if this is set to false, because, you know, if it doesn't require nearby entities, then why would anything else be specified? So all we're going to do, then we're going to say if um, require nearby entities, and that's currently if it's true. So we'll put an exclamation mark there to say if it's false, then just return. We'll just, just break out of it. We don't need to bother with anything else. Um, now, have I done that up here as well? Um, yeah, checks so if we need nearby blocks or not. If not, just exit out. Yes, yeah, so there we go. So we can go ahead and do that one, um, which is pretty much what I've done there. So yeah, if we don't require it, then just go ahead and return and then go from there. So then the next thing we need to do is... Um, Raven Ravi says, this is as if my teacher used to give me an explanation for mathematics. Don't get it at all. <laughs> it's, it's that's fair enough. The thing is, like, um, uh, the, when if I was to look at this without any kind of background in programming, then yeah, I would be confused as well. Um, I, I recommend if you do want to understand like what all this stuff is, to just have a look at a basic uh, programming in C sharp uh, tutorial, which will explain like what variables are, what uh, the, this means, and what string is, and stuff like that. It kind of explains all that, and then it becomes a lot easier. Because that's the thing when I tried to get into modding at first, I actually made a Minecraft mod like a long time ago in Java. But I understand all of the, uh, the so I was following I was following a modding tutorial, and they said uh, they said oh you're you're better off like learning actual java first before trying to do it but of course i did it the other way around so i didn't understand what super dot meant or override meant or public static private i didn't understand what any of that stuff meant so i was just pretty much following through the tutorial like kind of blindly and then when my stuff was going on i didn't know how to diagnose it so just one of those things um Raven says i'm too old for this no you're not no one is ever no one, no one is ever too old for code no one is ever too old for it no, it's never too old for code. <laughs> Are you never too old for code either? That's that's also true, Jade. Ah, speaking of which, I just had a little bit right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, next thing we want to do is if this is set to um, if this is set to true, um, the properties that we n we definitely need is how many there are and uh, the range. Now, what we could do is we could say um, in our tile entity if uh, the names aren't specified then it will look for every entity and just add to the count but if there are names specified then it'll be like it'll be like a whitelist kind of thing it'll blacklist everything else and just be like a whitelist um and raven is laughing now about the coke thing <laughs> you never too old for coke what about code oh you said that <laughs> okay so mm -hmm. the properties we need are this this one is required right here so if this is if this is set to true both these two are going to be required because we need to you know we need to make sure that well actually i guess only the the count will be required because this is set to this is set to one um so i mean i guess that i guess that'll work so let's start with let's start with the count because that's probably the easiest one so we're gonna say Daniel says hmm blind bugger following a tutorial blindly yep definitely max yep definitely me <laughs> so yeah, knows the hashtag, never too old <laughs> never too old there we go so it's nearby entity count we're gonna go if and i'm gonna say this uh prop exists and then the property we want to look for this time is prop uh nearby entity uh nearby entity count right that's the one we want to look, want to get 
Uh, if it does exist, then we're going to go ahead and output. Um, and then the name of the thing we need to output it to is nearby entity count, right? So we need to put it into there. Um, actually, that's a problem um, because both both the properties and our local variable is called the same thing. So let's just change this to entity count just to differentiate the two because um, then we'll can be ensuring it's going to the right place. So out entity count. So we'll go ahead and put it to there. Uh, new entity count, out entity count, uh, what we've got here is transformation properties, accessing the first argument, a type, transformation property parser. Uh, could be found, email Daniel soon. says, never too old for Coke, the drink, the drink, Max. <laughs> the the Not drink, stuff. yes, the drink, def, def, definitely the drink. Um, hang on a second. oh, there we go. Extists. There we go. That's, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> if this prop extists, then definitely do that. Um, okay, so that's going to go ahead, and if it does exist, it's going to output it to this string. So then, what we want to do is we want to say if, and then we're going to say string. So this is going to be had to be an integer value, right? So you know how many there are. Is there five of them? Is there ten of them? Is there one of them? Has to be an integer, and it has to be a positive. We can't, we can't, we can't say, oh, uh, this is a, this is a, you know, this, the, we need minus seven of these things to be around the area. So you know, use user info has to be sanitized properly here. So we're going to say if uh, string helpers, because this is the Funpim's native method here, uh, we're going to say try pass uh, int. I think, uh, no, it's actually string passes, not string helpers. String helpers is my class. Uh, string passes, try, par, int. Um, let's see, try, pass, uh, int 16. What does that give out here? That outputs a short. Uh, that outputs an int result, int star index. Okay, so try, pass, int 32. Um, is what we want to use because the outputs we don't want a short we want an int out of here and then the one thing we want to pass in there is then entity count and then if it does go correctly we're going to output the um, the property we need to output it to is nearby entity count so Melza says games for kicks has a cartoons of cola <laughs> cartoons of cola coke oh nice <laughs> it's a registered name and all the details Ooh, coke from the oven coke no from the oven. <laughs> minus seven sounds like uh playing a guitar chord uh d major minus seventh in the 11th position of screw it i don't know this chord so i'll just make one up there you go yeah that works that's that's what i used to do sometimes just like <laughs> yeah i don't know what this chord is um so solid all right so what we're gonna say is if um so if this does work, it's going to output it to here. So we're going to say if it doesn't work, then of course we're going to throw an exception. So throw new exception, and then we're going to say um, could not pass property, and then this is going to be prop uh, nearby entity count um, as an integer. Uh, or we let's just, let's just make it simpler for users because um, we'll just say as a number. Um, Okay, because that's the thing, it's like when we're kind of throwing outputs to the console for, for other modders to see, not all modders are, are code savvy, so we kind of want to keep it a little bit simple here. So, because, you know, not not everyone will know what, what is an integer and what is not. So if we just say as a number, then it's a little bit easier for those people to understand as well. So try to make it understandable here. And this is damn buffering. Is it buffering for everybody? Is it buffering for you, Hell, or is it just Daniel? Yeah, it's some buffering over here briefly. Uh, brief buffering. Let me just check my thing. Um, seems my thing is kind of go between eight and nine, so it's kind of stable. So it might it might just be little dropouts every now and then. Sorry about that. Hashtag refresh says another. Yeah, that's it. Just do do a refresh. Right now, the next thing you want to do, we got to make sure that this is bigger than zero, right? So if it's uh, because if it if it's set to zero, well that's just stupid because you're saying oh it requires it requires nearby entities, but it doesn't require any of them. And that's kind of that's kind of backwards, right? So what we need to do, we need to say if, and I'm going to say now we've set it to the property, we can just go and use that. So we can just set uh, so if nearby entity count. Uh, so if nearby entity count is strictly less than one, then we're going to throw another exception, and we're just going to say throw throw a new exception, and then. Melissa the... hashtag refresh. Their words from an old Jack Daniels ad. Ooh, <laughs> I see, I see. So we can say nearby entities, nearby entity count needs to be set to one or bigger. There you go. So 
not not technical language to say yeah you got to set that to one or bigger and then it'll work so that's the exception there so if it's less than one then of course it's it's a bit stupid right so if, essentially if it's zero or less then you had to set it to one or bigger otherwise well what's what's the point in saying you have nearby entities when you don't need them <laughs> so there's that one right next let's go ahead and do the range right so we've got to go ahead and try so this is the next one uh the entity range right here so i think that's fine so we can probably do that should we do range or should we do names first i think names is easier but we'll do range first because we'll just get it out of the way so i'm gonna go string uh and we'll call it entity range so we're gonna set that here and then we're gonna go and say if and then this prop exists and then we're gonna go prop nearby uh not nearby <laughs> nearby <laughs> uh prop nearby entity range and then we're going to go out and then entity range uh, entity range there we go so we're going to check that this exists if they have specified this property then we're going to just going to say um so now we've got to go ahead and try and push this as a vector three um and this is where things get a bit difficult because they might put in one number or they might put it up in more than one number so what you want to do is yeah this is how i did it before we're going to write it to we're going to write it to like a list of numbers and then we're going to push that into a vector three um so clone the first value twice make it a list of three values so yeah if you have one in or if you have three and otherwise it'll throw an exception so that's pretty much what i did so let's go and do that so we're going to say list and i think i can do a list of ints directly right um uh, string Daniel names. says, okay, YouTube is acting weird. I had <laughs> seven likes and eight watching. I hit the like button and it disliked, dropped down to three, went back up to six. Yeah, YouTube is like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. It's a bit weird. Okay, so let's do it like this. So we're going to go, we're going to say list, um, we're going to say string, and then we're going to say, um, uh, we can just say entity, uh, entity ranges. And then we're going to say, um, so what we want to do now is we've got a, uh, we've got our string here, entity range. What we want to do is we want to put that into uh, a list. So we're just going to go entity ranges equals, and then my method here, string helpers, and write a string to list. And then the thing we want to cast to a list is entity range. Okay, so we're going to use this. Um, now, what the, all that does is say if we've got like, um, say if we've got like this, so say if you've got like uh, the input is like one, uh, four, or one, five, two, what that does is that becomes a, that just turns it into a list like one, five, two. That's all it does. So it just goes, it goes ahead and changes that into a list of, uh, of things that you can then read individually. So then what we want to do is we want to see how many things are in the list, right? That's the next thing we want to do. Um, technical language is one or greater <laughs> or one over greater. I don't know, maybe. Um, let's see. So what we want to do is we want to say if, um, next, let's do, we can probably do a switch statement here, can we? It's going to be easier. So we can do switch, and then what we want to do is look at uh, entity ranges dot uh, count. So essentially, what this does is it says uh, how many how many values are in this list. So say if we have, so for example, say if we have like our input list is going to be like one for one five two, then the count is just going to be three because there's three entries in that list. If the if the input is like one two one two one, then the count is going to be is just going to be five right so it just says how many how many things are in this list and then we can split this up into cases to say okay if there's one thing in there do this if there's two things in there do this kind of thing that's what we need so we're going to go case and then let's just say if there's one in there what we want to do um, says i know coding language better than i know english <laughs> i know english better than i know english <laughs> So then what we want to do, we're going to say, um, so if there's only one entry in there, we're going to say then we want to add the same entry to all three things. So if they just specify one number, then we want to put this into, so what, what is going to happen is say someone enters like two into the input field, it's going to turn it into um, a list of two, two, two. So it's just going to, it's going to turn that one into three numbers essentially. So all we got to do is we're just going to say then, um, we're going to say entity ranges uh entity ranges and then the because there's only one element in there that means the zeroth index is already already specified so then we just got to say entity ranges one 
um, equals entity ranges uh, zero. And then we got to do the same as well. Entity uh, ranges two is also uh, entity ranges zero. So essentially all that's doing is it's saying, okay, get the first entry in the list and put it in, in one and two as well. Because in a list, uh, the first entry is actually a zero based index rather than starting at one. So that essentially this is the second one and this is the third one. It's a little bit confusing when you're first getting into code, but there we go. Um, so that's the first one. And then once we've done that, we want to break out of our switch statement. Now, the other one is we want to say if there is all three entries in there. Um, so if there's, uh, if there's three entries in there, um then i think we just want to we just want to go ahead and break directly because if there's already three entries then we don't need to do anything at all um and then if there's either zero entries two entries or something different because if there's two entries it's like which one do you copy do you copy the first one or do you copy the second one and where does it go and that's a bit ambiguous so we'll just say uh if there's any other number of entries uh it could be like two three seven some of that we're just going to throw new exception and we're going to say uh, property, and we're going to say property and uh, prop uh, nearby entity range must either be one number or a, a or three numbers with commas between, like one, two five or something like that just as like an example so that'll kind of make it easier for people to see what's going wrong if it throws an exception to them so yeah just makes it a little bit easier for like i said i like to i like it so that if people use euphenic core to do their own mods then they will have pretty pretty explanative stuff of what goes wrong if they make a mistake so kind of helps everyone right? says, be right back getting some cafefe cafefe m m flavored creamer yes, I said creamer oh, yes sorry creamer. i guess he meant creamer <laughs> creamer <laughs> there we go so now the second the next thing we want to do is so just like um just like up there we now want to set uh the range x y and z so we're going to go and say uh int and we're going to go range x um we could call it x y z but i just prefer range x range y range z okay and i think we actually have to comma separate these don't we so we can initialize all three on one line because they're all integer types um essentially doing this is the same as writing int range x and then on the next line int range y and on the next line int range z because just kind of makes it easier so one thing i've seen here though is we're trying to we're trying to pass an integer um and we're doing this this whole piece of code like three times in this method but then we're going to be doing it another three times in the next method aren't we so yeah, that kind of uh, that kind of seems a little bit crazy, and we could probably write a method to take care of that for us, so then we could just go for each of these variables, do it, and then if there's a problem, then you know, go ahead and throw an exception kind of thing. So we might want to go ahead and do that in a um, well, actually, I think there's already a, a way that we could do that um, in a way, but I'm not too sure. We'll do it the long way for now, and then if I can figure out a way to shorten that, then that would be kind of handy. So. Essentially, all I do is just try and pass it as an integer and then go from there. So that's pretty uh, pretty simple. So we're just going to say um, if and then, so first of all, we'll pass the first number in our list. So remember, we've uh, whatever kind of entry the user gives, as long as there's nothing wrong, it'll output a list of three values. So there'll always be three values in our list. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say if and then we're going to go int dot try pass. And then we just have to put in the input. So the input in this case is entity ranges. And that's the first entry in our list, which remember it's zero based. So we're going to have uh, this one. So if we say if this, try pass that. And then we're going to go out range x, not ir, out, <laughs> if I can spell. So out range x. So we're going to say if that works, then obviously it's great. So what we want to do is handle the case where it doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, then we'll throw an exception. So throw new exception uh then we can say uh first entry in first entry in the list uh first entry in the list is not a number there we go 
and I think we also have to check for bigger than zero, don't we? Did I do that as well? Check for it bigger than zero. Um, okay, I do that. I do that at the end. If any of them are smaller than zero, then go from there. So yeah, first in this is not a number. So that's pretty much all we're gonna do. And we just have to do this three times. So yeah, like I said, it's uh, one of those one of those things where we have to uh, <laughs> we have to pretty much write this the whole thing three times, um, cast it to a different thing. And that's uh, kind of wasting lines when we can simplify this. So I probably will uh, do this in a minute. So let's do, so the Y one is range Y. So that's the second entry. And then the third one, which remember is zero base, so it's actually input two is range Z. Here we go. Uh, and then so first, second, and third, um, range X, range Y. Uh, Daniel says, with commas, comma between, and add max uses glass. <laughs> no, you want to. not using glass. Definitely don't want to use glass. Um, oh, and that's why I didn't close my strings properly here. Did I say close that one, close that one, uh, close that one. Okay, because yeah, there's uh, there's probably a short thing we can do for this. Um, so, why don't we... Yeah, can let's do some buffering again. Oh, more buffering. Um, oh, yeah, it's really dropped off now, and it's just... Oh, my input has just completely died. Uh, yep, it just... Uh, OBS just died on me. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, let, me, lovely. let me just stop here and... Wait, it's, go it's going up again. Um, okay, hopefully that's a bit better. Uh, I have no idea what OBS is doing at this point. Um... Okay, there we go. Now it should be back up online. Back up on my end. Yep, back up on your end. Okay, there we go. Yeah, sorry there, guys. OBS is just randomly just like dropping out and dying and then coming back, and I have no idea why it's doing it. Uh, but yeah, it just like completely dropped off and then kind of came back. So there we go. Uh, now waiting for lunch time to make bacon cheeseburgers, says Daniel. Hooray! <laughs> bacon cheeseburgers are always good. All right, so here we go. So let's actually write a method for this um, because that would be, uh, be something. Um, we could write it. Actually, we could we could write it in string helpers class, couldn't we? Because if we write it there, we don't have to write it in this class, and then it could be accessible everywhere. Um, so let's do let's do something here. So let's go to because I got my string helpers class, haven't I? So that's string parsers. Let me go and look at my string helpers class here, and we can add some new functionality to it, because I think that might be pretty good. So if we go down here, I've got a enum, that's data types. I've got a helper thing here. There we go. So general, and then string helpers. Here we go. Um, so I've got lots of methods here. So that write string to list, write string to, to int list. Because um, what we could do is we could write string to an int list and then make sure they're all positive, which might be a bit quicker. Uh, there's one for float list, uh, to double list. So there's all these kind of uh, extra uh, extra kind of things here. And then writing a list to a string, uh, writing a vector three to a string. So let's have a new method here. Um, we're going to go ahead and say, um, because this will make things simpler. So it's going to go writes uh, a string to a uh, non-negative uh, to a non-negative integer. There we go. So that's going to be uh, that's probably going to be a, a better way because then we can say do it this way. So we're going to go public and static, and then write string to non-zero int. There we go. So a bit of a long method name, but all you do is just pass in the string. Uh, string s, and then we're going to output an integer from this, which is going to be the non-zero int. Um, so it's going to do that one. So then we're going to go. Daniel says OBS did have an, up have an update a few days ago. Hmm. Well, I don't think I, I don't know if it auto downloads, but yeah, I think it's I think it's more just like my internet connection is just going a bit crazy right now because uh, there we go. I thought I said uh, string herpes. <laughs> uh, st string herpes says Melza. <laughs> no, no, Melza. I don't know what you're thinking about, but okay, definitely not that. <laughs> Um, hmm. Well, welcome to our modding stream where we catch ZTDs and we've got string herpes. <laughs> C sharp TDs. <laughs> Damn. And I thought STDs were bad. Well, <laughs> I've almost 100 views on my Linkin Park uh, num videos. Surprise me. Excellent, dude. Good job. All right. Uh, hey, close down. Dude. Right. So we're going to say um, 
let's go ahead and we're going to say int and we're just going to close the output and we're just going to say if um then we're going to say we can go string parsers dot um pass int i think it's s int 32 uh yeah that that outputs an int right there 32 bit integer and then the input is just s and then out and then output there you go so that goes ahead and puts it out to there. Uh, hang on, does this give out a uh, out output? I went to may not be passed with the out keyword. Hang on a second, what have we got here? Passed into the insta index. String input. String passes pass in 32. Um, hang on. So do we just do it like this? Output equals string pass pass in 32. This um so you can say int output do we have to cast it through here? Hang on a second. I think this uh, is working in a little bit of a different way. Because the way string passes usually work is you out the um oh it's it's try passing in it. Try pass S and thirty two. Uh there we go. I was missing the word try. <laughs> do or do not, there is no try. Um, so we're going to go and do this, and then we're going to output right there. And that should, uh, I think that does it. String pass is try pass in 32. Uh, I want to must be passed with the out keyword. There we go, that's correct now. So try and do it that way. There we go. So then we can say if it works, then great. Uh, if it doesn't work, uh, then obviously throw, throw a new exception. There you go, so could not write and then this as a number. There you go, that's uh, that's fine. And then if we do get the output, we can just say if uh, output is less than zero, because remember we're writing string to a non-zero integer, so, or we should say more so non-negative. Non uh, now there's a difference between non-negative and positive, believe it or not. <laughs> so if output is less than zero, again throw an exception. Throw new exception, and then we can just say could and just say integer and then s uh, is less than zero. So we're trying to write it to a positive number, and then otherwise, if it's past both of those conditions, just return the output. There you go. That's what we need to do. Now that now we now we have both of those things kind of checking in one line, right? So then in our class here, instead of having to do this thing, instead of having to do this ordeal like three times with all the methods and stuff, we should be able to do this in one go. Um, so that's going to be up in here up in here this is it works great if it doesn't work max is it max eats sat <laughs> uh, looks like a cheese name brand <laughs> okay so i think that's all yeah right. i think i'm gonna step out of chat here max you're stepping out all right then, yeah. dude all righty what are you gonna go ahead and do well, i'm gonna go get a drink and just relax but uh yeah, I just uh, don't want to interrupt the lesson as it's going on and uh, oh you're not interrupting dude it's so good since I don't have a hundred percent idea of what you're doing, I don't know when's an appropriate time to jump in and engage. Oh, well, just jump <laughs> whenever you feel like it's all good. I don't care. <laughs> all right, maybe next time. <laughs> all right then, dude. Well, thanks for popping in, all and right. I'll talk See to you, you next time. Chat. Bye, hell. Yeah. All right. Bye. So let's see here then. So we can go ahead and do. Um, okay. Mm. So then this time, then what we can do is we can just do. So this time I'll just do int range x int range y and uh, int range z just do it like this and then we can just do this and this and then this time we can just go string helpers dot write string to non negative int and then that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much going to take care that's pretty much going to take care of it isn't it at that point um so then we can go ahead and do string helpers write things to non-negative int and then we can just go ahead and pass in 
Um, the first entry, which is going to be Entity Rangers 1, or 0, sorry, because it's 0 based. And that's literally all we have to do is just do this for each one. Um, so let's go ahead and do this one. So range. And we might be able to even shortcut this even more in a minute. So zero, one, two, because that way then we can be sure that all of them are at least zero or greater. Uh, sorry, I haven't, I haven't forgot that, it says Daniel. <laughs> it says uh, he, he's feeling left out on his birthday. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't mind him coming in and just saying, saying whatever, whenever he wants. It's all good for me. But then again, I'm easy going, but it's all good. Um, okay, so then... And then all we do is we cast it to a vector three, and then we just say, so that's that's what we need to do. So we just say this uh, nearby uh, nearby entity range is new vector three i, and then we just cast in range x, range y, and range z. There we go. So cast new vector three i right there. And there we go. So that will pretty much go ahead and push that into a vector three. Now the cool thing is we can actually shorten this as well and pretty much do exactly the same with block ranges. But as you can see, this is kind of uh, this is kind of doing the same the same thing. Um, so we could even condense this into its own method as well um, and do from there. Max should uh, should pull him back. It's not saying happy birthday to him in Joel's voice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that would be fun. Well, I think he's still in chat. Hell, do you request a birthday song in Joel's voice? Because I will do that for you if that'll uh, if that'll make you feel good on your birthday. Because it's all good. All right, so I'm going to do this. Okay, yeah. So we can shorten this method up here now to actually make it more efficient. So essentially, we can just copy. Yeah, we can actually just copy this. Um, grab this. And then just go ahead and do, and then we don't even need to worry about this now, do we? Um, so copy all this, um, and then put this down here. And instead of entity ranges, it's just going to be uh, block ranges, right? So just go ahead and do that. So block ranges, one, two, three. Look at that. So a lot simpler right there. Um, so that way, look, we've kind of like condensed down our code. But then as you can see, this right here, this whole thing, uh, this whole thing right here, is kind of the same as this whole thing right here. So you can see you've got more repeated code that we can we can kind of fix up here. Um, so what we can do, um, we could say, we could even say convert number to vector three. Um, yeah, that could that could be something we could do. Convert number to non to non-zero vector three, couldn't we? So let's go ahead and actually write that in our string helpers uh, in our string helpers as well. So that be um, that be that be something good. So then we could say up here converts uh, uh, number or list of numbers as strings to a vector three. Um, and there we go. If we do that, uh, even if we didn't, it would be a hilarious prank to put on someone's birthday. <laughs> uh, uh, Vedvi sang me happy birthday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know Vedvi. He's a cool dude. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do a, a method here. So public um, static, and then this is going to return a vector three i, and then it's going to be write uh, string to. Uh, non-negative vector three range so very very long function titles but at least they describe what they do right so pretty easy so string s and then what we can do here is we can actually grab all of this stuff here um so we can go ahead and grab this lot because as you can see it's kind of using some of this stuff from here and that's pretty much what we're going to do we're going to condense it into this one little method and then we can call it anywhere so we're going to say this string and then we're going to say uh underscore list the string helpers right string to list s like that and then we're going to say uh switch and then we're just going to change this to more um general variable names here so we can call it list because this is just a list here uh this one 
So go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do this. Um, and then we're just going to say, um, we're just going to say entry, let's say there'll be one number or three numbers with commas. Um, and then we can do, and then pretty much we can just do this. Uh, this, 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 and then we can just say return new vector 3i range x range x range z so all of that is now condensed in this little function right here called games kicks on discord and pretend to be joel and start seeing see in, in, in kicksism <laughs> i'll be like hey kicks it's joel from the fun films i just wanted to say holy balls and i hope you're having a good day and uh, we got some brand new textures coming just for you and up 20. <laughs> that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be something wouldn't it um Okay, so you got range for a string to non-negative int. Okay, so that works. Um, that works there. Right string to int list, uh, or right string to list there. So that's fine. Um, case one list two is list zero. String to non-negative int. So yeah, we can we can do this, and then all we have to do is we just need to do in our code here instead of having all this. We can just say uh, we can just say this uh, nearby entity range is string helpers uh, write string to non-negative vector three i range and then pass in the entity range and there we go. Look, we can now do it in a one liner. See how much easier is that? Do it in a one liner. All done. And then we can just go ahead and grab this one line here. So saving a bit of uh, saving a bit of code space here, which is really nice, um, and then we can do the same thing up here. So all of this uh, we can just remove and replace with uh, this one nearby block range and uh, string helpers rest in, and then we just have to put in uh, let's see string nearby block range. This one, this one, so pass that one in there, and that's this dot nearby block. Yeah, this dot nearby block range, and let's call that uh, nearby blocks instead to kind of differentiate that. So nearby block range and nearby blocks and nearby blocks. There we go, and we can do it that way, and then that kind of makes it a bit shorter. There we go. So we can do it like that. Look at that. Uh, I I paid to see that video done, Max. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, wink, wink, wink. Mesa says, uh, "What's with the what's with the call hierarchy in in the left in the left corner?" Oh, call hierarchy here. I think that just shows you a list of where stuff gets called from, so you can uh, you can check for you can right click on a member name in the core editor and then click view call hierarchy to view the members call hierarchy in this tool window. So essentially, like it will show you. Um, um, hang on. So let me call this new I block ranges. That's a bit easier. There you go. You don't get error down there then. But yeah, what this does is, I think if you click on, I think if you click on this, uh, it shows you. So for example, I think if I right click on check require new I blocks, um, code editor, and then I think you can say view, view call hierarchy right there, and it will show you. Uh, what things call it so you can see past dynamic properties calls this method so it pretty much says uh, where is this method used and what other piece of code does this method get used so kind of makes it a little bit easier uh, call them on Christmas morning saying oh holy balls oh holy balls fisty cuff to the four face <laughs> that <laughs> That'd be something. Uh, Merry Christmas, oh holy balls. <laughs> that'd be something, wouldn't it? Oh, that would make me laugh. That would make that would make me laugh a lot. I'm sure. I, I, I'm sure he'd be like he'd be sad. Just like what the hell, man? <laughs> I'd be like nothing, nothing. <laughs> um, okay. And now, actually, um, we could we could then say. Um, in this area here, we could go, maybe we could do this dot, um, nearby entity count, 
mirror entity count equals, and then we could do uh, string helpers uh, dot write string to uh, non negative uh, int, and then the string we pass in could just be entity count. There we go, and that would make sure that um, that make sure this is well. Technically, it's got to be more than one, so I could also keep that case never. We could write it in short hand like that, and also save some more space there. But there we go. We could call that. We could call it there. No, it says thank you. <laughs> uh, we could do it. We could do it that way in a one liner instead of these. But I don't know. We have, we'd had to make another method to. Well, currently this is uh, to non-negative. So why don't we make a why don't we make a method called write to non-zero int as well? Um, so currently we got write string to non-negative int. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do the same? So copy this one here. But instead of non-negative int, let's write non-zero int. So adding a few other a few other helper methods here. Now, really, I should write these as extension methods because that would be a lot better. But uh, there we go. See, Max is too easy to make laugh. Of course, I am. I love it. Yeah, I love, I love everything. Though. I'm so, hey, I'm so, I'm so smart. I'm just saying that many things. And so, um, non-negative. We should write uh, positive. Write string to positive. Right string to positive int. There we go. And then we can say Travis this. And then we, and here we just change it to is output less than one. Right, and that's pretty much it. So if we grab this, we can then just say write string to positive int. There we go. And then all this can just do that. There we go. And then and now we're pretty much we're shortening all our methods doing this. Look at that. Um, so we can do the same up here as well. Now we're now we're going from here. Check require blocks nearby. Um, so name of block count needs to be non-negative. Actually, that needs to be positive, doesn't it? So we could just say um, we could say here uh, this dot nearby block count so this dot nearby block count equals um, and then string helpers dot write string to positive int. There we go, and then nearby blocks. There we go, and now we've uh, now we've pretty much shortened that again as well. So now instead of going, like I said, like you'll see that in some parts of the code you'll get what is called the uh, like what I call the pyramid of death. Like you kind of start here, but then you go indent one, then you go indent two, then you go indent three, and then and, you know slowly but surely your code starts shifting to the right hand side. So essentially, the way I try and do my code is to avoid as much of that uh, pyramid of death instance as possible, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about like going all the way to the right. And Hal says, Joel, Joel says, we're here to celebrate health birthday. Unfortunately, I forgot Boris for hostel. We're gonna celebrate on the run. <laughs> that was the, oh, that was so funny. So, I guess now I guess now I see Hell in the chat. I should sing Happy Birthday to him in, in Joel's voice, shouldn't I? <laughs> That'd be something. Okay, anyway, I'm scrolling up and down because I'm not even. I'm my mind is kind of all over over the place right here. Uh, that's entity range, entity count. Um, okay. So there we go. So we've got that done here, and then we can do a string entity range string thingy here. Um, this is in Jill's voice. I wanted to wish Hal a happy birthday, <laughs> but I'm running from the boar I attack with my fist, so I'll get to it when I can. It'll be done when it's done. <laughs> There you go. Um, yeah, and then when when he's finally gotten away from the boy, and from the boy here, he's like, "Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday from Joel! Happy birthday, dear Hal for gamers! And this boar killed me now." <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> There you go, Hell. A happy birthday, direct from uh, jo direct from Joel in spirit. There you go. I, I channeled his energy. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the last thing we've got to do in this area is do uh, check the nearby entity names, right? So all we've got to do is we're going to go string uh, nearby entities, or we'll just call it nearby names uh, or entity names. Here we go. Entity names, and then we're just going to say if, and then we can say 
this dot prop exists and then prop and nearby entity names and then we're going to say we're going to output uh, entity names uh, we can just say uh, this uh, dot nearby entity names equals string helpers dot write string to list and that's just going to be entity names there we go and that should be pretty good <laughs> and uh, and hell's like lols and that is like here yeah, that was my idea for him for, for him to do hell's <laughs> and uh uh Melza says are you drinking wine and elderberry cordial again no I, no i'm actually not <laughs> Like I said, it doesn't it doesn't really do anything to me though. Like when when I when I drink that stuff, it really just doesn't do anything. I'm just like, okay, <laughs> play fine, whatever. Okay, so there we go. That's this method all done. We just need to go ahead and write these. So that's the required field if it's there. Um, and then if it's set to if it's set to false, then you know return. Otherwise, these fields get checked. And then if they're there, they get assigned. Um, and I think that's everything we need to write for this method for now. So the next thing we want to do is we need to we need to go ahead and use this method somewhere else don't we so we need to go ahead and do that so once we do that i have a method here now um up here that initializes all these other ones so because i've written them all in, in methods so we need to add to hash map check so yeah this is the adding transformation data um, I think actually this is up top, isn't it? If we go right to the very top, um, yeah, so check requires power, check requires heat, blocks nearby. So then we can just go this dot check requires entities nearby, and that will be called uh, at the beginning. So yeah, th this method pretty much just passes all the properties in short, and then you know then all the all the crazy stuff happens down here. But this kind of makes it easier for people. Like, say if people want to actually take my scripts and modify them, for example, this makes it easy to be like, oh, okay, so this is uh this is this is what this is what Max's script does. It gets the transformation properties, populates the data, checks all items exist, passes the data. Then it checks if it requires power, heat, blocks nearby, entities nearby, and then check if it requires user access. And that's for, and and just from just from this one section, you can tell exactly what this class does. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's pretty easy there. Uh, Melz didn't get did give him any ideas. He might call Hells up and start calling him Daniel. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, like happy birthday, dear Daniel! And then Hell will be like, "It's not Daniel, God damn it!" And then Daniel will be like, "I'm Daniel, God damn it!" <laughs> and then we'll start with the "Hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name is I think it's not Hell." <laughs> Maybe Fady secretly uh, makes yummy uh, makes yummy brownies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't tell me what's in them. She's like, "Oh, have some brownies." I'm like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> Next thing, why do I feel funny? <laughs> Okay, so this is looking good. That's all my methods done there. So I think that's everything we need to write in this area. So next thing to do is we need to check now. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's, I'm sure that's no secret. Um, okay, so what we need to do now is we need to check in the next area in our tile entity now so we need to go into we need to go into here so if we go down to tile entity now we want to do tile entity multi-block just tile entity transform here we go okay so what we need to do is we need to add a few things so the first thing we need to do is add our properties right so let's go all the way to the bottom because there's a lot of things down here um because yeah like like i said i wrote this years ago so this, this class is absolutely free and crazy uh, holds a lot of data right here because the way i wanted this block to be is that it could do a lot of different things um so new i've got names new i've got tags so let's go ahead and add a private uh list string and it's going to be nearby entity names so that's the only thing we need to do there um so then we're going to do private vector 3i uh nearby uh, entity range. So we're going to add that in here as well. So that's going to be that one done. Um, and then we're going to say private uh, bool requires nearby entities. 
There we go. So that's going to be that one. Um, and then I think we got like a uh, power sources, heat sources, new lock names, new lock count. So there should be an int here. Um, so then this one right here, we need to also do private int nearby entities needed. There we go. So that's essentially because the, the tile entity stores all of this info here that we can use. Um, so there we go. Uh, my sister always puts uh, some. My sister always puts a little something in brownies, <laughs> and <laughs> Bell's like crying. Now I think run, uh, run mainly. Hashtag, hashtag uh, hippie brownies. <laughs> hey Ben, oh the world's great. Just try some brownie, dude. <laughs> Des is I can't eat it like that. Uh, chocolate and alcohol don't mix well with me. That's fine. Uh, rum goes in rumbles. Smells a. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Wait, not that kind of rum. Wait, no, stop. <laughs> All right. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do. Uh, he's got coordinates, new I've got coordinates. So the other thing we need to add to here is this um and I've got to go this nearby entity uh nearby entity how hey, wait no we got a uh it's actually an other another thing here. Uh has power has heat has nearby blocks. Okay, so we need private bool has nearby entities. Because yeah, this is something that gets passed in, and then we also need a list, uh, private list vector three i uh, nearby entity coords. There we go. So I can go and grab those. There we go. Because this, because um, essentially we need to tell it uh, when you put the block down, like what coordinate range it has to look in. Um, so that'd be that's kind of handy. So um, we need to do this dot nearby entity coords equals new list vector 3i so we have to initialize this list pretty much uh make sure it's not null uh game manager is as well talency pause is this and then power coordinates coordinate helper get coordinates around uh helo coordinates add coordinate helper low talency um okay so then this one we had to do uh this uh and then nearby entity chords is coordinate helper uh get coordinates around another another help method I've written and that's gonna be tile entity pause and then we're gonna go for uh this and then that's gonna be nearby entity uh, nearby entity range. There we go. So essentially, once you pass in the nearby entity range, now it's going to go ahead and uh, fill this vector list with some stuff there. Uh, under hippie brownies, <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. So as well as uh, this is uh, 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 oh rum rum mainly with the brownies. Okay. Uh, un oh under hippie brownies. <laughs> I think it says I can't I can't even let that chocolate. No, I read that one. Can't chocolate and alcohol don't mix well with you. I read that one. Um, okay, here we go. So then we need to then we need to make another um, we need to make another thingy here. So we need to say um, set require user access. So this one um, we need to go uh, sets uh, the nearby entity properties. Essentially, what we've got to do is uh, we've got to pass this data in. Um, which is what I'm doing here. So public void set require nearby entities, and then bool require nearby entities uh, list string uh, nearby entity names. There we go, and then we got to do. Uh, list and then we got to do uh, let me see we've got to do list string because we do it by name here in my box needed so that's an integer so requires no lock names tags require all tags range so what does range get here so okay that's just a vector 3i so vector 3i nearby entity range 
and then we're going to do uh, finally from this one. Um, the last one we needed to put in was this other one here. Uh, how many are needed? So int nearby entities needed. There we go. And then the method body is very simple. It just assigns those to the what's in the class. So we just can go this dot require nearby entities equals require nearby entities for the method. So pretty much we're just taking these arguments and assigning them to the class here. So a little bit easier to do. Um, there we go. So that one, and then this dot at nearby entity range. Um, Oh, nearby entity names first. There we go. Equals nearby entity names. That's probably a faster way to do this with C sharp link, but this is uh, more understandable for me. So this and then nearby entity range uh, equals nearby entity range. And then this dot nearby entity count uh, or nearby entities needed uh, equals nearby entities needed okay there we go so that will pass those values in right here how you doing Stephen? welcome to the stream says good morning max and friends how you doing dude welcome to the stream thank you very much for popping in all right so we've got the nearby entity stuff there so that now gets assigned that also gets done in calculate lookup chords so the next thing we need to do is in our in our block transformer class here um you'll see that in my adding the tile entity method i pass i call these methods now so we need to also do this uh, and call this as well so i need to go uh tile Entity block transformer uh, set require nearby entities. So that's the method we just wrote there. So then I'm going to pass all these things in here. Um, so I'm going to close that down, push this up here, and I'll go and pass in all the fields. So this is going to be this dot transformation probably parser dot, and then the first thing we've got to put in is near uh, require nearby entities. So let's go and find that one. So it requires nearby entities. That's the first one. The second one is this. So the second one we need the list of the nearby entities names. So transformation very faster dot uh, nearby entity names. So if this is the stuff I defined in my property parser class, and the third one is going to be nearby entity range. So this dot transformation very faster nearby entity range and the final one is this dot transformation property parser uh nearby entities needed uh so oh hang on uh kind of enter down there without meaning to this dot transformation property parser dot nearby entities uh Nearby entity count is what it is called in there. There we go. And literally, that will just add that in right there. Um, Stephen says, uh, Stephen says, uh, oh, Stephen says, Stephen says, Stephen, you missed about singing Happy Birthday in Joel's voice to hell. Stephen says, I miss all the good stuff. <laughs> ah, it's all good. Okay, so then we're going to move this up here because I want this to run first, and then I want this to run at the end, whether you require access. Because I've also there's there's actually a hidden thing I don't actually use it myself, but there is uh, also the 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 way that transformations are only done if the user is in the block itself. So if the user is actually in the block, then the transformation will work. Um, but if they're not in the block, then it won't run. So you can do that. You could do that for like manual manual type blocks and things like that, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there is a way that you can um, by default set that, which is pretty nice. Um, okay, so that's that done, and that now passes in everything here. So the next thing I need to do is in my tile entity, I now need to look at the uh, read and write for these. So, you, so the read and write pretty much uh, when you set when you save the game, uh, what pretty much happens is this method gets called and it writes all the properties into the save file. So then, when you load the game again, the read methods get called. It goes ahead and takes all of these things, uh, reads them in, 
and then it goes ahead and pushes them uh, pushes them back to here. So what we need to do is now that we've added some more things that our tile entity has to store, um, uh, I can't I can't I can't help uh, seems it's kind of help but here maxing future girl song every time Max kills one. <laughs> I want Max to do, uh, do, do a stream of uh, pranking different YouTubers and uh, and singing to them in Joel's voice <laughs> at, the, at least at least thirty minutes worth. <laughs> um, okay, so. Yeah, when well, when you kill when you kill future girls, you know it's uh, one of those songs isn't it, that comes to mind. This is putrid girl. Now I'm gonna smash you in the face, putrid girl. All right, so what we need to do now is in our read and write. So write gets called when the game gets saved, and read gets called when the game is loaded. Now the important thing is when you do your read and writes, you have to make sure that the order you write is the order that then gets read back. Otherwise, it will cause you red text. And if you've got tile entities in that chunk, they will get deleted and the whole chunk will get reset. So um, this is one update that's definitely, if people are using my transformer blocks, this is going to, once I make this change, it unfortunately will break the save. So I try and do as little changes to already existing classes as possible. But there you go. It's one of those things. Uh, Skiffy first, uh, then Grand Spartan, then Kicks, then Glock, uh, then Jiwoo. See their reaction. Uh, I, I think I think that just, uh, I just I just think you will be like, oh the fuck are you? <laughs> and I'll be like, uh, uh, hi bye. <laughs> uh, to to how to how uh, to how uh, really he does Joel's voice. <laughs> That'd be funny. Hashtag uh, uh, lucky dr lucky dreams are free. Indeed, dreams are definitely free. That's a good thing. So the other thing I need to do. Well, first of all, let's uh, sort, sort out the instantiation of our talents here. So as you can see, like I've got a lot of things I have to over right here. So the first thing I need to do is set this uh, property here. So we have to set this. Um, so when the talents is created, we need to have uh, has nearby entities. And we need to set that to false at first. So when the block is initialized, obviously it doesn't have any nearby blocks or anything. So we have to make sure that's set. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to copy from the from the previous one so we've got to go this so we've got to add it to here as well so this is uh this is if you copy the talent sheet over from another one it goes ahead and does this so we're going to go this dot has nearby entities so that's false as well And then the other thing we have to do is do we have to set all the nearby block stuff as well. So we have to set we have to set this here. So we have to do this dot requires uh, nearby entities, and that's going to be the same as other dot. So this is just copying properties. Other, um, but yeah, all this all this manual stuff we have to take care of. Um, otherwise, you'll get some crazy stuff going on. Hello, Killer Bunny and Rise Up. Welcome to the stream, guys. How you doing? Is that because is that because you're the fucking man? <laughs> it's a holy SARS reference right there. <laughs> I remember that. How you doing, guys? Uh, Steven says uh, K Kicks would know right away. Yeah, he would. He would definitely. <laughs> There's I don't think Kicks heard Max do Joel's voice. He might have done. Don't forget to lick to to lick the like for uh, to lick the like, folks, please. <laughs> That's it. Lick that like button, guys. Turn it blue. <laughs> uh, right. So requires nearby entities. Okay. Then we got to do this. Dot uh, nearby entity names equals other. Dot nearby entity names. There we go. So we're gonna set that one. And then this dot nearby entities, uh, nearby entity range, I think. Yep. Equals other dot nearby entity range. And then this dot, uh, nearby entities needed. So this is just like copying all the properties over. So that's going to be other dot nearby entities needed. Okay, there we go. So that's going to set uh, that's going to set the stage right there. Um, there we go. So and Raz is like winking. Says, "Not bad. Thanks. How are you? Doing very good. Thank you, dude." 
Hope you're doing, I'm glad to hear you're doing well, by the way. Um, okay, so then it does then it works at the lookout coordinates for the new tile entity, um, and then it also does a it also applies a random number. Now, what this random number here does is it makes sure that all the tile entities don't update at once, uh, and they it kind of like so 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 different tile entities will update at different rates, so it makes sure that you don't get like a super amount of server lag when every single tile entity of this type updates at the same time. So this is kind of like my way to lessen the amount of updates that are needed. So it does mean that uh, sometimes you get a little bit of a weird thing happening before before it goes, but there we go. Um, so copy link to data from other. Uh, so then we got to do the same here as well. Um, so we had to do the same here as also well. got to do this. Dot has nearby entities. And then that's going to be false by default. Um, there we go. So this 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 also takes care of when it's uh, spawned as a, as part of a POI. So say if you want to have like a chicken coop or whatever one of these blocks spawned in the POI, um, you have to copy the de the the data from one to the other as well. Uh, then it says don't forget to stretch. No, I won't forget to stretch. But we're good right now. So this uh, requires nearby entities. So it's pretty much the same as that one. Actually, I think we can copy these four here and that'll work here. Um, so grab these. I think we can just copy these four directly. So let's go and do that. So this requires nearby entities. Uh, we could probably just do that in here, couldn't we? And that would work just fine. Uh, yep, seems to work just fine. I wish it wouldn't undo your indenting though. Like that's that's one thing with Visual Studio I don't like because I kind of like having it like this because it makes it very very readable to be like okay you can see like okay this is this this is this kind of thing and it's kind of like it's shown like in a list of what it's doing which is a lot more readable than when these things like kind of smush together kind of thing so I don't know why code editors do that uh, there might be a way to disable it though um, okay so each game tick this method is called so. On update tick, it checks if an update can happen. If it can't happen, then go for it. And then, okay, an update can happen, checks whether it's powered, if it's heated, if it has nearby blocks, and if uh, the queue defined and not empty, uh, or it's not empty. So what we need to do is we need to make a method now in here that checks if it has nearby entities, right? So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the first thing we need to do. So... Let's go and make a method now that checks um, if there are any nearby entities and whether they're the correct type. Um, now, this is the bit that is a bit uncharted territory for me, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so, we'll make a, a virtual method just in case we extend it later. And we're going to go checks whether we have entities nearby. And here we go. So, this is going to be a public virtual uh, bool has nearby entities. Okay, so we can go ahead and do this. So essentially the way I did this for the, for the blocks, oh, we got to pass in the world as well, of course. So pass in, pass in the world as well. So we can check around the world, make sure, because you know we need to be able to look in the world's coordinate spaces to see if entities are there. Um, so the way I've done this before is, first of all, I check if it can tick. If it can't tick, then just return what the value of has nearby entities is. So if we we just go if and then this. So if it's not able to tick yet, then just return what the previous value was. So we're just going to return this dot uh, has nearby entities. There we go. So yeah, if it can't tick, then return that um, directly. Um, now we want to check if it actually requires nearby entities. If it doesn't require nearby entities, then we're just going to set this. We're going to set. We're going to default it to true. Um, we're going to we're going to set this has nearby entities to true. If it doesn't require nearby entities, if we set has nearby entities to true, then it will always tick regardless. So let's go ahead and do that one next. So we're going to say if this block doesn't require nearby entities, then obviously in terms of whether it has nearby entities or not that's required, it will always meet the requirement, right? So we're going to return this dot has nearby entities as true. And that will then return true by default. So essentially, if it doesn't require nearby entities, this will always return true. 
um, apart from maybe the first couple of ticks when you put the block in the world, which will go ahead and uh, just go from there. Um, so yeah, but I do it. I do it after can tick though, because then it doesn't have to worry about setting something every tick. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise, it's like okay, if you uh, if you want to get it and set it, I should I could probably use a getter and setter for this instead of a, a method. But uh, it's kind of written this way, so I'll kind of keep it with my writing style for now and have a little look. So the next one we have to look at names found. Um, so now we need to check whether the names are found. Um, no lock names count as zero. No lock names is this return true. Names found coordinate helper uh, enough blocks and coordinates that are okay. So this is the um, this is the thing where we have to add some coordinate helpers to check entities this time. Um, so we need to make a new method in our coordinate helpers um, that checks how many entities there are and whether they are of the right names. So this is a bit of a this is a bit of a new one. So let's go into here. So in my helper areas uh, under uh, in game. I've got coordinate helpers here. Okay, so there's one to get coordinates around. Um, but there's also there's lots of them. There's get coordinates around. There's lots of over overloads for this. Uh, ones to get them above. Ones to get them above in a range. To get them below. Get them below in a range. Um, so there's lots of them here. Um, so there's yield coordinates around if you want to do it like piece by piece. Um, this method is never. This is never. Um, this one is never used really, um, but I've written them below for other people if they want to use that way. Um, in in zero next to true, but obviously right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, we could do. Uh, if you like the stream, do hit the like button e e equals or else I'll shoot nightbot. You're going to shoot nightbot anyway, Daniel. That's the thing. Um, so get chunks and coordinates. Um, uh, talenti get talenties and coordinates. So it's fun to get talenties and coordinates. Uh, get talenties and names. Um, there's also to get blocks at coordinates, um, get block names, get block tags, blocks at coordinates, blocks at block coordinate is, block at coordinates have tags, so you can check all the tags of the blocks around you. If they're one of those tags, you can check, um, get ones that are, that have tags. There's lots of these methods here. Uh, if there's enough blocks in coordinates that have tags, uh, or enough blocks in coordinates that have that are, so there's lots of these um, lots of these things here that you can do. Uh, so that's one uh, that that returns a list of entities um, in the coordinates. Of a, how you doing, Ernest? Welcome to the stream, dude. Um, says uh, Max, how is Finite going to behave with Alpha Twenty? Well, there's going to be there's going to be breaks. I'm going to tell you that there's going to be a lot of stuff that breaks. But um, I'm what I'm thinking is it's mainly going to be XML breaks um, rather than uh, C sharp breaks because I've written a lot of my C sharp to kind of be a bit more independent of FunPimps versions. Um, I know for a fact that certain blocks xml and loot.xml files will be changing so essentially what they've done now in a20 is loot containers used to be done by a numeric id now they're being done by name ids so i will have to re-go through all my loot containers and change them to a name id uh which is one thing the other things um the other things that will break are the way some blocks work because essentially what you have to do in the current version is when you want to add a new block shape you have to make a whole new block entry in the xml for it so you've got one entry for the wood frame cubic shape you've got one entry for the ramp shape you've got an entry for like the, the stairs you got an entry for the plate that's not the thing in a20 anymore there's one entry that covers all the shapes so what i will have to do is make sure that my blocks map to the, to the new ones but that will also mean making adding new blocks is a lot easier um i'm not i've deliberately not done any work with zombies because i know they're redoing the models of those things so for for those i've de i've deliberately not done that i've also not done anything essentially i've not done anything that requires um a chain as big of a change so hopefully it won't play too bad with a20 they're also offering native harmony support in a20 so if i can remove my current patch scripts um that are currently in a19 this will no longer require dmt um so that's the change i'll be trying to make although i don't know how i'll be able to do that yet 
but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be something. Um, I count on Max uh, being being my brain in seven days to die. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, we don't we don't know fully. But yeah, uh, Max. Uh, but Max shooting nightbot is my favorite pastime besides stealing Nelson's bacon. If I had to change that to names, uh, I do it like this. <laughs> All right, so let's go and write a new method. So we're gonna say um, so returns a list of entities in the coordinates. Okay, now luckily there is a method that kind of does what we want. So I'll show you what we've got here. There's a, there's a method called get entities in bounds. Um, so if I show you if I show you that one, um, it's going to be very similar to this method, but we're going to have to obviously change it a little bit. So where is that method? That's in here, I think. Yeah, so there, there is a method. Let me kind of zoom in so you guys can see uh, what this is. So this one here gets a list of entities, get entities in bounds. So this actually already exists in the uh, in the world in the world space here. So we can get a list of entities out, but you'll see that the uh the numbers only concern the x and the z coordinates right that's the problem they don't concern the uh the y coordinates which is uh kind of a shame because it only searches x and z so what we probably want to do um minus slope well click blocks 16 so utils fast floor uh floor x so ncx minus well collision blocks um in world collision blocks. Okay, so that's that kind of calculates the the, the lookup range, um, and that will say said so I goes between num one and num two. So that's like the minimum and the maximum there, um, and then the minimum of those. Because yeah, so essentially we have to kind of write a new a new method that kind of gets those. Because chunk sync only looks at um, chunk sync uh, get entities and bounds exclude entity add a a b b Double A double B of entity. This entity is with A B excluding entity. So there, that goes ahead and puts this out from here and syncs that with the chunks. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, item block name forge. Uh, go go better already. <laughs> item block name stupid updates door wood. <laughs> has a has a, had to change everything table pretty much yeah. Um, but yeah, this this kind of only searches the X and Y. We we could leave it as the the X and Z coordinates now. Sorry, X and Z. We could leave it like this for now, um, and then just say there's it because this one um, excludes entities, which is kind of a little bit weird. So there's like get entities and bounds, but it kind of has a list of excluding entities that I don't know. That kind of seems weird. Get entities. Uh, and there's a type bound list of entity. There's this one as well. Get entities and bounds type class. So there is this one bound uh, list of entities list. So this returns the bounds here. Chunk chunk is this. Get entities and bounds class bb list um, and return list. Um, so this one here. Let me see what this does. So that calculates the bounding boxes and list length. So what does um what does this list thing get passed into? Uh, let me have a look here. So list entity list list dot add dot entity. So that kind of just passes in a current list of already existing entities. So again, entities and bounds to pass the list entity list. Um, but where is this called here? Does this check um, if class is assignable from entity dot get type and entity bounding box intersects bb? then list okay so that that checks if their bounding box intersects there this entity lists j hang on so this entity list is this i let me see so i is this entity list length this entity list length minus one just trying to see what comes up here. So world, fast floor, get collision blocks. Because this is checking for the entity list, but I'm not sure. So it's almost like you pass in a list here. And it adds it and then gives that to you on the output, which is kind of strange. Because this is a this is a void method, which is really strange. And it doesn't get passed in by... Oh, well, I guess it is technically a reference type. So it gets passed in by reference there. 
Founding foxes says uh, says uh, beta already. <laughs> it's very it said founding foxes. No bounding boxes. Um, so where is this method called then? Get entities and bounds because you can specify the entity class type. Um, so that's something. Um, but I might need to write a different method completely here. Let me go analyze and see what we can find here. So let me analyze this method. Where is this called? Uh, so it's used by. Ladies having a brain fart? Uh oh. Scroll lock is. Um, it should be. You know where the home and insert buttons are? Um, it's like. Uh, it's above those. You got, uh, you got where the print screen button is. It's next to print screen. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Hey, I was useful. AI break block. Let's see. Entity vulture. Update tasks. Let's see. I just want to see where it's uh, where it's spawned in. Uh, update tick. Uh, AI director. AI horse spawner. I just want to see how this method is used um, because then I'll get a better idea how to do it. Because this is one of those. Um, this one of those things. Uh, auto start fire controller. Debug send name info. Okay, let's have a look at that. Uh, well, get entities and bounds. Type of entity alive. This uh, dot debug entities. Um, bounding boxes. So, what's debug entities set to? Private list entity. Debug entity. There's a new list. Uh, analyze that. Where is that assigned? So, what uh, what things goes in there? Assigned by Adder to world. Uh, let's see. AI director constructor. It's not letting me look at that. So it's assigned by this. Uh, read by debug entities list. So it's, assi it's assigned in the constructor, is it? Yeah, here we go. Um, let me see. Full binary reader. AI director world save. Create component. AI director, here we go. So world is world, create components. Uh, what does this do? AI director, blood moon. Okay, so that just adds more as AI director components. Uh, let's see. Just trying to see where this is used, uh, depending on what she is uh, scrolling. She can use the arrow keys as well. Okay, I think she wanted to just know how to turn it on or off. Um, Okay, so it's none of these things here. So yeah, it's kind of kind of something like this that we got to get. Um, so debug latency offset. So yeah, there's there's something something in here is what I need to use because this is the method that is kind of good. Type binding box list of entity list. Um, this is the entity get entities. And then AABB of entity. Get entities and bounds. So that I think that, that checks also from an entity excluding. So that's like to exclude itself kind of thing. So this is something that we can do here. Uh, chunk sync, get entities and bounds. This to entities, maybe basically entity. So what we should be able to do is. Um, Chunk sync. So we should be able to do something similar to this. Um, get entities and bounds, excluding entity, AABB of entity. Because we could just set this to null, couldn't we? Throw into entity, excluding entity. Or just excluding, uh, well, just exclude entity player. Um, which I think is the ID of the entity or something. Um, Potentially, that's actually a bit weird because you have to pass in an entity here. But I don't, I don't want to do that. I just want to get. There must be a way that we can do this without having to do excluding entity here. Uh, private void. No, that's a public method. So that's fine. Get entities and bounds. Uh, list of entity list. Because yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what this is used for. It's like it, it almost, gear, it almost updates the list. List add entities. 
Um, so you could set it as an empty list. I guess yeah, you could you could just set this as an empty list, couldn't you? Because if you set it as an empty list, um, type type class. Yeah, you could maybe uh, empty family boxes intersect. So we might have to kind of hack through this function a little bit and go from there. Then it says uh, you should really make a new screensaver for Fennec Mod. Uh, maybe have a, a fox smoking a cigar with an AK-47 and Trader Joel in the background saying back up, back up, back up. <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. Um, and Daniel says hi, Paddy Pad. Uh, Paddy says hi. Um, okay, so yeah, we might have to kind of write our own method here then, because this is based on the chunk here. Um, so this is based on the chunk class. Okay, actually, that's not too bad because we could do. That's a number entity list length, because because this dot entity list um, stores the entities in the current chunk, I believe. So that actually shouldn't be too hard. I wouldn't have thought um, to do this. So let's go ahead and try. Let's go ahead and try this. So first thing I'm going to do. Uh, okay, let's see. So we're going to go public, static, and then it's going to be a list of uh, entities. And then we're going to just call this uh, get entities in coordinates. There we go. And then we're just going to pass in a list vector 3i coordinates. There we go. So we're going to set, we're going to pass in the list of coordinates and then we're going to see if we got in here. Uh, there's a, get drawing, Daniel. Um, so we're going to pass the list of coordinates here. Uh, get entities and coordinates, list of coordinates here. So we're just going to go list of entity. List of type entity equals new list. Okay. Uh, so initialize it like this. So see if we can, see if we can make this work. So what we want to do uh let's see list entity oh uh entities gotta call it, gotta call this something equals new list there we go so list of type entity don't know why put all these bloody gaps in there <laughs> okay so entities is new list of entities here okay that's the first thing so then what we want to do is we want to use um get entities in coordinates uh so we've already got we've already got the coordinates so what we want to do is we probably want to get entities in the comments here. So actually, what we probably want to put in is an AA uh, a bounds AABV instead of coordinates here. Uh, so let's go and get entities in bounds. It's probably going to be a bit easier. Uh, let's get entities in bounds. We also need to pass in the world for that as well. So we need to pass in the world. Uh, and then we can just do bounds. And then we just have to use Unity Engine for this at the top, don't we? So go to the top, and then we just have to use using Unity Engine. And I think that should allow for the bounds to be done. Uh, so come back down here, so that should now come up. From there, yeah, there we go. So this will return a list of entities within a certain bounds. Here we go. Um, there we go. So waits for correct. Uh, waits for correct response. Correct response. Uh, it says uh, jo Josh Flynn, actor. Uh, what was the actor's first movie that played a thousand Avengers in? Yeah, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> I'm not a. Uh, I don't know like actors' names or famous people's names. I just never, never keep up with all that stuff. So I would never be any good at that kind of trivia. So. Um, we've got so we're going to pass in a set of bounds um, from here. So then we can pretty much um, we can pretty much copy a lot of what's in the world uh, in the world function here. So if we come up here um, and we'll go ahead and do entities over excluding entity is clear. So let's see num is it too fast for a b of entity. So we've got the we've got the bounds here. So because this this is to get entities within within something of another entity, isn't it? But we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and copy this real quick. 
um, and we'll go ahead and grab this. So, so let's go and just copy this method over here. Um, and this is going to be uh, bounds x min. Let's actually name this what this uh, does properly. Bounds x max, and then this is bounds z min and bounds z max. There we go. So then we can we can pretty much uh, do this as well. And then this is going to be bounds in here. So yeah, make make it a little bit easy easy to do here. Because uh, there's fast floor which we'll use. So that works. So bounds and bounds. Here we go. Um, so that will go ahead and do. That kind of works out in the bounding areas. Um, world collision blocks. Wait, world collision blocks. When is that? Okay. So. So then we're going to go. Bounds x min, and then bounds x max. Here we go. So we can go ahead and just do it. Uh, this. Oh, we don't want to don't want to capitalize these as well. Because yeah, this is uh this is what I'm going to do. So pretty much kind of create my own version of this method that only does what we want it to do, which is kind of independent from the world, uh, which will probably be a little bit better. Uh, so there we go. This one's the the jiggle dance in the beginning of the movie. Uh, the the Goonies is the correct answer. He played he played the fat kid. Okay, so we got this one, um, and then the same with J, so it's going to be the bounds for the Z, uh, bounds Z min, and bounds Z max, and then it's a chunk sync, equals uh, uh, world dot chunk cache get chunk sync for I and J, if chunk sync is not null, chunk sync get entities and bounds, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pass it um, that's bounds right there. This is uh, so this one is the list of entities, so just entities. Um, and then this one, excluding entity, we can probably remove, and that's going to be something else. So. NC is the NC bounds. Uh, there's one overload here, so let's see. So look at Alt here. So let's see. Uh, Referee and uh, stress can we refuse. Uh, fixed formatting. Bounds entities. So let me see what the other method is here, because we might have to write our own own chunk sync method here as well. Um, which would kind of be a bit crazy, but we could do that easy. Um, so coming to here, yeah, this, this this is where things start to get more difficult. So yeah, bear with me. I'll figure it out. Uh, so chunk sync. Get entities and bounds. So get chunk sync, and then chunk sync is now get entities and bounds, um, and then get living entities and bounds. Oh, there's a get living one. Okay. So yeah, we probably want living entities and bounds, but still we can we can do that. Uh get entities and bounds. This is the one we want to do. So we can do entity get type. Uh add entity. So essentially what we can do is if we grab this one and what we can do here is we can do a we can do an overload method on the chunk, um, which I think will be fine. Um, so let's go and do let's go and make a new helper class here uh, in game. So extension methods, and this is going to be for uh, add new item, and we're just going to make a new extension class for chunk because I think we can make this work. So go into here, and then we're just going to go. We're just going to call this chunk extension, um, and then we can add some new methods to that class so chunk yeah chunk extension here we go there we go so we're just going to rename this and rename this okay so we're just going to go get rid of the list and just go public class chunk extension 
There we go. So we're going to put this in here, um, and then we're going to modify this method here. So we're going to do public static, and then uh, list list of entities, and then get entities and bounds. Uh, so we're not going to pass in the type here. We just want to get the we just want to pass in the bounds. So that's using Unity Engine. So let's do it in that one. Here we go. So yeah, let's try. Let's try this. See if this works. So yeah, this is where things get a little bit crazier here. Uh, tab, 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 tab. Says <laughs> All right. So why not let me enter down here? Okay, hang on. You're just being stupid. There you go. Do that. Uh, using Unity Engine. So use that up here. There we go. That's better. Uh, so that's now got the bounds, and then we're gonna use. Uh, I don't know why it does that all the time. Uh, using system dot. Well, actually, you probably want to use system and using system dot collections dot generic. So use these three. There we go. Then lists will be fixed there. Okay. So we just pass in the bounds here. Okay. So then let's fast forward. So that's fine. So that bit's all good. Um, and then we got to pass in this, and this is what we're going to do. Then we pass in this chunk, chunk. There we go. So this will now be an extension method on the chunk class. So instead of uh, this here, we just put chunk. Uh, then we just go chunk to entity lists, and just change those over to chunk. There we go. This entity list is chunk dot entity lists of this type. Um, okay, entity entity list. Um, and all we need to do is we can just say if entity bounding box intersects this chunk dot add. Uh, oh, actually, this is this list here. So essentially, what we can do then is we can just say here we can do list. Entity, uh, list of entity. Here we go. This is it. Entities equals new list of entity. There we go. So we can do this, and then we can say entities add.entity. There we go. And then that should, once you return the list, that should be fine. So it's going to be a static, uh, public static class. I'll fix that. There we go. We can do it from here. So Dennis says, I'll see you next the chat. Back to playing guitar. No worries, dude. Thank you very much for coming along. Hope to see you very soon. So bye for now. Okay. So let me see. So we got this. You chose fast forward. Okay. Chunk to entity lists I. Okay, so there this entity list. Chunk to entity list I then for J zero J for the list. If entity entity, entity equals list J uh, entity bounding box intersects bounding box bounds BB then it should go ahead and, and add that one to the list. Let's try and get entity this here. So entity entity is list J. So that yeah. So the value box intersects this. Then all good. Uh, bounds BB. Okay. Well, actually, what we probably want to do is just return. Actually, even better idea. Don't do it based on the chunk. Do it based on the bounding boxes here. So just have it from the chunk. Uh, get entities. So let's just call this get entities and chunk. So that might be a that might be a better idea because then we can pass in the list of uh, then we can pass in the list of the entities there. So James, this counts. So this entity is this chunk entity list I. Um, then we just do entities and entity, and it, it, if so, actually, 
chunk to entity lists dot length. Could I just then, because then we don't need this, could I just pass this back? Can I just pass that back without having to bother with that? Chunk dot entity lists dot length. I need to look at what dot entity lists are, because that's a, that's a plural, it's not entity list. Um, because you got entity this list is chunked or entity list. So that's that's a bit weird. So maybe okay, maybe we still need to do this. Hang on. So we need to we don't need this. Collision blocks over 15. That was greater than chunked or entity list dot length. Minus one. Don't see this. Last line, that bumper is less than two zero. Num, num two. Okay. That's kind of strange. I'm not even sure what that is meant to do now I look at that. Because it looks like. Because num and num two are assigned here. So why don't we just do entity lists i? And an entity so entity list of entity list is chunk of entity list i. So why don't we this this could be even simpler. This could probably be even simpler. Hang on. What we could do, we could do for each uh, list of entities, a type entity, uh, entities or entity list in uh, chunk dot entity lists. What we could do is we could just do, hang on, we could just do this. Hang on. Uh, now it says a clever Russian is planning on a streaming service exclusively for Van Films. He's going to call it Netflix. <laughs> oh my god, Netflix. Okay, let's see. What... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see what we got here. So we got like list entity. Okay, so then we can go. Then we can just say for each. For each uh, entity, entity in an entity list, then we can just say uh, entities dot add entity. Uh, or lowercase entity. There you go, we can just do it that way, right? And then just return the list. Return entities. Yeah, so get entities and get entities in chunk. Um, well, actually, we can just call it chunk get uh, get all entities. There you go, so we can just, because we're passing in chunks, so it'll, it'll literally chunk dot get all entities, right? So there we go. Now we can remove this. And that will be that will be the method there. Just get all entities um, from here. So that's a little bit simpler. Why do Australians prefer to stream their porn on local area networks? They come they come from a land down under. <laughs> okay, so returns all entities in a chunk because that one is not done, but it should be. So there we go. Now we got other. So now we can go back to this thing. So what we can do now, we can see if chunk sync is null. Okay, so we've got the bounding box now. So then, so chunk chunk sync is well. So then we can just say if the chunk sync is not null, we can just say chunk sync uh, get all entities, right? So there's our method now. Um, so then we can say, so we can say list. Entity, uh, and we can say list entity entities in chunk equals chunk sync dot get all entities. Right there we go. So that'll give us all the uh, that'll give us all the entities in that chunk. Then we could say for each entity in entities or entity entity in entities in chunk. So we could do this. We could say if, and then 
uh, entity get uh, get plot position uh, I think we can get the the bounding box, can't we? How do they do it for the how do they do it for the entities in here? They go oh come out of there. They go this uh entity dot get type entity dot bounding box dot intersects. So there we go. So we can go if entity dot bounding box dot intersects uh dot intersects and then we literally pass in uh bounds so if entity dot bounding box dot intersects dot in intersects the bounds there we go so now we can say if it intersects this then uh we can just do entities dot add uh entity there we go so we've now got the bounding boxes um it was fast forward here um and then yes yeah, so that works so then you, you specify its bounds if you've got that then it's all good um and what we should do is we should pass in again season bounds and then what we'll do we'll also pass in a list string of names there we go. So then we can pass in its uh, we can pass in the names of the entities as well. Um, so then what we could do in in six bounds and and we could do entity uh, we can do names dot contains because then we can look and see if the entity's name is in here. So then we can entity dot name. There we go. Then if it's if it's both of those, then we add the entity, right? So that means then, and then we can just uh, then we just return once we've done all that, we just return entities like that. There we go. So now we can pass in a bounds. We can pass in the world the bounds in the world that we want to check through, and the list containing the names of all the entities that we want to look for. We can then loop through the bounds. We can go and say, okay, so if uh, go, so going through all the bounds and stuff, uh, get all the chunks out of those bounds, um, and then we can say for each entity in those chunks, um, go ahead and grab those. Uh, chunk sync is not null. Well, get chunk cache, get chunk sync ij, bounds min, bounds max. So then, and then literally we can just say if it's within the bounds, um, then go and get from those. Now it says that all of the cows on the farm networked all of their computers so they could stream the latest Disney film. They set up a Mulan. <laughs> oh, well. Mulan is just one of the things in the... Actually, I've seen Mulan a long time ago. That's pretty good. Um, now, the other thing we could do is we could set up a because um, currently I've got to set I've got it set up by bounds um, and bounds aren't too hard to create. You have a center uh, which is the tile entity coordinate and then you have the the x y z range, which is actually pretty easy to do. So I think because bounds are a two D thing. So the other thing we got to check. Um, well, maybe what we want to do then is pass in the coordinates. Um, Actually, yeah, this is what we want to do. So we're going to do, um, let's pass in, let me see, we are, we either pass in the bounds or we pass in the middle, we pass in the the, co the center and the range and then get the bounds out of that um, because that might be, that's a very expensive operation to perform though. Um, Set from 2D to 3D, that's very expensive in terms of computation time. Um, okay, I guess then to keep it simple, we'll keep it 2D just for now. Um, and then we can go ahead and like add some, add, add another thing to check for in 3D later. Um, I could though, actually, I could store a dictionary of this. So we could store, this is a bit more data to store, we could go a dictionary. And then we got vector 
vex3i.entity. Here we go. So we can store its coordinate as well. So we can store where, where it is and the entity in a dictionary and do it that way. What do you call a clever, socially awkward, bisexual hippie with fans, with, uh, with, fa with fancy neckwear who streams Star Trek? A shy, wry, bye guy in a fly tie watching sci-fi on Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I see X, X, Z, Z, no Y there. Yeah, that's the thing. Bounds are a 2D thing, whereas what we want to do is a 3D thing. So I'm going to have to see if I can sort this out. Um, so let's go and do a dictionary. And it's going to be a vector 3i. Actually, no, vector. Th we should do it the other way. Entity and then its coordinate the other way around. Because entities, the entity will have a unique ID assigned to it, I think. Um, vector 3i. There we go, yeah, so we're going to have to do it this way. Dictionary entity vector 3i, because I think they have a unique ID when one is spawned. Is a new dictionary uh, entity dot vector 3i. There we go. So we're going to do it like this. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do add, uh, oh. then we're going to do add if new. Hi, Hello. The, the how to dip the MCs in here. Oh, I hear myself yeah. twice. Uh oh, this is bad. Whatever. Yeah, okay, this uh, entity dot get to, entity dot bounding box. Num 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 pizza. Get it, entity hmm. dot. Is my box. um? Is my thing intersect. going through your microphone? I think my headset's going. My uh, my sound's no, going through actually, your mic. Not. And then we literally because I can in. hear myself Give twice coming now. through yours. All right, no worries. Yeah. Let me just uh, yeah, yeah it's definitely coming through yours. Yeah, it's definitely coming. Yeah, you're here on my uh, AC. Ah, uh, uh, I switch. I need to switch. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can still. Uh, I think yeah. you got to sort out the noise a bit more because when I speak, I can still see my circle coming. There we go. That's better. Whatever you did, that's better. <laughs> How you doing, dude? All right. Let's see what we got here. So yeah, X, X, Z, Z, but no, no Y. So Unforgiven is here. How you doing, dude? All right, let's see here. So we've got entities, add new. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do its entity. And then we're going to do entity dot get, uh, get block position. There we go. So entity dot get block position. I think that is a vector 3i, isn't it? Um, yeah. And then, and there you go. So we can do entities then you can do entities get block position and then it can output a list it can then output a list of the block positions and then you can check whether it's in the coordinates so there we go so that's the first one so that will return the dictionary of entities to you so then what you could do is you could then just part that once you verify whether it's in the correct bounding box um you all, all you then need to do is check the z coordinate of the entity and check that that is within your z range as well so the last thing you need to do then is from here um we can do public uh public static and then we can do list entity There we go. So we're going to have this entity, and then we can say get entities uh, in bounds, or get entities in x, y, z. There we go. So all, let's just call it get entities in range. That should work. Okay. So then we're going to pass in the. Uh, so to do that, we're going to pass in the world because we need that one. Then we're going to pass in the vector three i. Uh, center, and then vector 3i range. There we go. So that's what we're going to pass in. Um, so then once we've done that... Okay, so that should be fixed. Yeah, I think that's better now. Yep, there you go. Hiya, Miss Bendaji. <laughs> Bendaji. So let's see. We've got to get in season range. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to, first of all, let's create our bounds now from this info. So we can say bounds, bounds equals new bounds. And then you pass in, um, for this, it's got a couple of overlay methods, but I think you just pass in the center. And you pass in the range like that. Um, let me just double check this. So, vector 3i. 
cannot say okay. if entity dot landing box dot intersects dot in, intersects the bounds. There oh, we go. So I hear now we again. can say if it intersects this. Oh, I'm doubling in. Yeah, I'm muting the tab. I'm muting the tab. Oh, okay, I, I just like, did. I was like, "Huh, what's going on here?" <laughs> um, and Mel says, "Hi, I'm forgiven." So we got to do this as vector three. So uh, I think we can just do two vector three. Uh, there we go. So you can do bounds center to vector three. Cannot convert from method group to vector. Three. Yeah, last night I um, drank, uh, had like ten shots. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, in chase to the wind and still walking straight. <laughs> I was like, how are you? How are you still standing? <laughs> you're just like, I, I saw that picture of you, and you were just like, <laughs> you're like, this is this is me after six. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen me. Uh, uh, my mom, mom's like, mom's just less in there. Mom just standing on there laughing because she knew I was, I was yeah. kind of tipsy. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> All right, so there's our bounds. Um. Because I think bounds only store x and z info, don't they? Um, so there's that vector to size. Okay, so then we can go. Then what we can do is we can go dictionary, um, and this is going to be our entity and our vector three i, and then entities equals, and then we can just call that method below that we wrote there. Um, so get entities in bounds, and then you just pass in world and bounds. There we go. Right, so get into season bounds, world bounds. Um, oh, and we should include a list of names here to part as a pass through variable here. So list uh, names uh, or list of string names. Right, so that's the names of the entities, right? So we're going to say the bounds, pass in the names uh, like that. So that's going to pretty much do this this little line here is going to do all that work for us right there so it's going to find all the bounds get them into here and then it's going to give us a dictionary of the entities and their coordinates then what we're going to do is we're going to go list entity uh equals uh Malzo, what's wrong entity list she's freaking and, laughing oh uh, she's crying laughing <laughs> uh, i can I, I think i think probably like how many shots you had in your and just like the picture and everything <laughs> Um, okay, so entity list, and that's going to be just a new list. We're going to cast it to a new list. And uh, list, entity list, new list, entity. Okay, now we already know for each of the entities that they are within the bounds because this uh, this line here gets them within their bounding area. But we don't. the only thing we don't know from here is the Z coordinate. So the only thing we have to check here is whether the entity Z coordinate is Z1. So we just go for each. So, Max. Yes. Uh, what does it mean when, when it says uh, world out of bounds? World out of bounds? Yes. I'm guessing that's... Um, I'm guessing that's when you... Uh, it's gone red over text. The, I guess it's when it's trying to set something in a block position that doesn't exist outside of the chunk. So I guess if you, yeah. if you're, yeah, so if you're trying to go, if you're trying to set something like, say, if you've got an 8K map and you go outside the rad zone to that blank area and you try and set, and it tries to put something there, it'll probably give you an out of bounds thing. So I guess if you try and, if you try like set things in that area, which it shouldn't do really, because I don't know, because I think the world thing just like stops loading at that point. Um, unless like an entity walks that far out, and then it goes, it gives an out of bounds exception when once it walks outside of that range. But it doesn't happen with the player, so might turn, depend on its spawning or stuff or something like that as well. No, so I decided to pass my oh, time well, self quarantine. This, I keep like when I have, if I load like a sixteen k world, um, it does that. I don't understand why it's doing that because it's a large world. Hmm. And what I've done is with with the uh, the sixteen k worlds, I've made the city small. Yeah, and that's I'm guessing cities that's and towns small. So why is it trying to load something that's not actually not on the map? Are you getting that when you do it in King Gen, or are you getting that when you load your mod? King Gen, just in just in King Gen itself. So you're is that from the King Gen? Yeah, I get I got itself? it in Nitro also. That's weird. I never got that. I don't know. Maybe it's not saying the right world size. I'd, I'd, um, I'd, I'd message Kingslayer about that if it's happening within his app because he'll be able to fix that. Because that's if that's from his app, then I have no idea. Um, 
you know, Tavi is six shots, and that was it. Imagine ten uh, by streaming uh, Sylvester Stallone movies. Unfortunately, I'm off to a rocky start. Yeah, you want to know something? I, I was kind of shocked because uh, I was watching football last night. That's why I was drinking. Oh yeah, um, of course. <laughs> Yeah. We got our ass whipped 35 to 0. Oh. <laughs> by the same team we beat in the, the, the Super Bowl. Yeah. At our own home turf. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. But it was preseason, so that game meant nothing. But yeah. it was just it was just embarrassing. Yeah. So center dot Z. Hey BRS, welcome to the stream. How you doing, BRS? Welcome to the stream, dude. So zero point five. Is my is, am I too too loud? Um, let me see. I can turn you down a little bit on my end because I got I got you at two hundred, but you were quite earlier. So let me let me do you to like one one five four. There we go. Let's try that. That'd be better. Yeah, I adjusted my microphone. Yeah, that's really good. Then integer max z equals center dot z plus range dot z. Okay, there we go. And then we can just say, um, and then we just want to check that the the coordinate is between these two min and max ranges. And if it is, then we can add it to the list. So we can just say um, if um, so. The entity is stored in the in the key, but we want the value. So if entry dot value dot z um, is greater than min z and uh, or let's do greater than or equal to so if it's greater than the minimum and entry dot value dot z is less than or equal to the maximum z coordinate then we can just go entities entity list dot add and then entry dot key there we go so essentially that will say then yeah so then all you have to do is just check because we already know that all entities in here are in the correct x y space or in the x uh, x z space actually no this should be this should be y shouldn't it not z my bad uh, i always see z as the um i always see z as the uh the up and down one, but it's actually the y coordinate. So let's go ahead and fix that. So yeah, we know that the x z coordinates are, are set correctly. We just have to check the y. Um, so that's the only thing we need to check now. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick because it's actually the y coordinate we've got to set. Um, there we go. It's energy value y is less than max y. There we go. So yeah, we can check if it's greater than the minimum and less than the maximum, or equal to, of course. And if, because we know the x and y from here is correct, so this 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 whole thing here gets it within the x y bounds of the chunk. But to get it in the z bounds, we need to obviously make sure that uh, that it's gone from there. So just checking there, we just have to, or just checking the y one. Sorry, we just have to check that it's greater than min, less than the ma uh, less than the maximum. And if it is, then we can add that to the list. And then finally, just return. Uh, return entity list. Uh, return entity list. That's pretty, pretty much what we do. And then we can call that within our method over there. So then we can just go, mm. so from here, gets all entities in a specified XYZ range around a center point. Pretty much all it does for that one. Um, now the bounding, uh, the only thing, the only, the only thing with the bounds is I have to think. Um, uh, plus plus. Um, let me see, because I might be able to even do it within this area as well, because there could be a way that we don't need to do it with the bounds, um, which might even be better. BRS says, function. think of Z as away from the camera and close to the camera. Or forward, yeah, forward on or the ground yeah. or backward. <laughs> Man says max Z, maxi, max Z, max Y. Hang on, have I got to call that one? Yeah, max Z, min Z, uh, min one, max Y. So yeah, currently it's still in these two functions, but I might be able to combine these into one method instead, which would be more efficient. Because the problem, the problem with doing it this way 
is it's great if you do need to have both of these things available to you. Um, so if you do need the dictionary and the coordinates, and you also need a list. But really, we only care about how many entities there are. So the only thing we really need is a list of entities. So the problem is we're actually writing to something twice. We're writing to a dictionary, giving that out. We're then rereading that dictionary and then writing to a list. And that is like... In terms of efficiency, that's horribly inefficient, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do um, let's go ahead and do something uh, a little bit different here. So what we can do instead, instead of using bounds, uh, let's actually come away from this, and we're just going to say instead of bounds here, we're just going to go vector three i center, and then that just like the other method, vector three i range. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. So we've, we kind of already wrote our thing to determine its range, right? So we've got the minimum, the maximum. So why don't we just do mm. that with the same of it with x and z? So we can just go int min x equals, and then we can do center, uh, center dot x minus range dot x. Right All right, no worries, dude. And then we can do int max, and then the maximum one is center dot x plus range dot x there we go so we can go ahead and do it this way because that way we can do it for all for each of them so we can do min y equals center dot y minus range dot y and then the same for this int max y is center dot y plus range dot i Because that would be a little bit more. So this is going to be a little bit easier. There we go. So let's do that, and then the same with the maximum. So yeah, we can assign all these. Because then, if we do that, then we don't need to worry about this stuff. Once we get rid of this, because um, we've already got bounds x min, so all we need to do here is just change this to min x i is less than or equal to max x, like that. And then this is going to be min z and max z. There we go. So then we're going to go ahead and grab those. Um, Ah, wait, no, we still do need the bounds, though, don't we? Um, ah, that's the problem. We still do need the bounds to check that the bounding box intersects it. Okay. Um, so that's bounds, that's y bounds. Okay, so new plan, then. New plan. Here we go. Got a better idea. Um, we'll create the new bounds inside this. Okay, here's a better idea. So keep those there. But we're going to do this. We're going to do... Uh, well, kind of space. Okay, got a new idea. So bounds, bounds equals new bounds, and then center dot to vector three. Uh, to vector three i. No, go to vector three. Got to cast it upwards, and then we've got range to vector three. No, not not that one. Uh, center to vector three, range. Why is that doing that now? Hang on, it's kind of going a bit crazy. So, center, let's three. Oh, that got removed. Totally why. <laughs> okay, let's try and do this one. How you doing, Jacob? Welcome to the stream. He says, how are you doing? Doing very well, thank you, Jacob. Uh, what's all the fuss about Twitch streaming? Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Hey, if you want to know this, like, comment, subscribe, and it's all good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do range dot to vector three. Now I think what it does is it actually um, halves the range. So what we want to do is we want to do uh, two, two times range to vector three because it halves it when it makes bounds. So we want it to be, we want the bounds to be like instead of like within a within a thing, we want it to be like double it. Because if we um, let me look at bounds real quick, so I think that's what it does is it it calculates the bounds halved. So if I look at the bounds in here, how are they assigned? So M center is size to O point. Yeah, so the size of the bounds gets halved, see? So when you set it this way, um, the extents get halved. So if we assign two times that, it will go back and do the double um, and assign it to it the same as we do natively. So that's better. Um, so then once we do that, 
uh, bounds.max.z. Um, okay. And we can do int bounds uh, y min. <laughs> y min is utils dot fast floor uh, bounds dot min dot y. Yeah, so it does store the y value. Okay, so bounds are actually a 3D object. There we go. Uh, and then float uh, world dot c collision blocks uh, divided by 16. Okay, no, actually, no, we don't need to divide to divide that by 16. Because um, that gets whether it's in the correct bounds. Let me see here. So, man, <laughs> Sorry, I guess. Um, and then the next thing uh, we need to double close that. So yeah, we don't. We they only divide this by sixteen to get its position in the chunk. But the y position in the chunk goes from ground to sky, so we don't want to do that. Uh, uh, so equals utils dot fast floor. Uh, then we're going to do bounds dot min dot z no dot y bounds dot max dot y. Uh, here we go. Plus float and then world dot c collision blocks. There you go. So yeah, the y one we don't need to divide by sixteen to get its local chunk position. But yeah, the main the main reason for we we don't have to do that is because yeah, the the chunks. Um, think of chunks like cuboids, um, where the 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 x and z is like the square, a sixteen by sixteen square, but then it goes from bedrock to the very top of the sky. So it's, it's like a, a big set of cuboids. What do you call a voodoo live stream? Twitchcraft. <laughs> and I says, bless you, thank you, Melza. Um, so that will do. That will do this. Here we go. So we've done this now. So next turn to and this can now be a list, right? So we go list, uh, and that's just going to be entities now because we don't care about the coordinates anymore because we already set the bounds here. So that's going to be a list here, and that's going to be also a new list. There you go. So turn it back to a list because, like I said, if we can do it in one method in one go, that's going to be so much more efficient. Um, so yeah, efficiency when it comes to this is is something. So yeah, so it calculates it in the bounds. Uh, that checks the min and max here. List of entities is checking get all entities, uh, which we defined before. Um, then we say if entity bounding box intersect bounds, uh, then what we can do is we could say uh, and entity uh, dot uh, vector uh, or entity dot get block position. Um, dot x or dot y is greater than or equal to min y, which I think is fine. Uh, hang on a second. So go on int or bounds bounds y min I call it here. So let's do that. So it's greater than or equal to bounds y min, and then entity dot get block position dot y is less than or equal to bounds y max there we go so we can do it this way because then if we did it this way then we kind of just have it uh entities then add uh entity like that I uh, don't need to worry about the block position because we've already got it like that. There we go. And then we add entities like that. And there we go. So list entity. Let's do this entity. Uh, what's wrong with this? T is entity represents uh, expected. Ah, didn't put a semicolon right there. There we go. So there we go. We've created now a new a new bounds like this. Uh, Unforgiven says, uh, what did the police officer say to his belly button? You're under a vest. <laughs> Okay, there we go. That's better now, because as you can see, well, we got a bit of a pyramid of deathing going on here, but there you go. Um, that will work better. So this method now, not required. So get rid of that. Don't need to worry about you. Okay. Now, once we do that, um, we can then pretty much pass in the tile. So the center is going to be the tile entity coordinate. The range is going to be the range that we specified in XML. And then once we've got that, then 
that's pretty good. So I think that would work. Um, that worked pretty nicely. So now we got to do is let me make one more method here, and it's going to just re this can be a simple method now. Public int uh, or public static int uh, uh, enough. Actually, no. Let's do a, do a bool here. Uh, public static bool uh, enough entities uh, in bounds, and then we're just going to pass in the world. So pass in world world vector three i center. Uh, vector three. Back to three I range. Uh, then we also have to pass in list of type uh, string names, and then int uh, how uh, how many are needed. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say return, and then we're going to say uh, get entities in bounds, and then world center range names and then dot count because remember this returns a list so we can just go dot count is greater or equal to than needed it's pretty much all of these so essentially we're going to get these and then we're going to say out of, uh, once we got this list count how many we actually got and is that greater or equal to how many we needed so then we can just say is there enough entities in, in bounds is that how many we needed and if there are then there we go well 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 three holes in the ground <laughs> why did the max fox fall down the well because he couldn't see that well <laughs> well there we go that'd be fun that'd be something wouldn't it okay so that's that one done so the big big old long method there is done so then we've got to go and do this so come down here and then returns whether we have enough entities in the boundaries for the block or for the position. Um, so yeah, so if we have enough, then we've got that. Because that's going to be very easy now to go ahead into tile entities and check that now. So now we've got has nearby blocks, we can check has nearby entities. So what we're going to do is we're going to say... Uh, requires new blocks. So now, also, I could comment on uh, that little uh, three holes in the ground, but um, never mind. <laughs> yeah. hmm. <laughs> uh, right, so we can go. Mm, never mind. <laughs> so we could go. So this one is going to be a little bit more simple. Um, so we're going to go. What we're going to do is we're going to say. Um, int uh, entities or bool we can just say if uh, coordinate helper dot enough entities in bounds and then we pass in the world from our thing here uh, I think we need to get the, the tile entities position right as well uh, let me see it counts one Hello, yeah, got coordinates here. Uh, world this dot. Near my block cause this no names, no that's needed. Okay, so we can do this. And actually, thinking about that. There you go. Need... There you go, Mel. So there's a there's a joke for you. <laughs> uh, so you got this. As nearby entities. So you pass in the world, uh, this dot tell entity uh, to world pause. That's going to check. Uh, that's going to get the world position here. And then the range is this dot nearby entity range. Uh, the names is this dot nearby entity names. And how many we need is this dot uh, nearby entities needed. There we go. So then it's pretty much saying uh, if that's enough, uh, I think then we can just return that, can't we? Uh, return has no blocks. Type found. Not found. Uh, I think yeah, we can just return. We can just return 
uh, this dot um, has nearby entities equals that. There we go, because that returns a Boolean value. This is a Boolean value, so literally we can just do that last bit in a one-liner. So that works. Um, so then we just have to make sure that that gets called um, when we're checking for the local uh, the local update. So we need to check in here. We just need to do and this dot has nearby entities uh, in the world. So check that has no entities in the world. This could um, this could throw me like some red text. I reckon it probably will, and we'll have to debug this. Uh, what's forest comes password? <laughs> one forest one. <laughs> what does Rock and Robert do when she's bored? Tweet. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so that's that that done. And um, whether that can run. So then. Oh my god! I remember back in like kindergarten, we had we. That they'd play that freaking song, and we we'd literally have to freaking dance to it. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> okay, so I think that's everything we need to write in our Tile Entity class. So the last thing we need to do is actually print some messages to the user if there's not enough entities um, around, right? So that's the that's the pro that's the next thing we we'll probably want to do. So if we go into our block transformer right here, there is a method in here that um, once you go in here, there is block activated. There's also one that writes a message to the user when they look at it. Um, there's a method here, which uh, is right here, here. So this method here, get activation text. So essentially when the player looks at a block, this method gets called and it shows different. And currently you can see it shows different Elza, text. Elza, you're putting your foot in your mouth on that one. So his favorite place to be, the foxhole. <laughs> well. <laughs> Okay, so what this does is this checks um, if an update can happen. Uh, well, if an update can't happen, um, then it will go ahead and uh, goes ahead. Updates can't happen. We need to display this to the user and say why this can't happen. So essentially, um, if an update can't happen, if the block isn't powered, it will go ahead and say, "Okay, there's no power to it." If the block isn't heated, it will say, "Oh, there's no, there's no, there's no heat," kind of thing. So it will go ahead and uh, output. Uh, pretty much what is wrong with the uh, what the thing is here. Um, to get ready. Otherwise, it will say it's ready and not crafting. Um, so what we need to do is so we need to Max, add hours. Um, about that, about that, um, the wire to extend in the wire tool. Um, yeah, I found did it. You already do that patch. I haven't done oh, that did patch. Oh, you already yet. do do a I'm, patch for it? Not done it yet, ah, but okay. it's uh, it'll be a simple transpiler patch. Um, to do that, uh, I can make it. I can make my own model to double the range of it or something like that because it's set to ten and fifteen. So you want it to be like twenty and twenty-five, I think, um, and that will right. be fine. Because um, yeah, that's that's. I found the area in the code where it is. Um, so check by check nearby entities in range. Uh, we'll say if um, if not enough nearby entities in range, uh, output this to user. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to say uh, else. So yes, Mel, so your horns are holding your halo. <laughs> is it horns or is it like a rusty coat hanger? Let me see. It's a rusty bandage. A rusty bandage. <laughs> okay, so we can say else if uh, tile entity transformer uh, has nearby. Oh, hang on, that's uh, uppercase it. Else, if tile entity transformer, uh, oh, I guess it's tile entity block transformer here, so uh, that's fine. So if it doesn't have nearby entities, uh, then pass in the world as world. There we go, so it's underscore world as well. So if it doesn't have that, then we can go ahead and do some stuff here. So we need to have a tooltip. Um, okay, so we need to add a new localization thing here. So let's go into Fennec Core, uh, because we actually have this here. So if we go into config and in localization here, there is, uh, let me move this over so you guys can see it better outside of the chat. So let's go and have a look right here and see what we've got. So in the core here, 
Um, we've got ourselves. Okay, so this shows like warning, no heat what requires stuff like that. So we want to add a new. We want to add a new one here. Transform a tooltip. So let's see. Uh, transform a tooltip, no heat. Transform a tooltip, no blocks nearby. So we want to add one for no entities, right? So transformer tool uh, tip, no entities nearby. And that's a UI. So Max, are uh, you going to enter into the um, the contest for? Um, Am I going to enter into it? Fire? Um, I don't know honestly because uh, I'm not very good at art, so I don't think I'd be able to do anything very good. But anyone else is more than uh, welcome to enter it to get. Some, it's uh, it's uh, open some... to everybody. <laughs> I'll I'll just, I'll just draw a circle and just, like really badly, and just like here's my logo. <laughs> and he'll probably look at it and just be like. The fuck is that? <laughs> so go open and we go open. Um, oh my! Place. One. <laughs> no, this is a uh, very sharp, nicely filled horns. I'll tell you. <laughs> angel, I'm an angel. I'm an angel. Crying, laughing. <laughs> okay, so this one open. So there's open one, and then we need to, on a new line, we want to, in red, we're just going to say, warning, uh, not enough entities uh, nearby. And then we're going to put, we're going to output of what entities are needed. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to say, requires uh, two nearby entities. If I can spell correctly, two nearby entities, two nearby entities to work. Oh, and the F F F F is your uh, hex code. Saying the saying the color of the text, yeah. So then green yeah. will say accepted uh, or required entities, um, and then number three, and then set the text. Oh, if I right. wanted to change my tutorial tips tip color i would actually have to put the hex code afterwards um you, you put it before the text that you want the color to change so if you want the whole thing changed just like you would put it like where you where you have like you know like your three commas or whatever you'll put it like right at the start and then at the end just cast it back to white for you know safety reasons and then yeah wherever pretty much wherever you want to do it so yeah mine what mine says is it will say if you don't do anything it says this part here the the thing to open is in white this bit here is in red warning not enough entities nearby then back to white requires this many nearby entities to work back to green required entities and then the list of those and then back to white so that's pretty much that's pretty much what yeah. it does yeah so that's that's pretty much how you can do it um uh, for any uh for anything um but yeah there's um there's you can do that in localization directly to change your color so you don't have to like oh, cool. do any kind of custom code like that you can change your color of any text you want um so yeah in, in general it's white so you want to always cast it to six f's or you can probably just use three f's um for that so like this one here ff3233 i could probably just write f33 and it would be the same um or maybe slightly different but yeah it's, it's kind of like that um that, that was like a, that was like crying laughing <laughs> Uh, so that is that is that the rusty coat hangers burning in hell melter right there? Those those are the remotes. <laughs> that's be. her horns holding her halo. Oh, that's that's the horns holding the halo. Hmm. Well, well, technically that would be me because that's actually one of my old gamer tags. Hmm. I see. All right. So what we can do then is we could say in here we're going to say tooltip um, here. So tooltip equals and then localization dot get and then the tooltip we called it was transformer tooltip no entries nearby right so we're going to get that one uh, i think we have to write it as a string uh transformer to, yeah so that's the one we're going to get so the tooltip is transformer tooltip no entities nearby perfect so we've got that done now the next thing we want to do is we have to uh this string in my blocks so transformation body parser nearby block names count zero uh free string block name in this transform body parser nearby um okay so now we've got to say um 
we got to now output a list of what entities are accepted to be nearby the block to the user, right? So that's that's the thing. So we have to we have to get a list of those. So we're going to say list uh, list string um, entity list equals new list string. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to pass the localized names into this thing. Um, so we're going to say um, so this new I've got names dot counting on zero. So yeah, we're going to find the names here. We're going to say if uh, this dot transformation property parser uh, dot nearby entity names dot count. So if there's more than more than zero of them, then we're going to say um, yeah for each one. So for each, then we're going to say for each uh, string name in this dot transformation project parser dot nearby entity names so for each one in there uh we're gonna go uh we're gonna go uh entity list dot add and then localization dot get and then that's gonna be um name so that's going to essentially return the localized version of the entity if it has a localization for it. If it doesn't, then uh, it will just return, like, if it's just like entity animal chicken and it doesn't have that, it will return that back. So there we go. And uh, BRS, is, uh, BRS is coming out with some music right there. Hell yeah. Beware of lightning, Melza. <laughs> Melza says, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a halo attached to my headphones. That sounds good. A headphone halo. You, you have to send the picture of it. Oh. So Wednesday night, my friend Tony and I were playing at American Truck Sum, and it was storming really bad. Yeah. And just as he logged out of the game, a lightning bolt tripped our freaking internet box. Oh, wow. Like, like, not even two minutes after he logged out, it tripped the, the internet box. And... I, me and him were like literally right in the middle of uh, of a convoy. Oh wow! <laughs> on ATS, it's like, and like, I had headphones in, and because my other my main head Logitech headset broke, like the the part that you bit that you uh, use the connection to the classic part. Uh, where the microphone is. Yeah. Uh, that snapped. Uh oh. So I can't use the headset. And I haven't even had the headset not even three months. Oh, wow. Actually, not even six months, actually. Okay, so do that one. Any entity, six months. So this part right here, guys, what I'm doing is say if it's got more than uh, if it's got more than zero entries, it will go ahead and get a localized list of those names. Otherwise, it will get a localization that says any. So it'll say like accepted entities, entities any. So then what we need to do is we need to say um, string sources, um, and then that's write list of string. Oh, um, Melza, I'm coming for that bacon. Yeah. I'm gonna put some um and then we've gotta do so the list we gotta to write to a string is entity list. I'm and gonna then... put some fireball in Max's coffee. <laughs> and there we go. Thank you, baby! And then this, uh then string needed. Hey baby, put some uh put some fireball in Max's coffee. Oh it's not coffee, he's got it's uh, it's a can of seven up. <laughs> is what is, is ah. what the has right here. Um, so can't put five all in that because <laughs> it, it will spill. Um, so we're going to say this dot needed, and this one is just going to be uh, this dot transformation transformation probably parser dot uh, entity uh, nearby entity count dot two string. There we go. So we want to we want to definitely want to cast it to a string because otherwise that'd be bad. Um, and then all we got to do is return. Once we got this, we just pretty much can copy this line here. So it's going to return a string uh, with all these other things added into it, pretty much. So where I've done that uh, bracket zero, bracket one, bracket two, um, it's going to return this. Uh, so tool tap, player key, the block name, 
uh, needed in sources. But instead of uh, L block name, this time it's just going to be. Um, I don't think we need L block name here, do we? Uh, L name with blocks, tool L block name. What does that set it to? Uh, I think L block name gets set somewhere else, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think L block name gets set up here. Uh, Yes, it does. So yeah, that's pretty much what we've got to do. So we've got to set this in here. And once we've done that, it's going to say, if there are not enough entities nearby, it will say, hey, there's not enough entities nearby uh, around this block. And then it's going to say, these are the entities uh, you need. Uh, and then that's the sources, uh, all the entities that are accepted. Uh, once we've done that, it will actually show us uh, which ones are needed and which ones are not. Um, and that's this hashtag, it'd be fine, Max. Yeah, I'm sure it'd be fine. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be fine. Um, okay, so now we've done that, I think that's everything that we need to do to try and see if this is going to work. So the next thing we have to do is make a new type of transform block that uh, we can just use like a wood block for now, uh, make like a little boundary, and then we'll see if we can like put some chickens in it. Um, and see if it works. I think that's uh, I think that's what we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the XML side of things now. Well, first of all, let me build it and make sure I've got no uh, coding errors first, because that would probably be a good idea, wouldn't it? You know, just you know, build the code, make sure it doesn't uh, bug out on us. Now, the one thing is that I'm kind of worried about is uh, if this does have errors, it's gonna it's gonna cause some stuff, some issues. Ah, and that's the point. I didn't append to the read and write methods either, so I need to do that before we proceed with this, because otherwise it's going to uh, not remember the details about how many entities are needed, for example, and that will cause no refs on game load, which is bad. Um, and it says bacon equals pig equals animal equals organization equals life. Thus, does bacon equals life? Indeed. Yeah, the, the transitivity of uh, equality is uh, definitely uh, something that can be applied to bacon being life. Um, okay, uh, the request operation can be performed. Ah, that's because I've got uh, DMT loading up here. Okay, sorry if there's any little lag spikes, guys. There, I just saw OBS going into a bit of a bit of having a bit of a funny five minutes right there. Okay, so we do we still do need to take care of the read write methods here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So if we go into Visual Studio again. Too many tab syndrome, once again. Uh, so in Thailand to transformer.cs here, we have to take care of read and write. Because if we don't take care of read and write, what's going to happen is when we put the Thailand in game once it's loaded, everything's going to work fine. But when we save the game, it's not going to save our new properties. Um, and that's not going to be good. So we are going to go ahead and do this. So we're going to say um, this new live blocks range. Um, oh, I don't think I even uh, write out the... Um, Entities in range, are we? So we're going to go bw dot write, and then we're going to go this dot requires uh, nearby entities, and then we're going to go. Okay, let's let me let me do this. So we'll, we'll create a new line here until we've done everything. And we're going to go bw write, and then this is going to be next. one we need to do nearby block names so this one we need to do string help so it's got to be a string you got to write it as a string so you've got to go string helpers dot write uh, list to string uh, that's going to be this dot nearby entity names there you go so write that to a string put that here and then bw write and then we're going to go the next one we got to do is how many are needed so we can do this dot nearby uh, nearby entities needed. So that's how many we need to, to write to. And then finally, we have to output the range as well, right? So we're going to go. Uh, yeah, we do have to write that one. So write. Uh, so we've got to write the vector three i to the string and the range. So that's pretty easy. So bw dot write and then uh, string helpers dot write vector three i to string because that's another little method that I did um, before I even wrote this class honestly so we can go this dot nearby entity range there you go so we're just literally going to write those things into uh, we're, we're literally just going to write those things into us into a string I guess we also need to do um, 
requires yeah we should also write that one that requires user interaction as well because i didn't actually that's what i actually forgot to do now luckily i've not used that feature so i've never encountered that bug but somebody else might have done uh tmts that's it melza uh so is it then true that if homer equals donuts so daniel equals bacon perhaps yes no daniel equals coffee uh so we're gonna go bw and then we're gonna go right and then we need to just uh do this dot requires nearby um, or it requires user access. So you have to write that as well. Um, so that would be a Boolean value. So now we've written them. Once we come into our read method, so I, I recommend always do write first because then you'll know which order you need to read things in and take note of what these things are. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually uh, read the data back in. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of neaten this up a little bit because uh, this is something that kind of got pushed over so it's going to be easier if i do this and i can see exactly what this is doing it's just a little bit easier that way because that way i can kind of keep it all lined up nicely right so makes it a little easier apart from that one i'll keep i'll keep that one kind of there because i don't want it tabbed over too much because there we go because then if we do that look that's that's so much easier to like read the names of stuff and what it's doing right uh see programs never die they're just cast into void <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> same with any other kind of program wait how how can we be cast to void hmm Interesting. I guess we do. I guess we just get entered into a function that returns nothing. So there we go. And this is bad. Bells are bad. <laughs> okay. So then we're gonna go this right. So we have to do it in the order that we that we saved it, right? So if we don't do it in the order that we saved it, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be bad. We also need to do in here. We need to do this dot has nearby entities and set that to false. We have to do that once we load it because otherwise we're going to get an ORF. Um, now the other thing so we so this requires nearby entities is a boolean value right so we have to do this uh, nearby um, uh, requires nearby entities equals and then we need to do binary reader and we have to read in a boolean value and that is just going to be so essentially it, it it streams in the data so you don't have to like you don't have to say oh this these next bytes it will stream in the bytes and as long as you read them in the correct order it will read in as many bytes as it need to read so the next one we need to do is the uh, the nearby entity names we put we cast it into a string right so we had a list but we put it into a string so what we need to do is in the read we need to do the opposite we need to take the string and cast it back to a list so to do this we're just going to go this and then it's going to be um, so the name of this one was nearby entity names right yep so we're going to do nearby entity names and then it's going to be nearby entity names and then what we need to do is we need to do string helpers and we need to write a string to list so because we wrote the list to the string when we were writing we now need to write a string to a list when reading and what we are all we have to pass in here is the string so we just have to read a string there you go so we're going to pass that in perfect so that's the second one now the third one um this time uh we we output an integer because the number of nearby blocks we needed was an integer right so we have to read an integer for our next one so this dot nearby entities needed equals and then br dot read int 32. so integers by default is just a, an int 32 so we have to go ahead and do that one um there you go so uh, uh, bad, uh bad browser equals no ref uh Multi-line comment uses, uh, yeah, a, a multi-line comment you can use that. Uh, you can use these, yeah, you can use that for multi-line. But uh, I just have a few single lines hit every now and then, so it's just it's just kind of like the way I the way I code things like that. But yeah, you can just use single lines here. But I kind of like having this to break up my code a little bit. It looks a little bit nicer as well. Makes it be like, oh, this is the method header, and it's kind of like pretty cool. So the next one, so the next thing we saved was a vector. We had a vector three 
and we saved that to a string. So we wrote that vector to a string. So we have to read in a string and then cast it to a vector three, right? I do have a method that does that. So we got to do uh, this. And says, good afternoon, all. Don't mind me, just lurking. How you doing, Logan J. Enter? Welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for hanging out in the Lurkers Lounge, by the way. So be sure to take as many cookies as you like, because we have an infinite supply of them. Milk, too, apparently. Because <laughs> that's, uh, that's been one of those things we've had in the Lurkers Lounge for quite a while. So... We have to read now, uh, we now have to write a vector 3i, but we're going to be given a string value when we read this next one. So what we have to do is we have to turn our string into a vector 3i. So we're going to do this, dot nearby blocks, uh, or nearby entities range. Uh, I think it's nearby entities range. Uh, hang on. Yeah, I'm writing this. Uh, this dot nearby entity. Oh, nearby entity range. My bad. It's a singular. Uh, nearby entity range. And this is going to be. So the first thing we need to do. So we're going to get a string, right? So it's going to be. It's going to be br dot read string. But we need to cast this into a vector three i. So what we're going to do is around this thing, we're just going to go string helpers. And then we want to write a string to vector 3i. Pretty easy. I've already got that method written, so we could just do it in one liner like that. Look at that. Uh, nearby entity uh, entity. That's it. <laughs> not 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 entity entity. <laughs> it's an entity. Entity, entity, likes the entity. <laughs> uh, right, requires user access. It's a boolean value, so this is a simple one. So this. Oh my. <laughs> so this dot requires uh, user access is a boolean value, so it's just going to be binary reader read boolean. There we go. So essentially now you can see that the way that I've written out all these things is the way that these things get written in in that exact order. Um, and then essentially the the one thing I'm doing here is this this after read stuff um, is just so that I can go ahead and read uh, all the values in here so that we can set all these defaults by default. So when the game loads, these will be set to false, but because then the update method will run, it will go ahead and reset all those values to what they were on save. So there's no reason to save those values. We may as well just read them. We just may as well just reinstantiate them on game load. It's a little bit more efficient that way because save files will then be slightly smaller because the save file generated by a lot of these things is going to be absolutely gargantuanly huge. One of these blocks takes up um, <laughs> one of these blocks takes up a lot of space in the save file. So yeah, we want to try and minimize minimize that as much as possible um but it's kind of nice to have all the functionality in this one place as well so that's everything done there so that's now done so let's go ahead and close down dn spy let's go build the game now the first thing i need to do is before i even make a new transformation block is put a an original transformer block in there and just test that it loads because that's the one thing I gotta do. So we gotta we gotta check because because I updated my current code. We want to make sure that we haven't broken any of our older code. Because if we have broken it, we have to look and see what we got. If you take a coke out of the oven and drink it. It has the same properties of getting a superstar on Mario. <laughs> okay, yeah, you'd just be like it's like molten magma juice at that point, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, so. I think we've got, um, right, I need to enable a modlet that has, so it did build, which is good. I need to enable a modlet that has, okay, so we can disable a few of these. Um, I need to, oh, actually, the leather processing has a transformer block already, so that's fine. We can go into a prefab world and just see if this works. So let's launch the game. We're going to make sure that everything passes as it should. Because, like I said, we've updated existing code. So any existing blocks that are transformer type, we have to check them. Because if not, then we have to see what we did wrong and fix it and make sure that this is backwards compatible with that other one. Because <laughs> otherwise, uh, you know, people are going to be upset with me. So, yeah, there, there is that. Now, for you guys who like to mod with just XML and you want to use all the features of Fennec Core, I will be uh, doing a full documentation about uh, how to do all of this stuff in XML because the idea of me doing this Fennec Core is that all the features that I would like in XML are now in XML for everyone else to use. So you download Fennec Core, load that in front, and you got all that. Okay, now I must open the 7-Up and take some, take some drink because my mouth is getting very dry because I've been yapping and yapping and yipping and yapping and yapping for hours, so very important. Okay, 
mouse is weird. Yeah, yeah. Right, so let's make sure that our current code did not break. Let's go open the console here. Check for nasty red. Because nasty red is horrible red, and we don't want nasty horrible red, because that would be bad. Alright, so loading block IDs, item IDs, so all the blocks have loaded fine, so that's good. So I don't think we've broken our current transformer blocks. And that's the thing, I've, I've tried to write my transformer blocks to be modular, so it's all, it, like I've written a separate method for does it have nearby blocks, and I wrote a separate method for does it have nearby entities, you know what I mean? Because it's fully modular, and if something breaks, I can just be like, ah, that module is bad, let's remove that module and see what the frig is going on with it. You know what I mean? So if I need to reverse what I've done, I can literally just comment out those modules um, and it will stop. Um, it'll stop checking those. Um, so good good way to expand when, um, especially when you're still fleshing out code, do it modularly, expand it that way. And then when you have a finally finished out design, then you can go ahead and kind of do it in one kind of big chunk. Um, but yeah, mod modular is best for when you're like adding features. Especially when you don't know how big your features are going to be that you want, you know what I mean? So writing it in a modular fashion is lovely. Oh, hello! <laughs> these guys are these guys are burning out the top. Okay, uh, let me let me get rid of those. <laughs> I think it's it's because I updated these uh, these models in between. <laughs> That's funny. They're, they're like they're, they're like they're on fire. <laughs> they're on fire. <laughs> All right. So this uh, tanning rack is ready. So what we need to do. However, we can't just use this one. We have to put in a new one to make sure it works. So always test with a new tile entity when you're doing this, because old tile entities sometimes have dummy data that will go ahead and just three for a loop. So if we put this down, um, okay, it does seem to work just fine. So let's go ahead and see if we can put some uh, animal hide. So cured animal hide gets turned to leather on this thing. So let me go ahead and put these in here. Make sure we get no norefs. Okay, so it looks like it is working. Okay, as you can see, it says it's working there. Very good. Let's make sure we get an output. And if that is true, what we're going to do is we're going to save it and we're going to reload it and make sure that there's no issues on reload, because that's the that's the that's the issue that some can sometimes happen is if there's issues on reload, then you're going to have problems. So this is going to take a little while. Um, I think the I think the leather recipe does take a while. So. Another recipe on the tanning rack takes 45 seconds per piece. Yeah, so it is. Uh, it does take a little bit of uh, a little bit of time. I do want to find a way though to make the recipes go faster. Uh, that's something. Uh, and it says, uh, it says nice, nice building behind you there. It says Melza. Oh, this one. Yeah, that's a, it is a pretty nice building, isn't it? Yeah, Melza, your your uh, your free fab has kind of become like my fennec testing ground for for new features. <laughs> it seems to actually work pretty well, honestly. There we go. Uh, HTTP 404, error 404. <laughs> okay, and there we go. Transformations do still work, which is good. Now the other thing I want to test is there was one thing that I needed to test was fixed, and I think I did fix it. But if I have one thing in here, does it still do the transformation properly? Because I remember that on, it was not doing it for the last one. So let's just check that it does it for one at a time. Because that was that was one thing that wasn't working before. And I need to do that. Um, it's, it's cardboard cutout buildings. <laughs> ha! Not cardboard cutout. It has an interior. It's not painted yet, but it has one. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bloody cardboard cutout buildings. I should make like some some kind of porter cabin kind of uh, prefab as well. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, what is a what is a hot hose? Uh, so, something new on Twitch? <laughs> uh, cleverly designed cardboard cutout. Says Melza. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this should still be doing transformations. There we go. We got two in there. So I just want to check in a few in a few seconds whether that one still gives me the thing. Because right now it says yeah, look, it still says it's working. So it's still it's still uh, got the thing in the queue, which is good. Um, and yeah, there we go. It actually gave me a leather out here as well. And this time I did put it in the top slot because you know the bottom slot was uh, didn't have anything in and that was free. So yeah, that bug has actually been fixed now. Hooray! So I did fix that bug too. Okay, that is good. That was. Uh, just a little uh, update method that worked. Okay, so next thing I want to do, delete all my, uh, right, delete everything that is not a concern right now. So none of this stuff we need to worry about. The only thing I want to do is I want to just dot a few of these in a couple of different chunks, right? We're going to put a couple of these, just lay them around, go about 20 blocks away, put one over there, go about another 20 blocks away, put one here. We're going to save this and we're just going to reload it again. 
Now the main reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that my read and write methods are not going to throw me errors. And this is the way you test that. So what you do is you put down the tile entities that you want, you then go and save your game, and then you just reload your game. If you get red text on when you come out of game, there's problems with your write method. If you get red text going in game, there's problems with your read method. Um, this is a very easy way to test that. Um, so now I'll go back into the pre-adventure again. Yeah, that was, that's a, a, a hot twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, load back in world again. And as long as I don't get red text, then my method is also correctly done. So let's go and check that for the world. Make sure I don't get any chunk resets. And make sure all of my, make sure every one of these is still here. That's the other thing, because sometimes, um, sometimes it won't reset the chunk. It will just remove the block itself, um, but won't ch won't tell you. So you have to always check that all the entities. There was three here. There's one over here. Yep, and there's one around here. Yep. Okay, they're all there. So that means that our read and write methods are okay. So there we go. So that means we've uh, successfully successfully not broken the game now that's that's only the first part that's that's the first bit the next bit now is we have to actually test out the uh test out the code itself so let's actually now use our new code in xml and see if we can get it to work so let's try this here um so close that one and save that so save it with nothing in now okay so let's have a bit of a test, shall we? So we're going to go ahead and make a uh, we're going to go ahead and make like a just a woodblock clone um, that does the functions that we want. We can worry about like models and stuff later, uh, but we want to do like a just a just a, a block to test the, their entities in the in the boundaries. Uh, that's the first thing we want to do. So let's go and see here. So it looks like OBS is throwing some errors again, doesn't it? Uh, why is it why is it dropping off the uh, the ratings here it's gonna it's gonna die on me again isn't it it's uh not receiving much data i'm sorry if it's going blurry guys i don't know why obs is like throttling my data throughput um so yeah if you're getting uh if you're getting lag then i'm sorry about that but let's see what we got here so if we go into xml right let's let's just write it to the vanilla uh, not the vanilla blocks, but let's just write it into here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come under all this stuff here. I'm just going to write. Uh, I'm just going to write some testing blocks here. So I've already got like multi-block structures here and like kind of documented in Fennec Core. Um, but I will be properly documenting this in a README um, so that people who want to uh, people who want to use this stuff will be able to have a have like a wiki about that as well. But that will come uh, a little bit later on. Um, Let's see, Mel says, uh, so sounds like what happens when outside. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So we're going to go for this one. We're just going to go, so right down here, we're just going to go append xpath equals blocks. Okay. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to make a, oh, I don't want two closing appends here, just one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, block name equals uh we're gonna just say entity test or entity detection t entity detection test okay so all i want to do is i just want to make sure that this feature works so we're gonna go property name equals extends value and we'll just accept make it extend wood master so it'll just be a wood block so we don't have to worry about like what model it has or anything like that. So then we're gonna go property, not trop, not not tropopy, property, <laughs> a tropopy. What's that? What's a tropopy? I don't know. Uh, is it interactive? Ooh. Uh, lead low and twitch. Yep. Stitch got a little drug habit. <laughs> oh god. Block <laughs> name equals uh, probably name is class, and then value equals transformer dot mods or transform the column mods with space there okay then we need to do a property we need to tra define one transformation at least property class equals transformations so this is how you do the auto recipes for these um, so property name equals transformation one dot time and then value equals one second then we can do property name equals transformation one input one 
value equals let's just do like a a, a, a rock resource rock small and just one and then property name equals transformation one uh, output one value and that's going to be uh, resource uh, resource wood so let's just say this this block turns rocks into wood if we have uh, if we have an entity nearby that's pre that's pretty much what we're going to do um, You'll find it on Max's uh, Max's fans only page. Oh no, no, no! I don't have an only fans page. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so that's what we want to do here, and then we want to do. So now we've got to set our other properties. So now this is the reason why I did them in the, the properties down here, because if we now go into transformation property parser, they're all written for me down here. The properties I can use. So we're going to say property name equals require nearby entities. So let's go and copy this property here. So we're going to make that a new property in XML. So we're going to go property name equals required by entities value equals true. So set that to true here. And then we're going to do uh, nearby entity names. So we're going to go property name equals nearby entity names. And then value, uh, let's just do entity animal chicken. There we go. So we grab that one. And we can go with that one. So then we can do nearby entity count. So property name equals nearby entity count. And then value is. Oh, no, my, my bad. <coughs> I need to add it over here. So if I entity count, let's just say we just want, well, let's just test it with one chicken for now. <laughs> test it with one chicken and then property name equals. Now I'm totally expecting, I'm expecting this to totally not work at first. Um, and there's going to be uh, a reason. So nearby entity range. So let's go and grab this one. So at least we can define our properties now. Nearby entity range value. And let's define a, uh, a pretty wide range. Let's just go like a 10, 10 across, uh, uh, three up and down and ten back to back. There you go. So X, Y, Z is ten, three, ten. Uh, we could just put one number in here if you wanted to. Well. Remember, we wrote this so it can do either one number or three, um, and that's gonna be fine. So the other thing I want to check is if we look at uh, the game folder. Let me just make sure I've called it Entity Animal Chicken, um, and we can go from there. Let's use the correct. Uh, best use the correct word. You just got to see his program in hot tub streams. <laughs> <laughs> programming hot tub streams i'll probably be like holding a laptop just like just barely above the water line <laughs> i'll be like uh, cue, cue me up for a darwin award right there <laughs> hey i'm programming Pss, ah! <laughs> oh man that'd be something wouldn't it fried fox anyone um okay so we're going to entity classes going to go into entity classes let's see what we got in here so under entity classes we have got ourselves um let's just check entity animal chicken uh, uh, okay, it's not, uh, is it just animal chicken? Uh, yes, it's just called animal chicken. Okay, so we got to make sure the name is correct. So good thing I checked that, because otherwise um, we wouldn't have been able to pick this up. So animal chicken, right there. Okay, so we save that. Let's go rebuild our game and let's try uh, let's try this out. So we should be able to see this ready to go. <laughs> Beer has to get the, the, the hot the uh, the bathtub emote right there. I love that. <laughs> yeah, me, me and the uh, me and the. Sorry about that. Was... I was uh, watching a. Um, there's a guy uh, here in the U.S. that does hurricane that chases hurricanes. And, yeah, yeah, like uh, uh, like uh, he's, a, he's a meteorologist. Um. I've got a friend that lives in Massachusetts, and Henri is going to hit Massachusetts. Oh, wow. So I was making him, make my friend of mine aware, you need to prep today. Yeah. Make sure you have plenty of food. Make sure you have non-perishable. Make sure you have your sandbags. Prep today. Yeah, do it now, yeah. He said that they, the, the, the tropical storm could turn into a hurricane before it hit, hits land. Yeah. And they don't get hurricanes up in the northeast, north, northern uh, U.S. 
No, that's more like around like Florida area, isn't it? That that mainly happens. Yeah, Florida, yeah. Texas, uh, yeah, in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. You don't see a hurricane going up and hitting Massachusetts very often. No, that's crazy. I'm just trying to trying to look out for him. Just make just sent him a message on on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> Vera says, "Well, laptop equals in the water." Max dot get fried. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here we go. Uh, loading and passing blocks at XML. Um, okay, hang on a second. We do have an error now. So let's go and check what our output level is here. Alright. Close down you, stupid game. Nobody, nobody cares. Nobody needs you. Nobody wants you. Go, 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 um, Logan, you still need to be, you still need to be uh, aware. You still need to be safe. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, let me see. Always good to be prepared, just in case, because you never know. Because it could turn any, it could turn any minute, couldn't it? You know what I mean? So let me exactly. See. Let me see what's going on here. So in here, I might have forgotten You're to verify. You're always going to predict one thing, and it could do another. Yep. Right. Let me have a look here in my. Output log, that's what I need to check. So in output log, it will tell me where we've no wrapped here. So if we go to player log and come over here. Right, so let's see. Uh block with name Terra Snow not found. Hang on a sec, it's probably do something else. Item name apparel bandana not found. Uh let's see. Right, move up here, it'll probably tell me a bit further up. Um, okay, so the first error we got, what was that? Um, block with name, entity, destination test. Uh, doesn't have... Ah, yeah, we need to define a loot container ID for this one. Uh, yeah, I understand that, Logan. But um, the person that I'm talking to, that, that, that I was watching, keeping an eye on that, he's been doing it for two decades. He knows what he's talking about. He chases hurricanes. Right, here we go. So we need to do, we need to define a loot list. So property. Stream was uh, buffering a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Um, I have no idea why. It keeps kind of going down and going back up. And... It's, it's, it's fine now. Yeah, it, it, keep, it keeps doing it. It's really weird. So 301. There we go. Right, yeah, that, that's what we need to do. Define a loot list. I forgot about that. Because it extends the loot container, um, we need to define a loot list for it. Um, and that would be why, wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that, that would sort it out. All right, let's try it again. I, 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 I swear um, I was myself, New guys. New for, like, two and a half years, Logan, so... Yeah. <laughs> when he... When the, when the guy said it's going to hit near New Bedford. I'm like, oh man, I need to send my friend a message. <laughs> in the water out of the window. He's in New Bedford. And it says, well, off for the day. Have a great day. Alrighty then, Ernest. Thank you very much for coming along. Hopefully we'll see you very soon. So goodbye for now. And I'll catch you later. Alright, let's build the game then. See if this works. Hopefully it does. Let's see. So Coming to here. And here we go, so, loading the game, and hopefully, we should be all good. Alright. There we go, so then we can go into here, let's see if we load now, because yeah, it probably was just that loot this issue. Let's see if this, uh, let's see if this works now. Now we could also get another string of red text as well. It's just like something to do with other things. So yeah, this is where this is uh, where the debugging part comes in now. So we've written like what we think will work, and now we gotta debug it and see where it breaks because it's most likely gonna break. I'm it, just gonna. Is that. there a way that you can actually um, put like a de debug string uh, so it'll debug uh, any issues? Um, I wish there was, but there's uh, unfortunately you have to load the game each and every time. Because um, a lot of things that could go null, you wouldn't really realize in code until it actually happens. So you kind of have to. It kind of comes with experience. Like most of it is like null checks um, and like where it will throw you a null value and like that, and then it will kind of make it crash. But a lot of that comes from experience as to where to try it and stuff like that and where it's going to be written. 
but for actual debugging, I write it to the game console. Um, yeah, and it just comes up in red or yellow text that I can that I can view. Um, because I know that I know the other day you wrote a debug string at the at the very top. Yeah. Oh. Mhm. Mm yeah, you can write that's it anywhere. Was, in, you can write it anywhere. That's in the why I was. That's why I was uh, mentioning. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So here's our block. So entity detection test. Here we go. Right, let's see what happens here. So if we put this down, do we get red text? Right, we don't get red text. Uh, there we go. Not enough entities nearby. Requires one entity. Uh, required entity. Chicken. Okay, so it does. It does say that we need a chicken. So that's uh, that's a good start. So the, the next thing I gotta do is spawn in a chicken. And let's see if it sort of works. So if I spawn in a the chicken there, uh, does it does it detect it? Um, it looks like it does not detect the chicken right now. Let me see. Because he is there. Maybe, maybe I need to enable ticking um, as well. So, ticking active. Uh, show stability. Play mode, god mode, invisible. So, okay. So, it does detect that there are no entities nearby. Uh, do I need... Okay, maybe I need to spawn two in the area. Let me, let me see if this works. Uh, does two make it work? So, it requires one. Shows me how many I need. Okay, so it, do, it does detect that there are no entities nearby and it will show me that info, but then it doesn't uh, show me that we do need some around. Okay, so that's something to do. I might want to test this in like an actual world as well, because it, um, it might not register the entities. Let me, let me do L, L, E, see if that does anything. Oh no, it, it is there. Uh, type entity animal rabbit name animal chicken. So, okay. So what we probably need to do then is do some logging here to see why. Because um, this should this should now pick up that there's a chicken next to it. Um, it could also be... Could at least do with chunk data as well. Um, so I need to I need to kind of view what coordinates it's uh, it's picking up on as well. So that's the other thing we need to do. We probably need to output the list of, the list of coordinates and, it's, and the bounds and see what's going on. Um, but yeah, it's done. So far, it's detected that when there's none there, it will give out the message that we need. So that part is fine. That part's good. Um, open says me, says Bella. Indeed. Oh yes, you didn't say the magic word. <laughs> Joel's, Joel's face pops up. <laughs> uh, have a good one, Ernest. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. I need to make sure that I'm passing the correct values into the function then. Um, okay, so what we can do is if we go back into Visual Studio. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to check. Um, we're going to check here. So what we should do is the way, the best way I can think to check this is if we go into Coordinate Helper, um, and then we can go ahead and see. We can go ahead and log some messages out here, right? So we could say. Um, if we go here, we can say, we can go log dot out central position, and then that's going to be uh, center dot two string. So let's go and log all this info out so we can see what's going on now. So then we're going to go log dot out, and then uh, we're going to say bounds uh, x bounds. And then we're just going to do plus, um, or actually, this this kind of concerns more of the chunk, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's fine. We can do that. So the x bounds is going to be bounds dot min dot x uh, dot two string plus, and then two, and then bounds dot x dot max or bounds dot max dot x to string there we go so let's go and just sort this out here so that's actually a method so yeah, let's go and print out the minimum and maximum bounds um that we have for each of these because then i can check that we're actually looking in the correct area right so um uh vr says a uh, box of chicken <laughs> yeah maybe a box of chicken um okay so we got this one um okay so let's do the same for the y and the z bounds let's 
go do that. So that's x, y, and let's do the z bounds here. So, oh, hang on a minute, I didn't want to go out that far. So yeah, we'll log out all this stuff here so we can see exactly what it's doing, because um, that's going to be the best thing we can do. So let's go ahead and change these all to y's, and these all to z's, and then that's going to be, again, change that to z, change that to z, and change that to y. Because this will pretty much give us our min and max coordinates here. There we go. Alright, so bounds, mix x, y, z, all good. So, then what we can do is we can say, um, we can say, if chunk isn't, if, if chunk isn't null, then we'll go log dot out, uh, got a chunk. There we go. Um, then we're going to say, in here, we're going to say, for each entity, entity, and entity, entity, and chunk, we're going to say, log dot out, uh, got an entity, with the, the name, and then we can check what its name is entity dot name. Uh, get the name, get source, group name, small by name, so we can do that one. Um, and then we can check if it's, uh, then we can check if it works. So if entity bounding box intersects the bounds, an entity block in, in here, and then this one is that one, that's all good. There might be an easy way I can do this actually, and that's to get the entities within the blocks. Um, that actually might be an easy way. Now I think about it, we can save all this bloody fast floor business um, and start and do it a different way. But I'll do I'll do this for now. We'll see what we got. Uh, there was this hashtag chickens in the box. Um, okay, so we got this. We've got entity the name entities. Okay, so we're gonna say. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do. We're gonna say uh, let's do a, let's do four separate if statements so we can check each each case individually and then we can see where it's going wrong. So we can go entity dot bounding box intersects bounds um, and what we can see what we can do is we can negate each of these. Then we can just say uh, log dot out uh, entity is out bounds and then we can just do if entity uh, dot get block pause get block position dot y um, is greater than this okay we can say eventually block position dot y is less than uh y min uh so bounds bounds y min um we can just say uh log dot out oh hang on we gotta do we gotta we gotta do it like this so if that's below the minimum value we can just go log out and we can just say entity position is too low and then about, and then just go uh, entity dot get plot position dot y. Here we go. Actually, no, we don't need to log that here. Um, we can just do entity is too low. We can do it like this. We can kind of like log out all the info here. If key press equals space chicken dot y plus twenty five. <laughs> yeah, it's like shoot the chicken upwards. <laughs> um, so we say got a chunk, got an entity with the name entity dot name. Uh, and then here we can go log dot out uh, entity position in world and then plus uh, entity dot get block position there we go dot to string there you go then we can uh, log out the coordinates of where the entity is in the world which will be a little bit easier and then we can copy this one here get block position dot y is greater than the maximum uh, entity position is too high. There you go. So if it's either too low or too high, and then the last thing we want to check is uh, names dot contains entity dot name. Uh, yes, yeah, contains. Um, A B R S. 
Say the B word. Surf names dot contains uh, entity the B word. I wonder what that could be. The one that Mel's always laughs at. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling it was that. Log dot out, and then we can say uh, entity name is not in the list of names. And the other thing we can do is we can pass in um, central position. Okay, so we can do central position here, and we can say log dot out. Uh, uh, looking for the following entities, and then uh, we can do names dot uh, or string helpers write list to string names. There we go. So we can kind of log all this stuff here, and then we can see exactly in this method what is going on here. So we can check each of those conditions in turn, um, and if it does work, uh, log dot out added entities to list. There we go. List and entities. Entities are add entity, and then on here, uh, return get entities and bounds is greater than how many are needed. Um, okay, so here we're going to say uh, log dot out we need plus needed to string dot entities. Uh, wait a minute. So we need this. So we need this many entities, and then let me just copy this thing out here. So copy that uh, log dot out we have plus this many dot two string so it is making this run twice so it will be uh it will run slower but that's okay that's fine for now we just want to make sure go from there um and then in thailand t transformer we want to just double check in has so store any items, security items. There's a method in here. Is this an abuse accessing? Has nearby entities. Is this enough blocks in range? Um, okay, so yeah, that's fine. We just want to make sure that that's the same. Turn this equals. I don't need that bracket there either. So we can remove that one. We can remove that one. Not really, a, not really a thing to worry about, but just something we can just go and do. Um, so that's fine. So we got that one. So you got the world, two world position, time entity position, this near by entity range, this near by entity names, and the near by entities needed. Okay, so that's all that passed into the function there. Um, right, let's go and do this. Now we should get some logging about what is going on around the block. So let's have a look and see what we can do here. Log out, log in, log out, log in, log out. Another, and VRS says, Banda, she, Banda, she. <laughs> and the cigarette with bacon to make smoked bacon. <laughs> Mel's, I'm coming to sell your bacon. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wonder how you get around the world to steal to steal Mel's bacon, to then steal Daniel's coffee, or then to steal my coffee, and then get back without with within the, like the space of a second. It's like, how does he do that? He's magical. All right, let's go ahead and load the game up then, and let's see if this works. Hopefully, it will. So if it does, then hooray! If it doesn't, now, then boo. I could always send my friend uh, Ray to go steal her coffee because he's in Australia. Yeah, uh, we just need to invent. We, we just need to like invent proper working teleportation already. It's like I would like a coffee, and then it's like uh, you just like send an order to a coffee Your, place. Uh, yeah, coffee still running. Yeah, it's fine. It's meant to be running now. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's meant to be good. Alright. Let's log in here again and see what we've got here. Yeah, Mel's, uh, Mel's this wasn't me. Uh, CS is dot chicken script, right? <laughs> exactly! I always make a mistake and I'm always gonna back up, back up, back up! 
god, with, with the amount of with the amount of splurge in my code, it's more like chicken scratch. <laughs> and when it's poorly written code, it's chicken shit. <laughs> All right, load up the game. Like I said, I totally didn't expect this to work yet, so. The fact that it didn't work, well, you know, that's kind of, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, if it doesn't work, it's, it's all good. I wonder if there's a way I can make it more efficient and get the lookup chunks in the class as well, maybe. Oh no. What did you do? Ja Woodle died. Oh. In his Anytime Anywhere uh, playthrough. Oh, was he playing Dead is Dead? Yep. Oh, well. He always plays permadeath. Well, that sucks. City On bugger. Darkness Falls. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you can see we got, uh, it's, it's, found, it's found me in range. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's found, it found me, which is good. So, let's go and make my way, like, really far out. Uh, so let's make sure I'm like over 10 blocks away. Well, we should see now. Yeah, so when I see that it, it does detect that I'm in the area. See that I go in the area. It's found me. Um, and it's found, it's, it's looking for the chicken. Okay, so it does, it does detect, um, it does detect me when I'm in the area. Let you can see it in the log, let you'll see in a minute when I go in. See that it actually detects that I'm there. That's actually pretty really cool. So I've, I made like some kind of player detector, uh, which is nice. Uh, that's my position in the world. Um, Center position is three, two, one, eight, five, two, which kind of just makes sense because I'm this many blocks away. So I moved like really close. I just want to check here. So player three, two, two, three, two, one. Okay, so it's not the name of the listed range, um, and apparently also being too low is a problem as well. So if I come up here, does it sound too low if I'm here as well? Um, Position the world too low. Still saying I'm too low for some reason. Um, you know why though? That might be because um, we're low. We're near bedrock. That might be why. Because te technically, in the free verse, um, the layer down there is is technically the bedrock layer. So let me remove that real quick. Let me put one up here, just on the roof. There we go. Actually, let's put, let's put it in here, right? So put that down there. Right, so does it still say I'm too low if I'm here? It does, yeah. Okay, so big man just saving zero. Let me just double check what's going on here. So it, it does detect that I'm there, which is cool. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's it's still saying I'm too low. So that's one of the problems. It's saying um, it's saying that I am too low in the world, which is not technically not true because I've said to search within a three by three range. Um, so yeah, it says, look, it says Y bounds 10 to 16, and entry position in the world is here. So 13. Hang on a second. Yeah, so it's saying entry position in the world. That This is where I am right here. So my Y coordinate is 13. But the Y bounds say 10 to 16, which is, which is fine. So I should technically not be too low. That's that's weird. So that that's an issue. Um, for some reason, it's saying I'm too late, even though my coordinate of 13 is directly between 10 and 16, which is perfect. Um, okay, so that's something. Let's check if it detects a chicken now. Though. That's that's the one thing I wanted to say. Let's see. Let's let's see if there is a chicken that it picks up on. Uh, if there is, then great. So let's go ahead and spawn a chicken right there. And let's go ahead and I'll tell you what, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move really far out of this area, right? We're going to move like super far away and then we're going to see what happens here. So we should find now, um, entry position is too low, entity with the name player, got an entity with the name game object, uh, player 171, ah, okay, that's an that's interesting. And position is too low. Okay, so it's 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 registering chicken as for some reason game object. That's, that's kind of strange. Um, and I guess it doesn't work when you move too far away either. I guess the chicken would be. Oh no, he's still there. Okay, hang on. Let me move out again. 
Uh, let me see here. So, okay, so it's saying his name is apparently Game Object, which is kind of strange because um, it's okay. So there must be a there must be a way to get it the, its XML name then. So I think we are. I think what's going wrong in here then is it's not getting the names as they appear from the XML side. So that's something we need to look for. Um, is how we get the actual entity name because yeah um, still got to yeah obviously it's not on the list so that's fine but we still got to solve this issue of it being too low because look it's it's showing it that it's at position 13 as well see and our and our block here is the central position right there is 19 and it's going 9 to 29 so there's our 10 look there's 33 23 to 43 there's our 10 so it is there and it is showing that it's there which is really strange so all right, so and it's and it's saying it's in the bounding box because that error is not coming up. Okay, so let's have a look then. So let's get rid of those changes real quick. So perhaps we should sing the stump song because there's no but yes, solution is required and the stump song might work. Stump, 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 stump. Why can we not get this chicken to run? I guess I gotta find a program a stump because it's either stump we're going to not find a chick. Oh no. Um. Okay. Yeah. Fady Fade doing a doing a belchy in the background. I heard that one. That was, that was good. Do it again, Fady. You got this. Yes. Yes, you can. You can do it on command. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You kind of just got to like suck in some air, and it's all good. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Fox sport. Uh. Fox sporting a chicken. Hell yeah. <laughs> fox sporting a chicken. Fox eats the chicken. Okay. So we need to look at actually how to get the entity name. So this is where we're gonna need to do some DN spying and what the frig is going on with that. So it's returning the uh, name as dot game object, which is strange. So why is it doing that then? So let's look at um. Let's look at entities from XML, um, uh, because that will tell us. Um, how it's done and how it's imported, I believe. Um, so enumerable, dynamic GL. Wait, this isn't the wrong. This isn't the right area. So hang on. Uh, close down Unity stuff. Open this. Here we go. Wait, that's Unity engine. Close that down. We need to open up uh, assembly C sharp .dll, wherever that is. Uh, assembly C sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to I tried to backwards program stream on OBS. <laughs> just to see if I could get just to see if I could get free free streaming. Um no idea what chicken entity number is. Uh small entity twenty three. Yeah, I could I could be I could do it based on its ID actually. That might be a that might be a thing. But let's go and check this here. So under here we need to look for entity uh C D entities for XML I believe it is. Um and then we can see Enum uh, enum entity spawner bit higher entity here we go so entity 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 spawner okay entity so here we go entity right here okay so let's have a look at this class here and see if we can find um uh, velocity uh, animate your okay so maybe there's a so there's there's the get bounding box. Let's see if there's any other get um get comfort icon, get debug name. Um uh, okay, get distance to another entity. Uh get eye height, get height, head, hip position, get map, get model. So maybe get debug name would be what we need to do. Uh has all tags, has any tags. Uh, is airborne? Is alive? Okay, let's see if we can find. So that's getting its name. So depth entity class entity tags height. Maybe it's under entity class here. Um, because the dot name one as entity ID. Uh, entity ID invalid entity type. Uh, let me see. Because the, the one I've been calling is just name, right? So dot name. Ah, I tell you why. Because dot name is uh is a game object specific thing, isn't it? So that would be why. So that doesn't have a that be why. So NCID entity type as an enum. So we have to have a look and see what's going on here. Uh let's see. 
says, uh, what, what great mod? Uh, and Vera says, Goofy Goober. Um, hang on, what's going on? What's going on? Gray mod? Gray's mod? Uh, who's Gray? <laughs> Gary's mod? I totally missed that. Hang on, let me go up in the YouTube chat and see what's actually going on up here. So, sun's, sun's gone crazy. Fucking Goofy Goober. Uh, Fox Money Chicken. No idea what that is. Uh, no idea what chicken entity number is. Uh, Gray's Prophecy is what he's probably oh, talking Grace about. Prophecy, yeah. RS. Yeah, Grace Prophecy. Very, very vanilla feeling mod with a couple of extra things. I quite like it actually. It's quite fun. It's one, it's one of those ones where you can like knock knock zombies like really far away, and that's really funny. Um, okay, so I guess then we look at entity. I guess we look at entity class. Um, so if we look at entity class here. Um, so public class entity class. Let's have a look at that and see if that has anything. So there we got to do entity dot entity class. Um, I'm not again. I... Entity class in it. Ah, there you it is. You can do this. Bandashi. Bandashi. So entity. Okay, that's it. Entity dot entity class dot entity class name. That's it. So yeah, because entity ex extends game objects in the course, it will have uh, entity dot name. So that's where that's where we're going wrong. So what we're gonna do is I th at least I think. So what we need to do is we need to go entity. Um, so it's not entity dot name. It's entity dot entity class dot uh, entity class name there we go so i think that's what it is um so let's go ahead and grab this one um and we got entity with the name let's go ahead and put this here for our debug purposes so we can see what they what it is um and then we've got to make sure hey mouser if you want to jump in with max i'm gonna go lay down no worries dude well thanks very much for hanging out I hope you had a good time. Not a problem. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, let me see. So entity dot get block position. So that's the weird one because it's saying entity bounds y min. Have I set this up correctly? Uh, dot floor world dot clone blocks. Bounds Y min. Let me see. Because that was getting up from there. I, I thought it was R uh, R. Uh, <laughs> Gray Fox <laughs> is, is 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 Gary. Sorry. Yeah, because the, the, I've had the game Gary's mod. That's that is a game. Um, I think this is too low. Um, so entities out of bounds. So this one. Is bounds y min right, and I've set. I don't think I've changed that variable anywhere, have I? Because bounds, yeah, bounds y min, and we literally put it here. Bounds min y to bounds dot max dot y. Maybe. Hang on a minute. Maybe because maybe fast floor is doing something with this. Um. Okay, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna do maybe world dot c collision blocks is subtracting more. Yeah, may maybe this is pushing up. Yeah, because it's, it's adding here. Look, so we gotta we gotta subtract that. There you go. That might do it. That might do it right there. Okay, yeah, I had a plus and not a minus. That's probably why. Um, okay. Let's see if that's doing it now. Because I was going to say, because yeah, we, we actually use a different variable now I think about it to do that. So let's go and save everything down. We'll close close this. Let that right up. Okay, let's see if this works now. All right, so why don't we give this a try? And if this works, that's going to be friggin' awesome. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, who's ringing us now, eh? Someone's popular.
All right, here we go. And um, as says, uh, let me make coffee. Uh, let me make coffee for Sipon. No worries, Melba. All right, here we go. Was it the same person again? Was it the same person that called twice? Oh, hey, hello, dear. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong number. Oh, so I'm so sorry. Never mind. Then ring, ring. Hello, hello, dear. <laughs> All right. So load the game. Let's see if this works. I think we're almost there, guys. I think we are almost there. And VR says, seriously, there there is a grey fox emoji. There's not a grey one. There's a pink one and a gold, and like an old, uh, gold and orange one. I've already had. I've already had a fennec fox emoji as well. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Great box of Mookie. <laughs> uh, my lust for Rocky Bars has been awakened again. Okay. Let me see here. Right, so. Going into here. Let's see. Name is not on the list. Ah, there we go. So now I think I fixed that now. So let's spawn a chicken right here and see if this works, shall we? So get the chicken. Uh, let me see if this works now. So name is play. Ah, there it is. Player mail. Got it. So that is the uh, the name of that we have. Hell says AFK. How you doing, Hell? Welcome back. <laughs> says uh, I'm back. I I, I passed out. I uh, hope uh, hopping the shower. Ah, I see. I see. No worries, dude. He's probably just like, God, Max's code is so boring! I'm just gonna pass out! Oh god, I can't do this no more. Alright, so let's go and put a chicken here. Let's see, that's spawning. Oh, hello. There it is. Oh my god, look, there we go! It works! It's It's gone from that to ready. So now, this block will do a transformation, right? Um, so what you should find now is if we go ahead and get a... This is just for testing purposes. But now if we go ahead and get a rock, for example... Uh, and we put uh, put a rock in here. It should start start taking into wood. Should do. Uh, there we go. Ha ha! Now, if we remove the chicken from the game, uh, oh wait, we can't we can't kill all that way. Okay, I'm so, I'm sorry, Mr. Chicken, but uh, it is it is your time. You must be slain. Okay. Now the that's the other thing. It's um currently it works when the when the when the chicken's dead. Take it away though, and there we go. Now it no longer, now it no longer does it. So we should see now it stopped working, right? So yeah, as long as there's a chicken nearby, this this will work. So the only other thing we need to do is check if the entity is alive, because otherwise, what you could do is you could have like a if you have a, like a, de a dead chicken right there, it will still work, right? So look, if I if I spawn a chicken right here for now, you'll see that uh, this guy. He's alive, and in a minute, this should, I would think, update. There we go, it updates now. Um, but if I kill him, if I leave him there, look, it's still working. And the main reason is, is because that's still detecting, um, even though the chicken's dead, it's still the correct name. So we need to also have a check for whether it's dead or not. Um, and if it is dead, obviously don't add it. And we have someone joining. Who do we have joining now? Is this Melza? Is this Melza? Hello. Hi, Melza. All right. Hi, Melza. All right. So. Generous. <laughs> Generous. <laughs> All right. So that so that actually works now. So what we can do now is we can now detect what type of entities are around a block, whether they're the ones we're looking for, and then if they are the ones we're looking for. Um, well, currently we need to make sure that they're not dead. But <laughs> look at look at this poor guy. <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> He's like ah. Oh! <laughs> He's like, I have been stabbed. Ah! 
Uh, <laughs> look, look at him. Look at, hang on, I've got to go down a bit. Four places <laughs> go, open. Go, go, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and says, uh, now, now what are you going to feed them? Well, the cool thing about transformer blocks, right, is what you can do is you can set the food item to be the input, right? So when the chicken's there, the food that's in here will count down, and then you can have, like, eggs and feathers as an output. But you can also... The cool thing with transformer blocks is you can set a probability for that output to happen as well. So you can say, oh, if there's um, if there's this many... Uh, you, you can then say, if there's this many chickens, um, there's a probability of this much to have an egg hatch in there. If there's this many, there's a probability of, of this. You know what I mean? So you can, you can do it that way. Um... And then the other cool thing is we can make a hatchery kind of thing, which will then, which will then, you can put an egg inside, um, and then as long as there's an egg and a chicken nearby in the hatchery, that egg can then get transformed into like a chick, which you can then spawn in the world, or you know use for more meat and feathers. You know what I mean? So there's a, there's a couple of cool things we can do here as well. <laughs> fun fun pimp logic. <laughs> when, when you when you cut him, he looks run over by a car. I know, right? <laughs> Oh, this, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Max is dying. Oh, look at this guy. Just, <laughs> just like, ah! <laughs> and, the uh, block, and the block is still chicken. Uh, Logan chicken. says, no, the chicken. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, oh, look, KFC. <laughs> oh, the poor chicken. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Okay. See, I, I love that. He's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, once you remove the chicken, we should see after a while that block then says there's not enough entities nearby. So yeah, this, um, now, like I said, this doesn't detect it in real time. It waits a few seconds before doing updates. And that's the thing. Say if someone makes like 200 chicken coops, that will lag the game to shit, right? So by doing this, by doing it this way, I can make sure that people can make a large amount of these things and have it working uh, the way they intended. Now, the only issue is with this is um, the the only issues with that I, that I see so far is um, if you were to make like a few chicken coops and like put them all around one chicken, it would go ahead and actually allow all four of those things to work because all four would be looking for a chicken. So that's kind of the uh, that's kind of one thing you could break. You could break the game. So the the other thing I could do is uh, to to prevent that from happening is to tie the to tie the entity to the first what it sees. So essentially, like when it get when it gets near a range of them, it can then go ahead and uh, it can go ahead and then tie it to the first one it sees, and then only that block that that the, it'll be invisible to all the other blocks of that same type. So there is there is a way that we can do that to make sure that you know it only have only does it once. The other thing we could do is to make the, obviously the chicken coop recipe a multi-block kind of structure and make it quite difficult to create, so that that way players will have to you know work to get a lot of them. And that's kind of what I wanted to do is to make like a kind of like a multi-block kind of chicken pen kind of thing would be pretty pretty, pretty cool. Avatar pick right there. <laughs> God, bloody uh, mad, mad chicken gaming! <laughs> Just like ah, <laughs> mad chicken gaming. <laughs> That's a mad name. <laughs> well, it's got it's got mad in the name, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> All right, so say you are James James here. Probably call myself Halo Gaming. Halo Gaming. Yeah. No, you you also be Rusty Coat Hanger Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Start pointy horns gaming. <laughs> okay. Uh, now it says, how does one screenshot? Pre uh, the print screen button. Um, if you're on the laptop, it might be a very small print. button. Oh yeah, I've got one next to F12. Yep, yep. Um, oh, we're gonna, we gonna try and screenshot oh, the shit. screenshot the chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's gone now. No, that's fine. I'll I'll, 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 sp I'll spawn it in the world again in a bit, and just ch and um, I'll let you I'll, I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshot there. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Just like, ah. <laughs> Send it to Fancy. <laughs> oh, Fancy would have a fit. He'd be like, what? No! <laughs> My chicken! <laughs> He'd tell me off. <laughs> All right. Now the other thing I do want to do is make this work for multi blocks as well. But I'll do that. I'll do that off camera because it's more of just like exactly the same of what you guys have seen. 
so i don't want to like just be like oh so we've done it for this now i have to pretty much repeat myself for this as well i'll kind of do that off camera in my own time but i do want to make the chicken cute like a multi-block kind of thing that you can that you can build because then it can have a um i uh, use use the snippet tool says Lo- logan <laughs> um i think true. it takes like a 15 second screenshot on trying to do that the other day oh something try, you were try, doing when you had the it, ice yeah. pick you, while you're playing skyrim yeah yeah but it's you can't chat while it's doing it and i'm just like fuck a screenshot would be great yeah trying the youtube clip yeah that's what that's that's one of those weird yeah, things I tried that kind that. Of, uh, it's not that it's not that good uh it's not like twitch clips where you can just like clip this and it just like goes oh i well, think we I can think ban unforgiven on your computer huh I'll just touch the screen. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen that says "Kick Unforgiven, Ban Unforgiven." I said, "Oh, look, we can ban Unforgiven." I go to touch the screen. Ah, eh, doesn't work. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever forgive us if we did that. <laughs> I was kidding, Unforgiven. That's it. He's like, uh, "You can't ban me." Um, there you go. Uh, and Ferris is I spent as bigger than yours. <laughs> no, I've had it longer than yours. <laughs> <laughs> My spanner brings all the peeps to the yard. That's right. It's bigger than yours. That's right. It's better, better than, than yours. yours. <laughs> I'll teach you, but I'll have to charge. <laughs> My spanner brings all the mods to the yard. That's right. <laughs> uh, hi, Fanny. Oh, God. <sighs> she's, <laughs> she's just like, uh, she just came out with the, uh, she, she just came out with the, uh, with a whole pack Powerful of rocky bars. food. No, it's, it's food. And she came up with it. It's, it's the the rocky bars. That I, that I'm in, that I'm fucking addicted to them. They're these they're, they're these little chocolate bars. Key bars. Yeah, and they're they're so freaking good. I love them. And like literally, I can I I, I say to Faye, don't buy me them because I will literally eat an entire pack of seven or eight in one go. Like I can't stop. And then, <laughs> and then Faye that she just came out with like with one rocky bar. She's daggering it in front of me. I was I was just like, <laughs> just like oh lust like, like lust noises. Like no. <laughs> <laughs> but then she took the one bag and then she gave okay. me the whole pack. I'm just like, damn it! Oh, <laughs> <gasps> yum! Mhm. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's in them? What do you got? Like caramel, chocolate? That's. It's made oh. of chocolate, but it's got like biscuit in the middle as well. Chocolate biscuit. Okay. Yeah, it's re- it's really good. Rice bubble biscuits or biscuit biscuits like you'd put in a hedgehog slice. Imagine like, do you guys have uh, one hedgehog slices? Do you guys have McVitie's digestives? Do you get those out there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Imagine like that, but like encased in a thick layer of chocolate. <gasps> oh dear. <laughs> it's a, it's it's uh, and imagine the chocolate is just like amazing chocolate. It's 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 bloody good. Oh, well done, BRS. <laughs> the uh, is, uh, screenshot of the chicken there. Oh, we got it? <laughs> <laughs> Outside my building, how dare you? <laughs> the chicken is not dead in my car park. You can, it's nothing to see here. Hmm. Breaking news. Chicken, chickens get slayed outside Mel's building. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Reports of scientists coming along with bandages to fit to patch up the dead chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Got ya. <laughs> Helicopter loads full. <laughs> I can't even say it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh God, we're, all, we're all bloody dying now, aren't we? <laughs> all right. So oh, terrible. What we need to do then is also check if the entity is alive as well. So we want to say... Black chicken's not alive. Well, we need to we need to do a check oh, to see if it is. <laughs> and I was like, that, 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 that's not a lie. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> behave, Mel. <laughs> Good grief. Oh, behave. It's like, are you horny? <laughs> oh, behave. Mm, yum. <laughs> so it's like, like Austin Powers. Do I make you horny? <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think I think if someone went actually went and said that to someone, they, that that'd be like the biggest turn off ever, wouldn't it? You'd be like, uh, uh, no, yeah, I'm not horny anymore. <laughs> like, bye. <laughs> See you in the morning, honey. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? uh, 
<laughs> Alright, so we got this. So we can add a um we can add a check here. So we can just go and uh entity uh, and then we might be able to see if there's um we can say if it is dead or whatever. There's probably a, a method here we can have a look at. Um so <laughs> yeah, you can say if it's swimming, if it's like a wanted sign. Well, you can even see if it's stuck, if an entity is stuck. Look at that. Um, it's saved. Um, so one if it is dead. Uh, let's see. Is in lava? They were going to have lava in this game? Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Is invoking, is ignored by AI. Which we can make volcanoes. Yeah. It's cool. insinuating that there's volcanoes. It's dead. Um, okay, I want to see if that one... Um, so and we want and if the entity is not dead, there we go. So the the entity is alive. Well, there might be a way that if it's uh, called is alive, but you know if it's saying if it's alive or if it's not dead, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? So so yeah, essentially now, um, if um, the entity uh, uh, well, is well, zombies are walking around undead. They're pretty freaking clever sometimes. <laughs> I think it, I think out. it means if the animator gets removed on it or something. Um, there you go, and uh, Andrew Gunn says, Max, you're in trouble now. I told Fancy on you. <laughs> <gasps> uh, oh, no. Oh, Fancy's so coming over here going, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, excuse me? Are you killing my chickens? No, 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 definitely not. No, mm. no, definitely not. Ha, 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 definitely Same not. Elsa, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Say, what are you doing? Nothing. Say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I didn't, didn't do, do it. it. No, I didn't do it. I did nothing. Um, just okay. asked her to do it. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, I just asked. I didn't, I didn't actually do it. Like, what, are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all, right. all right. So the next thing we can do is I want it to be... Um, I want to have a way now that you can essentially well i've already coded in a way you can pick up a chicken um that's that's one uh that's one thing that we've already done so you can pick it up can you take it home you can pick it up you can take it home and you can throw it on the barbie <laughs> oh i was gonna say awesome <laughs> i can collect chickens <laughs> yeah, and that's... you're like no on the barbecue and I'm, oh. no you'll, you'll be able to you'll be able to collect them and then put then put them down elsewhere in the world as well i've already uh i already made that function a Ooh. long time ago so essentially what i need to do now is make this like multi-blockable and stuff like that there you go <laughs> there you go and uh what the hell this is the arc this is the uh, given nope but <laughs> there is like bone uh, bone an entity entity dot horny <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Austin Powers zombie comes like, do I make you horny? <laughs> You'd be like, what the fuck? Man? <laughs> what the fuck? Man? <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make my code a little focus. bit better here. Focus, focus, everybody, focus. What? Nothing. Okay. Um, right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to. T change this to if it is null then continue um and then we can it makes the code a little bit longer this way but i can then take off one pyramid layer right here look so i can kind of get rid of uh i can get rid of this pyramid layer and kind of move it down like that see then there's let there's less pyramid of death going on here now because once you're in two four loops then it goes goes like way inside here <laughs> then you kind of it kind of gets really far to the right so yeah un, un pyramid of deathifying is uh is always good because yeah the pyramid of death is bad we don't we don't like the pyramid of death here it's all good um i forget this is hashtag watch the vod <laughs> oh god oh god is that uh which one is that i forget means watch the vid is that the uh, is that the Javoodle thing where he died in his in his game or is this something else? But oh, yeah, no. Javoodle always plays in, like insane nightmare and everything. Spoiler alert! <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've even said that earlier in the stream. He was like, "Oh, he just died." I was like, "Oh, okay." Uh. So hashtag believe I'm forgiven. It's his fault. <laughs> um, uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, chilling okay. on you. What? I'm gonna chill on you. <laughs> hi, hi. What? I'm telling on you. <laughs> telling okay. Woodle on you. Telling Woodle. <laughs> telling Woodle on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling Woodle on you. <laughs> I call him Woodle. <laughs> What's up, Eddie? 
<laughs> the thing is, what's that gobshack going to do about it? Like, <laughs> uh, but she didn't like Weedle, eh? Huh? <laughs> no. She doesn't like Weedle. No. I don't think Sadie is a Weedle fan. Actually, no. I, th- I, 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 think, no. Sa- I, th- I think Sadie loves Weedle. She doesn't want it. <laughs> in the background, just like, Bleh. <laughs> but he's like got a baseball bat in her back pocket. I'm gonna fucking hit you in a minute. <laughs> Don't you dare say that to me. <laughs> ne- 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 next minute, I'll be like, So, guys, we're gonna take those words back. <laughs> no, if, if, if it goes quiet, you know what happened. <laughs> Joel says, uh, <laughs> Joel's... Look at this funny noise. Yeah, it goes quiet. You just, uh, I'm just Hello? like, Okay, so we're, we're gonna be adding this thing, and it's gonna be a. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? And then you just say, like, flump. <laughs> this noise. Mm, mm, something's the, happened. The, Max. The, 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 like, five minutes later, you just, <laughs> you just say, like, blabbing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just, like, knock oh, down. There we go. I did not. I didn't make this. Damn it, Max. <laughs> yeah, I Joel's voice. yeah, Joel's like, <laughs> I didn't make this, damn it, Max. <laughs> I like, but Joel is really excited. I, I wonder if when Joel gets really bored, he talks in an excited tone, so that when he gets excited, he talks in a bored tone of his slightly like, total opposite. So he'd be like, Yeah, so we're doing this, it's really boring. <laughs> and we're doing this, and it's imagine so that. <laughs> Saying no, nodding yes. <laughs> do you want to do this? No. No problem here. <laughs> no, 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 he's nodding when he's saying no. <laughs> and he was just like, which is it? I was like, I swear this man's backwards, man. <laughs> yep. Okay. Anyway, we've been looking at code for ages, haven't we? So now we've got the chicken coop stuff uh, done for this. Um, We can go ahead and do... So, extend and template timid. So... Once we've got that done, we can pretty much do in blocks now. We can specify like how many are here. So I'll show you how you can make it um, take on a cert take do certain transformations. So for what you what you want to do is let's say they'll they'll get fed um, for vanilla purposes. Let's just say they get fed like cornmeal, right? Probably the closest thing you get to chicken feed in the game is cornmeal, right? So or, or just corn. But let's just do um, I think it's food corn uh, cornmeal like that so you say or take in one of these let's say just every so what you can do you can set the time for how many uh for how many things there are so you can just say like every i don't know every say 10 seconds like one core meal gets consumed or something um all right so let's make it more more like you know they might consume it like every five minutes like so every like 300 seconds a core meal gets consumed so you can what you can do then is you can then say um, as an output, uh, you get an egg, right? So every five minutes, if there's chickens around the chicken coop, one corn meal will get consumed, and then an egg will get produced, right? That kind of that kind of makes sense, right? So the other thing um, we can do is we can then go ahead and say uh, we can give this a probability. So let's say like it won't always happen, but it will happen some of the time. Do you know what I mean? So we can do we can do this as well. So what we can do is we can say, well, if that's the case, we can go ahead and say, well, let's say an egg gets produced ten percent of the time. Um, so every five minutes, one core meal gets consumed, and then you'll get an egg ten percent of the time. And that will go ahead and allow you to essentially just do that. Now the the current limitation with the system is it cannot. Um, increase the speed of recipes based on the uh, based on the amount of entities there are around the uh, around the thing. But we could actually program that in, couldn't we? We could make it so that if um, we can make it so that if there's more entities in there, we could get the transformation time and half it, you know, or we could divide it by that amount of that amount of entities. So, for example, say if it takes like if there's like one chicken. It will happen every five minutes. One corn meal gets consumed every five minutes, and then the thing gets produced. However, what if there's two chickens? Well, then they're going to be, you know, two corn meal get consumed every five minutes, and then you'd have um, you'd have like a higher chance at the egg as well. So, what we should probably do is make it so that if there are more entities around above the minimum threshold, we should go ahead and uh, we should go ahead and adjust the speed of the transformations pretty much so we should we should adjust the speed of like oh okay if there's more than this much so if say if you require two chickens and there's three chickens in there where it would be twice as fast but it would be you know three over two times fast which is you know 
50% faster, right? So it would go ahead and base the, the speed on the number of extra entities in the area. Um, and uh, it says, uh, BR says, I want to hear Joel's uh, Schwarzenegger impression. Yeah, he's just like, get to the chopper. <laughs> he's, 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 he's like, uh, uh, now. <laughs> get to the chopper, do it now. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what we should yeah, so that's that's the thing we should do. We should make another property, um, and we should call this um maybe something like um speed modif like speed modifier, and that could be based on the number of entities and how much faster extra entities make it above the base uh, above the base one, right? Because if so, because we can uh, we can check that we can check the number of entities that are currently there, um, and then we can go ahead and do that. Because that the C one fire will only be for really for entities um, around it. Because having extra blocks around it is probably not likely to make anything go faster. We could do it. We could do it for both. Um, but that would be that's currently the limitation of the system. It doesn't go any faster if you have more chickens around there. So say if you got like ten chickens, it won't go ten. It won't, they won't consume stuff ten times faster. You know what I mean? Um, and that's obviously a problem. Because you would think the more chickens you have around there, the more food they're going to need, but then the more chance of eggs you get, you know? So it's, we kind of have to account for the mm. fact that there's going to be more, there's going to be more chickens around the thing as well. So if we were to go ahead and do that, we could do, uh, we could do that in code. So let's have a see about how we can do this. So if we go into time to transformer, uh, let's go into back to the property class here. So what we can do is we can make a, another property here so here we go so back to back to kind of step one but most of the work is done now so we're just going to like add this this way i like making it modular because we can just add little things um that can improve it right so we can say prop uh protected string and we can go prop and we can say nearby entity uh uh speed modifier uh we could go uh nearby uh, entity the speed modifier so what this will do is yeah uh, by default it will be set to one so essentially what we can do what we can say is we can say a very a very simple value we could say for every end for every extra entity nearby multiply the speed by the speed modifier so say if we set our speed monitor modifier to two for every extra entity, we'll multiply it by two. So the the number you don't want to set this very high because you know then if you got like ten entities, it'll be multiplied by like two to the power of ten, which is an extremely mm. high number. So essentially, you want to set this between like um, you want to set this between like between one and maybe like one point oh five. It'd be you know very 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 small. Um, so we could either do it that way, or we could do it as an extra entity modifier. Um, which will just be a boolean value, so it w it won't be adjustable, but it will just be you can turn it on or off. So I'm not sure what's the best approach to go for here, honestly. Probably for probably for player safety is um is probably to do it as a true false statement, and then we can just turn it on and off, and then we decide how much faster it goes based on the entity count. Um, and I think that will be that will probably be a better way to do it. So. Uh, yeah, let's do let's do it that way. So instead of being a speed modifier, we'll go nearby entity. Um, uh, we'll call it speed up. And there we go. So we'll do this. So nearby entity speed up. Uh, speed upper, speed upper. <laughs> nearby entity speed upper. R. <laughs> Rip apart pie badgers. <laughs> All right, so you go and grab that one. Okay, so nearby entity speed up. Um, so yeah, if um, if they're above the threshold, uh, it will speed it up. I get to the chopper. <laughs> but MVR is like, get to the chopper. Ha, yang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <coughs> I am Arnold. Uh -oh. <laughs> Mel's is like, oh. <laughs> okay, so what we can do here then, our property here, we can just go public, and then we can just do bool. And then uh, nearby entity speed up, and that will be set to false. And then we can just assign it up in in our method here. Remember, so remember we already made our method for check required entities nearby. We could go ahead and say uh, string uh, speed up. Then we could say if uh, this dot prop exists, and then we could just do uh, prop nearby entity 
uh, speed up, and then out uh, speed up. So if it does exist, put it out to that that string there, and we can just say this dot nearby entity speed up equals string parsers dot try pass rule um, this try pass rule and that's going to take in speed up and then it's going to put out um, this as you know we got to do it this way we got to do another if statement here and we a nested if statement so we're going to say so we're going to say if we try and pass this as a boolean uh, and if it works we're going to out we're going to put this out to this uh, entity uh, nearby entity speed up. So if we do do that, that's great. It's going to work and no problems. But what we need to do is catch the condition where it doesn't get passed correctly. Correct. So let's go and grab that. So we're going to say if this works, then great. However, if it doesn't work, then we're going to say throw new exception and could not pass uh, property. Uh, prop entity uh, speed up as a true or false. So there we go. So we'll do that. So, so if it doesn't work, then we'll just say, yeah, it needs to be a true or false. And that's all we need to do. We just need to do the speed, whether it's going to speed up here or not, and then have that as a true or false. Um, so there's a eight years to steal the alpha. Been around a while. Uh, so seven days to die is eight years old already. Dang. Oh, okay. Uh, we're like a we're like a team of four people. It's done when it's done. <laughs> I thought their team would expand it quite uh, a bit actually. Um, maybe maybe not so much now. I'm not sure. Um, now the other thing we've also got to do is give this a default value as well. So that's the other thing we can't forget. So we've got to go this uh, dot nearby entity speed up um, equals false. So set it to false by by default, and then the user can enable it if they want to. So. If they want to enable it, then they just set that to true, and then it will register down in our in our property right here. So you'll then go ahead and uh, change this to true, if so. And if that's fine, then that's all good. Now the next thing we need to do um, is we need to so coordinate health we can save here. We've got rid of all those extra things we don't need to worry about. Now the next thing we need to do is okay. So this requires new entities. Now the thing we need to do here is we need to um add this in here as well so we need to add here uh whether it requires a speed up or not so we're going to set it down what do you want to do nearby entities needed um so where have i got my other boolean values uh nearby blocks required or tags nearby blocks range nearby entity range uh, requires no um okay let's do it here private bool and then we should say requires, um, or we should say um, use speed up. There you go. So we'll just call it use speed up, and then that can be uh, that can be processed here. So save variables that are called on write and read. Um, so once we've done that, we need to go into here, and then in our set required nearby entities method, we're going to then assign it here. So we're going to go this use speed up, and then we're going to call this. Uh, uh, nearby entity, uh, nearby entity use, uh, or nearby entity speed up. Okay, so now we haven't got a parameter for that, so what we need to do is we need to add that parameter into our method here. So we need to, in our method here, we need to go uh, bool and then nearby entity use, uh, or nearby entity speed up. Okay, so nearby entities uh, speed up here. So once you've done that, um, that can then get assigned here. But that's actually going to break our block class here. So we need to go ahead and make sure that when we're setting the tile entity here, um, that we also pass in the speed up as well. So we need to go this dot transformation property parser uh, nearby entity speed up. There we go, and we pass that in there, and that fixes it. So essentially what we've done is we've assigned it in the property parser class. In our block class, we send that data straight to the tile entity, and then in our, in our tile entity, then we can use that info to do what we want. So let's go ahead and see now how we can get this to work. So the first thing I need to do is we need to add these new methods to the very top up here. So when we instantiate this thing, 
um, under Tile Entity Transformer. So move all the way to the top here. Um, what we need to do is we need to add uh, when you first set it up. Uh, use hash has power has this one. This one is fine. We don't need to adjust that one. What we do need to adjust though is we need to in our in our clone method, um, like if we're setting it up for another one, uh, we need to go ahead and do it here. So we need to say uh, this dot uh, use uh, use speed up equals. So this is just copying it from another tile entity. So other dot use speed up. So we're going to set those together, and then we also need to go down here and say right down here does exactly the same so this you speed up is other you speed up there we go so now you can detect um, if a speed up is required and we can actually clone it to other tile entities if we need to um, so now we can go down here and we also have to do this in our read and write as well so we have to make sure that we're doing this in, a, in the correct order so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write it above requires user access so from this perspective we're going to have to do bw dot write and then we're going to go this use speed up okay now in our read method um we actually just um we actually have requires user access but we have to do this in the same order so because i did it below requires user access we have to do it here so we've got to go this you speed up there we go so this you speed up equals uh and then just br dot read rule there we go so br dot read boolean and there we go so now we can read and write this so when we save and load the game this uh this parameter will be saved as well um so that's fine so when a tile entity is loaded we can just go ahead and read that data back in now what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to figure out a way to handle the uh the speed up right so what we need to do is if we go right to the top in update uh update can happen handle adding to queue handle process and queue so what we need to do is let's look at our handle adding to queue because in this area here essentially what i've done is i've created a, a, a data structure that pretty much takes in a load of items and stores them in a queue for when it when the output happens so what it does is it takes all the inputs stores them into a queue and then when there's a, when the elapsed time has passed it pops that thing off the end of the queue and gives the outputs so what we need to do is we need to look at um this one here so item stack locations so we need to figure out um story items locations to our previous state um so if story items this time is changed tq dot remove entry dot jobs so we need to store ready items here uh locations is a list of ints and item stacks so transformation time here uh, is right here if this queue that transmission time so what we need to do is we need to we need to change the transformation time based on whether the speed modifier is true um and vrs is false <laughs> gotta be in my computer program class uh call that a c plus plus hell yeah <laughs> that's a good one Elsa. i like that one um right let me see um so yeah this this transformation time gets done here um i think this could be shortened kind of which is why it's complaining variable declaration can be inlined yeah which is why it's kind of out you long transformation time so all we need to do is we need to make a method here and we, do, we can just say um you long we can just say transformation time uh we can do the transformation time is and then let's just make a method i don't know we can just call it um uh get modified time and where you pass that in uh transformation time you long uh transformation time is get modified represents is for unsigned integer so this security action t major not transformation time location ah hold on a minute we have to ah hang on a minute I lost T data. So for each class T data in this collection, ah, what I might have to do 
ah, no, this this is not going to work. The transformation time stores uh, the next time that it's going to be output. So what we need to do is we need to, instead of doing it there, because otherwise we'll get transformation times that's in the past as the values get larger. What we need to do is we need to create a new transformation data object and then manipulate the transformation time within that object, um, which is uh, actually not too bad. So let's see. So the other thing we need to do then is if we're going to use the speed modifier, we need to know how many entities are stored or how many entities are detected around the block as well. So that's something we can do here. So we can do, uh, we need to store that as an integer. Um, show the block is powered, heated, etc. etc. So what we need to do is we need to create a an integer which says how many of the how many correct entities around here uh no it says rose red violet or blue unexpected uh unexpected uh indent in line 22. <laughs> uh progery jokes are fun but only when executed properly yes that is correct all right so we're going to do private so we'll do private int and this is going to be uh entities nearby because we need to know how many entities nearby to then work out the um, the time the time that we need to change it to, right? So we don't we don't really need to read and write this. All we need to do really is just set this to zero when we instantiate that. So we just go this dot entities nearby equals zero. Now the main reason we don't need to write this to our save file is because um, this can just get calculated once the game loads, right? The, this is something that can just we can just be like, okay, now the game's loaded. Well, you know, we didn't we don't know how many there are, but uh, just look again. So it can be calculated once the game loads, and that's fine. So we don't need to even save that. Um, the same thing we can do when it has um, when we set up our tile entity here, we can just go this dot entities nearby. And we can set that to zero. So when you first instantiate the tile entity, uh, when you first like place the block in the world and it calls the tile entity method, it will just be set to zero, right? So, and then we can pretty much store that in here as well. So in our clone, this dot entities nearby, and that's going to be zero as well. And then the same with this one as well. So yeah, we don't need to we don't need to copy those values. Those things we don't need to worry about copying or saving because that's just going to get calculated in real time when the game runs. So we don't need to worry about that. How you doing, Eltiega? Welcome to the stream. It says, uh, Max, you misspelled the title. <laughs> I misspelled the title. Oh dear, what did I put? What, did I put? what, was, I, what was the correct spelling for the title, Eltiega? I'm sure, I'm sure I did. I always misspell. I always misspell things. It's a, it's a habit of mine. Um, okay, so what we need then is a method to work out... Um, well, first of all, we need to go into our... We need to go into the has nearby entities thing, and unfortunately, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to see. Um... Ah, actually, I tell you what we can do. This method here, we we can still inline this. What we can do is we can we can output the number of entities there are, right? So we can just go out int uh, uh, entities uh, or out int uh, count. Right. So then, what we can do is we can say um, we can say count here. We can say count equals this. Get entities and well name and how many are needed. Um, so we can do this, and then we can just say uh, return uh, count greater than or equal to needed. And then what we can do is, as well as getting a true or false of whether we have enough, we can also output how many there are as an as an extra output of this method, right? And then all we need to do here is over in this one, we can just say we can just then say out, and then this dot entities uh, entities nearby, and that will then this method in a one liner will store how many entities are nearby for us uh, without us having to go over multiple lines and you know. We'll do that as well. Uh, unless more is a word or a pun I haven't heard about. <laughs> that's 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 that that's a, that's just like a, a like a kind of aggressive way of saying more. So we need more. <laughs> so that's good. that's like adding more more things. So that's kind of how it's intended. Um, okay, so there we go. So has new entities is covered up in Dubai. So this just by calling this method now, we will get um, we will get a, a list of how many entities are nearby. 
Now, with that info, we can then write our other method here. So that's handle processing job, key ready items. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to restore previous state. Um, here we go. So above the read method here, we're going to say um, if, if the speed modifier is used, if speed modifier is enabled, uh, calculate how much faster the speed should be. Okay. So then what we can do is we can say um, this can be a protected method because we're not going to call this outside any of this class here. So we can say protected, um, we can say protected int, because um, we probably want to keep it in a, or yeah, protected int, we probably want to keep it in a number of, a matter of seconds here um, and go from there. So as you know, we, we'll do this as a float and we can we can work on casting to the correct type. Uh, so we want a public float and we want to get modified time and then from we'll pass in uh, float time. So then what we want to do is we want to say um, if and then we'll say use speed up. So if we're not using the speed up, then just return the time. So return time. So if we're not using speed up, we don't need to worry about any calculations. A lot quicker just to do a quick check and then say, nope, don't need to, didn't do that. Um, that says one more word learned. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, that says, it's 5 a.m. Hashtag silly melts of time. Hashtag silly melts of time. <laughs> okay. So then what we need to do is we need to float modifier equals. So what we want to do is we want to look at, no, the other thing was we want to do is we're going to say if because we want to make sure that we don't do a, a time sort of divide by zero thing, because that's bad. Uh, we're going to do if um, entities nearby equals zero, then just return the time as well. So if there's no no entities nearby, then don't worry about it, return the time. doesn't matter. So the next thing then is we want to go ahead... There's no entities nearby, now piss off. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> No, it's easy to buy. Well, we don't give a shit. Go away. Um, right. So then, what we want to do Ooh. is we're going to say um, we're going to say time modifier. And uh, well, actually, an easier way to do this is to say if the entity is nearby is less than the amount of entities needed, of course, uh, or less than or equal to. Because if it's equal to, then the time modifier less will just be equal to. Um, so then we're going to say if it's less than uh, uh, entities. Um, So entities nearby has nearby entities. Nearby entities needed. Here we go. So if the entities nearby is less than or equal to the nearby entities needed, just return the time as well. Because like I said, if there's the same amount of entities nearby as how many are actually needed, then there's not going to be a speed up either. So if you want two entities and there are two entities nearby, well, you know, you don't need to calculate a speed up because that's the base rate, right? So the next thing we can do is we can then say um, float um, time modifier equals and this is going to be the nearby entities needed <coughs> excuse me divided by um, the entities nearby so that's what we're going to set this to so the modifier then is going to be multiplied by the current time to then get the the, the time so essentially what that means is uh, the way this will work so Say if we have so here's how the modifier calculates stuff. So so let's say um, for example something takes ten seconds to happen, and we want I don't know two entities nearby. So this is like a situation here. So let's just say assume we have five entities around. Then the modifier will be. The number of entities we want, or the number of entities that are needed, divided by the number of entities we have, which goes to about 0.4, right? So then the time will become 0.4. Uh, yeah, time will become 0.4 times 10, which will then output to 4 seconds. 
So yeah, if we have, say if we have time of 10 seconds, we want two entities to by, let's just assume we have five, the modifier becomes two over five, which makes the time reduced to 40%, and then the time will go down to four seconds. So there you go. Um, so that should work. Uh, BR says, have fun, guys. I'm out. Catch you in another stream. No worries, dude. Thank you very much for coming along. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next one. So bye for now. Thank you, BR. All right. So that, that kind of works, doesn't it? Because then you can make it so that... Um, you can make it then so that it would go ahead and go down from there. So yeah, things would then get a little bit faster as you have more of them. Um, now this kind of uh, this gets the, the gains that you get get exponentially slower. So say eventually if you had like ten, it requires to get a double gain of that. It would then become uh, 0.2, right? So essentially then if you have twenty, the only way you could get down to not to one second is if you have 20 entities so although the initial gains are quite quick the exponential gains slow it down by quite a lot after that so essentially if you wanted to reduce the time to one second from 10 you'd need 20 entities around it right so there is there is that gain as well so and of, and of course the amount of starting entities you need will also affect it quite heavily um so if you only needed one entity around there you don't need 10 entities to reduce it to one second so it kind of depends on the starting number as well um but yeah the time modifier then all we need to do is multiply that um then we just do return uh time modifier times time and once you've done that it will go ahead and return you the reduced amount of time so that kind of works so we could probably do this in a one-liner as well so we could just do we could bracket this first. I know multiplication and division are the same computational order from left to right, but let's go ahead and just do this, um, and then we can just return. Uh, we can just return this, uh, which would work just as well. So if we do this, uh, and just do that, there we go. So we can just return the nearby entities that are needed divided by the nearby entities that we actually have, then times the time, and there we go. So then, as you have more entities, the time will get faster. Uh, the time to transform will uh, become less, so things will happen faster, which kind of works. So then the next thing we're going to do is in our transformer in our transformer block class here, we need to go ahead and look at the transformation data that we get and apply this time modifier. So let's see where that is. So let's check if it's heated. Can tick. Um, so we need to do. We need to look at update tick, don't we? Handle adding to queue. Okay, so for each transformation data in the co in the collection that we have, uh, the tuple is this, and we have we have our job. Um, so what we need to do is we need to queue the t data here, and that shows you when the transformation time is. Um, I don't think we even use the transformation time at this point either. So let's see out transformation time so for t data here so let's look at transformation job here so the the u long time that we pass in is when the transformation is going to happen um so this dot time equals time uh transformation over t data uh so that uh is to create a new job in progress um Get transformation data so it's ready so this current time is greater than this dot time um, uh, let me see job progress transformation t data um, so I gotta check them so is ready in current time if current time is greater than or equal to this time so yeah it looks like when I pass it in I pass in the time when it's gonna be completed um okay so this dot t data is t data so what i need to do then is transform to t data to time do i pass that in here or do i pass it in a different way bless you babe bless you again Fady. wow uh read and write write delta okay let me just double check my method because it's been a it's been like a year since i've seen this uh method here uh, you long transmission time. This time, Q ready items. Okay, here we go. So it's going to be in this one. Transformation time is zero. Data has all inputs. Return false. Add to Q. D D data. Add to Q. Okay, so it's actually an add to Q. Here we go. 
So time is zero, job is null. Added is this tq dot add t data out time out job return added tq dot add. So that adds okay that adds a transformation job here. So what we need to do is yeah I think as long as we modify the transformation data um, yeah create secure if it's not defined gives an empty job then it calculates the transformation time as a world time. Um, which gives it a u long here. Um, okay, so I think, yeah, I think all we need to do is manipulate the transformation time in my object here. So in the, the t data object, we can just uh, manipulate it outside of this. So I think as long as I do it up here, um, we should be good. So let's go and look for my very first method in here to get this running. So we need to look for update can happen, handle adding to queue, because this is where this is where I call the method here. So uh, what we want to do is just as I thought, we're gonna get our t data, we're gonna modify it, we're gonna we're gonna modify the transformation time. Um, or we'll create a new one first and duplicate it. Um, and then we should be able to do we should then be able to do that. So um do I have a clone method in transformation data? Let me see. Um let me see. So I can pass in the list of items. Um I probably want to get a clone one here. Uh I probably want to make a clone method, which would probably be nice to have so I can just auto clone it, return an return an independent one. Um and then because otherwise what will happen is if I return the same one and write to the same thing, it will keep multiplying it by the uh by the value and that won't be good. So read input string. So I'm I'm assuming transformation time is stored as a I'm assuming the time is stored as a integer value, isn't it? Um which might not be so good. Let me see. Uh transformation time. Let me double check here. Public uh oh no it's stored as a double. Okay. In interesting. Okay. So that's actually a good thing because then I can I can go ahead and uh, work that in in terms of world ticks. So yeah, we can actually have it as a double. Look at that. Um, so yeah, that's fine then. So we can look at this transformation uh, default transformation time. So that's what it's set to by default. Um, okay, so that's actually good. So what we need to do is make a clone method in here, um, and then make sure that we can return a new one. Um, so that'll be a nice function to have, and we should have really had this. Um, we should have really done this uh, a lot earlier on, shouldn't we? So we're going to do, uh, here we go. So grab this one and then we're going to do uh, clones, the transformation object. So we can write sheet it uh, and not affect the original. Okay, so then we're going to go uh, public transformation data. Uh, clone and then from that we're going to pass in transformation data uh, t data okay and then we're just going to go ahead and return essentially then we can just return a new one right so we can just say um, so let me see we're going to say what is it stored in here so we pass in the t data and then we pretty much say uh, these are all public anyway, so we can say, yeah, just create a new one, return new, double string, uh, inputs, outputs. Yeah, so we can just copy the dictionary. Yeah, we just copy the dictionary and copy the time. Um, and copy these values here. And that's literally that's literally all we got to do. So we just copy them over. And that's pretty much it. So we set a new one. Um, Transformation data says dictionary string. Okay, so we can just go uh, transformation data. Here we go. Transformation data t data two is new transformation data, and then we can just say t data two dot uh, inputs outputs equals t data dot inputs outputs there we go and then we can say and what we could do we could also give this um 
we could also give this the uh, a time modifier parameter as well, um, which might be good because we can clone it, and then also with the time modifier, so we could do it in one line. Uh, but then again, it might not be. It might be more better to do it explicitly and state it explicitly. So yeah, you know, what, we'll, we'll state it explicitly. I think that's probably a better way to do it, um, just because it's clearer to read them. So then t data two dot time transformation time equals t data dot transformation time and then t data to dot show probability is obviously false because we don't want it to duplicate recipes t data to dot show recipe or use recipe i think are called this is more for this is more just to get a clone out so we don't want to like show the same thing in the crafting grid Okay, so there we go, so we got that one, um, which seems to work. Um, is there any other properties we need to set here? So craft area. Um, <coughs> sorry. Sorry, Miller. Uh, please transfer my line like this. So that goes and adds. Uh, do we really need to add that to the hash map though? No, we don't need to add it to the hash map because we're cloning an existing one. So then we can just go. Because yeah, as long as we've got an existing one, then we're actually pretty good. So then I just gotta go. So inputs and apples are just strings, so we don't need to worry about those. Show probability and then craft area. Well, the craft area can remain where you can uh, remain the same. So t data two dot craft area equals t data dot craft area. There we go, and then just return data 2. There we go. Um, and that way we can essentially return that and manipulate that directly then. So now what we can do is in our tile entity transformer class we can say um, transformation data modified data equals t data dot clone um and actually no we don't even need to pass in the um think about it no we don't even need to pass in a data object do we because we can just go uh we just do use this in this class directly so we can just do this uh there we go perfect just do that and then we don't even have to pass in that as an argument oh. there you go so we can pass that through the debating yep <laughs> debating debating <laughs> Mm. Okay, so then we can literally then we don't have to pass that in as the first argument to the method. We can just call clone from the object to get that out, and then all we need to do is we just need to do um, uh, modified data dot time or transformation time equals uh, get modified get modified time uh, for modified data dot transformation time. Actually, no, that's not that. It's get modified time for t data, the transformation time. Now, the main reason we got to do it that way, um, let's see, let's, let's, cannot convert from double to float. Um, all right, I got an even better idea then. Yeah, I got to, I got to hack around that. So mm. Easy way to hack around that is just to be make my uh, method use the same type. Um, so it was above read and write, wasn't it? Uh, this one. So just change it from float to double. I know double precision float might be a little, a uh, little bit too much here, but yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, there you go. I mean, double precision, double precision is is fine. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we can do that one. So grab that, and that will apply an accurate modifier to this. Um, and now that shouldn't provide any more issues, right? So once you've done that, uh, then in our hand ladding to Q method. Um, the modified data's transformation time is now based on the time modifier. Um, and then all we've got to do is we just go ahead, instead of passing t data here, we just pass in modified data. And, oh, hang on, I've uh, somehow moved all the way over there. Not dot pf. <laughs> so now just pass in the modified data here. So then essentially we'll pass in the modified data here. Uh, and then we'll get out the uh, the transformation times and stuff like that. 
uh, and then we output the transformation time when it's going to next happen. Um, and I think that is, I think that is all good now. So we should be able to now, as we have more entities around the block, we should then be able to have an extra time modifier to say, yeah, now that block does its job faster, which would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? So I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty good. Um, as long as that's all good, we should be ready to test that out and see if it works. So let's go ahead and set something. Let's go ahead and set something up here so we can try this out. So what I want to do is we've currently got in here in our class here we've got it set to 10 seconds, right? Uh, no, that's 300 seconds. Let's let's set it lower a minute. Let's it's like uh, let's set it's like 10 seconds. Okay, and then let's say it requires, let's kind of use that example, let's say it requires two chickens around the block, and let's enable now the um, the speed up modifier. So the property name for that is defined in transformation property parser, which is right down the bottom. So if we go all the way down through all this code, through all this stuff and things, we should find it. <laughs> uh, nearby entity speed up. So copy this and then we're going to go property name equals and then we can just say nearby entity speed up value equals true there we go so we can go ahead and do that and now what we should see is that the time is so we'll, we'll spawn in two chickens at first and then we'll say okay the uh it's now uh working at this uh this efficiency but then what we can do is we can say okay um we we can we can then go ahead and say okay let's put two more chickens does it go twice as fast and if it does then we know it's we know it's working as we intended to um because like i said that should that should be a feature it should be that you know you have all this uh you have all this stuff and it should work faster if you have more entities around it right so it would make sense yeah. so let's go ahead and see if we can get that to work so but once... many games make sense yes <laughs> For many games, it would make sense. It would definitely make sense. It would make a lot of Melzer sense. Wait, Mel, 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 Melzer sense? What is Melzer sense? Is it Melzer sense? Is it not Melzer sense? I don't know. If it makes sense. It make sense. I don't make, make sense. So, you don't make sense? It's the weekend. It certainly make no sense. The weekend? You certainly make no sense for what you really need is bandage. <laughs> yeah. All right. Rocky Balmer. Oh, oh he's chicken. having chocolate again. Yeah, I know. Oh, hang on. Uh, syntax error. Dot expected fail to compile mods DLL. That is under let me see uh block transformer.cs two eight four uh two eight four sixty four. Okay, hang on a second, let me go and have a look at where that little error is. So block transformer, where be you? Where be you? Uh, let's see, so I don't need string help or anything. Let's close down any unnecessary classes. Block transformer, there we go. Two eight four six four. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it, if I put a comma there to separate my function arguments. <laughs> All right, now build it. Let's see. I'd rather get red text now than later. <laughs> I can't believe I've actually made stuff like this work, though, in a stream. That was actually quite cool. It's awesome. All right, here we go. Fridge is reversing over you. <laughs> the fridge is reversing. God, I'd be scared if I come around and like see a fridge just like oh. backing up in front of me. Fucking running now! <laughs> it's like your fridge is running. Ah! <laughs> All right, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Take it, baby. Hmm. Hmm, he says. Well, the package has arrived. <gasps> I think that is. It's on the RAM, is it? Or is that my. Is that the screwdriver set? That's probably the screwdriver set, actually. 
Let me see. I'm gonna open it, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> Package opening on stream, guys. Not that you guys can see anything right now because I don't have a webcam, but still. Let's see what we get here. I think that's the screwdriver set. Most likely. Yeah. Computer. Uh, oh, it's a, there's a box in the box. Well, that's convenient. Okay, what are we going here? There's a box in the box in a bubble wrap. Bubble wrap! Yay! Yay! I love bubble wrap. I sent my daughter a whole roll of bubble wrap once. Okay. Oh, we do have some red text here. Happy birthday. Okay, so we did get some red text, and what was that? Uh, let me see. Mm. Red text is bad. There's only two lines and it's gone now. Uh, let me see. Let me go and see if it's a problem with mine. Uh, could not pass property nearby entity speed up as a true or false. Ah! I think that might be an issue. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so. Could not pass that as a false. Um, so there's, I got a box and a box and a bubble wrap box. Box and a box and a bubble wrap box and a box and a box and a bubble wrap box and a box and a box and a melts up box. Breakable. Box and a box just box. Melts up, melts up, boxy, melts up. Breakable but sensitive. 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 Right, let me see here. So let me go back to blocks here. Uh, new entity speed up value true. Okay, that's that looks legit. Okay, in the box. let me see. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm gonna fix this up first before I have a look at what's in the box. <laughs> so, things must be fixed before I'm allowed to look in the box. <laughs> okay. Back before reward. Oh, that's that's all it is. <laughs> Exclamation mark. That's all I need to do. Reverse the statement. <laughs> I was going to say, if this is able oh. to be passed as a Boolean value, tell the user it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a smarty cool. <laughs> if the user's right, just tell them they're oh, wrong because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> Why every time I laugh do I cough now? I, I must be having lung problems. True. Thank, thanks for that detail, Fade. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> At least you don't pee when you cough. Just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, it kind of, it's kind of implied, Fadey. <laughs> yeah, I hear you giggling in the background now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like your choice of words, but the implication is still there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Try again. <laughs> That's funny, though. <laughs> hey, the user's correct. Just tell them they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if real number two, check real number one. <laughs> yeah, <this is> <laughs> yeah. Rule one: you don't talk about five club. Rule two: see rule one. Yes. <laughs> and welcome to the zombie fight club. He's breaking the fight club rules. Get him. <laughs> But wait, didn't you just talk about Fight Club 2? Damn it! Uh, let me see. Yep, I think this is my precision screwdriver set. Let me see here. Uh, bloody hell, how many pieces are in there? Fucking Laura. Okay. That's gonna be very precise. Alright, well. Good, I guess. Uh, don't know how to use like 90%. Don't know how to use like 90% of that shit, but okay. <laughs> but hey, I got bubble wrap. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's like, Max, I didn't you didn't get any parcels today. Oh, no, it's like, it's like, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm going into the rad zone. <laughs> <laughs> Next when I come out green, just like, <laughs> 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 oh, bubble wrap is so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do realize I'm doing this live to the entire world of six people right now. But okay, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let us test. So, 
Don't use that tile entity, use a new one. Because remember, every time you test, you always want to use a new one. Uh, especially when you made some changes. Right, so here we go. So, requires two nearby entities to work. Requires animals chicken. Okay, so that has updated, as you can see. So again, XML configurable. So, let's go ahead and see now. So let's go ahead and get our item. So we just need a resource rock small, right? That's the one we need. So grab these. And we're going to go ahead and put those into there. Right, so currently it's not going to work. Cool. That's what we want. We don't want it to work. Wait, no, actually it's no, it's cornmeal now, isn't it? Um, because I changed it from small rocks to cornmeal. And then get snakes. So all we got to do is check that the check that the cornmeal goes faster as we go. Um, so yeah, now what we want to do is we go ahead and spawn in a couple of chickens here, and then we'll just watch what happens. So, come into here. Nope, don't want to see my my, my body. There we go. Uh, animal chicken. So spawn two chickens in. That now is working. Uh, there we go. So it should take about 10 seconds to go ahead and process this. And we should see an egg maybe come out of here or another one will come down. So, okay, there we go. So, taking about, yeah, taking about 10 <laughs> seconds. Oh, welcome to the stream, Raven. Welcome back. How are you doing? Um, right, let's see. So, there we go. So, that seems to work. So, now if we spawn a few more around <coughs> here. Excuse me. <coughs> so, now if I spawn like lots of chickens around here, does this go faster now? Let's see if it does. So, now we should see it maybe yeah. starting to go faster. Let's see. So it might take. It might need. Yeah, there we go. It is going faster. See, Look, it's going a lot faster now. It goes down every like four or five seconds instead of every ten. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's see. So maybe the time modifier is not. Oh no, there we go. There we go. It did go down faster. See, look at that. It's actually sped up. See, now we got a ton of chickens around there. It's sped up uh, by quite a bit. Wow. Egg. Yep. We got. We got snake out. Nice, we actually got uh, pretty lucky with that. So yeah, um, so we definitely have to lower the probability of it. But yeah, as you can see, the more chickens you have around it now, the, um, the more cornmeal they consume, and then the more eggs you get. Obviously, like, the timer will be a lot lower than that, because, you know, it's it's quite ridiculous that they would eat that much cornmeal in that amount of time. So yeah, I think if we set a base time to five minutes, and maybe you require at least two chickens around it, then they can produce eggs in here. 10% um, of the time, which I think would be a lot more balanced. Um, so there we go, we've actually made now a block that can act like a chicken coop, and it can go ahead and store, because um, remember, the chickens will actually walk around, so with, with a block like this, you will have to make an enclosure of some kind, right? So you have to get the chickens, but you have to make an enclosure as well, because otherwise they're just going to, you know, run away. So, you know, in order for this to work... The chickens don't run away. Oh, uh, they, do, they, do the, uh, they do in the main game, of course. You you got you got to chase them and catch them. But what I might do is I'll make it so that their move speed is a lot slower um, after you've caught them because I can do that. Um, because mm. yeah, that'd be that'd be really cool. Because yeah, you got this one. <laughs> Look at this guy. It's like. Have you ever watched um, Ranch Simulator? No, I've never watched Ranch Simulator actually. Oh, uh, you can just pick chickens up. Look at them up close, put them on your truck, like stand them in the back. All right. Sit on the roof, on the roof racks, so on the tailgate. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> Just sit there. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, like, eggs are now being produced up, so you can now, uh, essentially now we have um, in Fennec Core now, a way that you can code in your own chicken coops in XML. That's all you need. You just need pure XML now to do that. Um, yay. You don't have to program it because I've just done it for you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that was a, yeah. a nice little challenge, actually. Um, there you go. Uh, so Ray, Ray says that's how the fun pimp got, got their sound. <laughs> no, what, what what they did is they yeah. to, to get to get the to get the fun pimps they just record they, to get the sound of the fun pimps they just recorded Joel waking up in the morning. Uh. <laughs> just like. Rrr. <laughs> what how loud he snores when he goes to bed <laughs> I, I don't know why I think about these things how loud does Joel snore <laughs> everyone's like you freak <laughs> it's just like um, oops <laughs> no, no not freak what are you talking about I'm usually the one that asks those kind of dud questions <laughs> alright 
slaughtering time. <laughs> oh no, I'm not looking. No, no. There we go. And look, now that they're dead, it doesn't work. See, even though they're still there, it doesn't work anymore. Not a bad amount of eggs though, look at that. So yeah, dead and dead entities now no longer no longer function here. So that's pretty good. <laughs> and the cool thing is now, you can actually do you can actually do like a rabbit hutch style design as well. Um, to make the rabbits produce resources. I don't know what they would really produce, like poop. <laughs> but uh, you can now do that. You as well. could use for something. Sorry, what? Oh, uh, like, like rabbit, rabbit fur. fur. Hmm. Hmm. Make rabbit burgers. <laughs> something rabbit stew. Rabbits on a stick. Rabbit kebabs. Hmm. Kebabs or whatever you call them. Oh, those poor chickens. <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> shame, ah! shame, shame. <laughs> and I'll be doing chickens like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Terrible noise. See how close I can get into its mouth. Hang on. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know why I'm trying this stuff. Hang oh, on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's close, like, oh, like, right inside. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we like, guys? Oh, dear. So, yeah, Melzi, your, uh, your building is currently a murder testing ground for chickens. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw <thought> C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, the poor thing. <laughs> 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 so the next thing we've got to do oh, dear. is we've got to make it so that you can catch a chicken and put it down, right? Now, I've already written code to do that, so I just have to kind of remind myself what it is in the XML. Now, luckily, for everybody here, there's actually an examples thing included. Um, catchable chicken example. Placeable chicken example. Look at that. So you've actually got, um, so you've got like all different kinds of... Uh, different examples that you can go through so anyone who's like using Venicore will actually have access to the example XML so they can kind of just look through and see what's going on so essentially what I've got here um, is an items so essentially uh, animal chicken items so what I've done is I've added an item for um, the chicken and uh, you can go ahead and uh, place that down um, into the world so we've got this uh, animal chicken item uh, so essentially when you catch the chicken, it will turn into an item that you can put into your inventory right here. So I've kind of got this as an example here. The other thing, the other thing I need to do is um, for the placeable chicken, right? Um, I should have uh, I should have put these into one example, catchable and placeable chickens, which I probably will do actually now I think about this. Because essentially all I did with the chicken um, is, here we go, so entity class, and uh, entity animal catchable. Giving an entity class of this class type will allow you to pick up the entity by killing it, kind of. The class extends from animal rabbit by default, mm -hmm. so it's best to make sure you use it only on small game. But yeah, um, you can set a property name class and entity animal catchable. Uh, this will make the entity catchable when you would usually kill it. Uh, property item uh, item to return value is your item. Uh, this tells the game what item to put in your inventory when the entity is picked up. So there's an optional one here, um, holding item, which is your item. Uh, your character must be holding the following item to make sure that the entity gets picked up. Defaults to melee hand player if none is specified. So essentially, um, what this means is, as long as you have an empty hand, if you would usually kill the kill the animal by punching it with your empty hand, instead you would actually pick it up. Um, so you would have to like punch it a few times to like essentially simulate trying to like catch the thing, and then you know once you actually were about to kill it, it would actually get picked up and put into your inventory. So this is how you would make it work with the chicken. So essentially, um, I've added a new one just called uh, Animal Chicken Pickup, uh, which just extends the base chicken one, so it copies all its properties. Just change the class to Entity Animal Catchable. And then the holding item is just the, the, the player hand. Uh, and then it returns the animal chicken item into your bag. So once you pick it up, it will despawn the chicken in the world. And then it will go ahead and uh, plop that into your bag as a caught chicken, which is pretty cool. And then there's also another example in here that I've already done. Um, 
a long ass time ago. This is uh, this is like two year old code, so I might be having to have a look at improving some of it. But if we go into placeable chicken example, um, there is items right here. So um, here we go. Item action, spawn entity. This allows you to spawn any type of entity when left or right clicking. Uh, the requirements, of course, for that is uh, the action that you need. And then in there, you just say the property class equals spawn entity, and then the property name is entity, and the value is the entity name that you want it to spawn. And all that does is this allows you to spawn an entity when you left or right click whilst holding the item in your hand. The below example shows how to spawn in a chicken from the hand. So all you have to do is like there's the animal chicken placeable item. Um, so just so we have that here. Um, essentially, all you do is under your action one class when you right click, you just say spawn entity, and then it will just spawn a chicken. That's pretty much what you do. So just spawn entity, make it an animal chicken, and it will go ahead and place one of those in the world for you. Simple as that. <laughs> so it's actually really not too hard. chicken. Yeah, it's actually really not too too hard. So what we could probably do is use this code to say make a um to say make like a tamed a tamed chicken right so say what we what we could do is we could say well when once you catch the chicken and you place it down again we can reduce its movement speed and we can remove the ai task that makes it run that makes it run away from players um because then you can just be like yeah you, mm. you kind of caught it it's tame now so you can kind of put it down then you won't really have to worry about it wandering off too far um mm. i could probably make it um i think you can make it so that once you place it down you can make it hang around uh hang around an area as well so you can make it just like if you place it near your chicken coop it can hang around in the uh hang around in the coop um mm. and just go ahead and uh do that as well so there's a, co a couple of things we can do with that hang around around the coop yeah, it can just hang around there and just like stay within the general area. Um, you obviously... set it a time so that they automatically go in there at a time. Mm. You do that. What? So they're like, wait, if it goes to night time, they kind of go inside it or something like that. There's no real. Yeah. AI. So if it gets to like six o'clock at night, it once it gets to the time, it would. Oh, just, like a recall you know, time. Something yeah. Would, yeah um... And it would send the chickens to their home. That's a bit more involved than I've tried, but that I know how you would roughly oh, do it. Okay. It's to do with AI tasks and things like that. So you'd have to set it based uh, on. You could probably make a thing that gets the time of day, and then push it back to uh, to, to the, and then say when it reaches that time of day. It's it's kind of AI tasks based on the time of day. So you'd have um, there probably is a way to do that somehow. Um, because the zombies yeah. walking and running aren't based on AI tasks. That's just based on oh, if it's nighttime, set movement speed to this kind of thing, which is a little bit different. But oh. there's probably there's probably some kind of way. Couldn't to do you that. set their movement speed to sleep or something? Or, or... Oh, you could you could like set it to zero at night, kind of thing, so they would so they would sleep, kind of thing. You could like imitate them sleeping almost, um, which which is possible. So when okay. it gets to nighttime, it's just it just sets to zero. Which would which would be possible actually? Ma says, uh, "Do you have to do something so it does not despawn?" Yeah, that's the other thing I need to check. Um, so I, there is a property apparently that uh, that allows you to do that, um, and I think it's under because if you think about it, the traders never despawn, do they? They they get saved with the game. So we would need to do it so that the chickens you have don't despawn either. Now the thing I'm thinking to do then is if we have um imagine turning up to the traders and the traders despawned <laughs> yeah i know well some, really? sometimes sometimes he does <laughs> and that's a game bug i don't know why he does but yeah sometimes he does I've seen trader gen get like glitched in the floor and yeah sometimes it does happen of crazy things but um, nothing too much yeah it's not it's not too bad but yeah if we go into the game folder here if we look in we look in the entity classes here so let me drag this over so you guys can see not under the chat but yeah there is a way we need to like not have them despawn so if we go data and then we go mm -hmm. config and then if we look at the uh entity classes i think there's a trader um we type in trader here uh class name is npc trader una template uh hide and spawn menu is true so you can't spawn them in Faction is trader. Uh, it might be based on the faction. Um, prefab class parent. So AI task is approach and attack target. Uh, set as target pet. Data is entity live. Let's see what type. Set category organic. Task on D. 
death. Uh, archetype by Trader Joe. That's all the sounds. Move this one alive at 62. Move speed. Uh, so that's the move speed right there. So you can do move speed, aggro, panic, all that stuff. Uh, experience gain. Time stay after death. How much its uh, hit points has. Buff resistance. So resist all the buffs. So I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's the faction. Uh, if you set the faction as trader, it doesn't despawn. Because I think that's the only thing um, that handles that. But I'm not too sure. Uh, MC Trader UMA template. So let's look at Trader. Let me see. NPC map icon. NPC Trader template. Here we go. So it might be this one. So hide and spawn menu true. So actually, this is one here. So you got faction, this trader. Uh, well, I want something on kicks. Um, I've won a key. Oh, you want a key? Something Hooray! on on kicks. What does it yeah. unlock? I don't know. It just says congratulations, Mel's a DM me for key. Oh, oh shit! Hooray! Uh, yay! Let's see. Parent player. Oh gosh. Player. Let me see. NPC ID. Trader Eric, um, Trader Rick, uh, NT spawn. So it does have an NPC ID. Hmm. I'll probably have to have a look into that and see if I can figure out what it is. Because um, I remember, I remember Sphere was saying there was a way to do it. You know, trader Joel, uh, NC MC Human Trader. Uh, NPC ID Trader Joel, because it might be that we just have to set an NPC NPC ID and a couple of things like that. And Surge two. Surge two. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to ask on the discords and stuff and see if I can figure that out. Um, and then once I do, I can go ahead and make that work as well with the with the like catchable and placeable chickens. But yeah, we're kind of at that point where I can pretty much start working on that now. So now that we've uh, written that base code in the stream. Uh, now I can pretty much go away and uh, start tinkering, and uh, yeah, you guys got to see how uh, how I write some of my uh, crazy code underneath everything and see how it works. <laughs> so yeah, it's one of those things. Um, I have all the Twitch uh, Twitch supplies and stuff like that as well for the uh, Twitch integration. It looks like so there's a lot of those in there. But yeah, I, th I think you got to set your faction to trader. I think that's what it is that prevents them despawning. Um, and considering it's a, an animal kind of thing that's uh, that's a friendly one, it doesn't really matter, you know what I mean? So if it's a tame animal, you can just set it to that and uh, it uh, doesn't despawn. But there might be, before I go, let me see in, uh, let me see in Entity... Oh, where entity are you classes. going? Yeah, oh, where? it's that time of day. That time of day. <coughs> Indeed it is, Melza. Indeed it is. Mm, 5.47. 5.47. Hashtag crazy Melza. Neil says it's... Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So did here's sleep, the... though. Huh? You did sleep. did sleep, though. Yay! Mm. Okay, let me see if there's something Apparently in here. Apparently I was talking in my sleep, though. Oh, you were? <laughs> I was chatting in my sleep, though, Brickens. He says you're in chat while you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> all right, here we go. So here's oh, no, all I'm the... talking to here we go, here's all the properties. So we got mesh, uh, class, parent, avatar, controller. So these are all the XML properties you can use. Uh, replace material, tint material, add to material. Okay, right hand join. Uh, hand item crawler. Sickness, gassiness. Okay, wellness, food, water. <laughs> so the, 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 the fart yes, power they man. have, I guess. Yes. Uh, um, okay, is chunk observer. Oh, is that the one? It's Chunk Observer. That might be the one. Um, so yeah, that might be what it is. If it might be, it's Chunk Observer. Um, let me see where that's used. Hang on. Uh, so Chunk Observer. I remember so, seeing that somewhere. Yeah, I th I think it is that one. If it is Chunk Observer. Chunk something. Yeah. <sighs> B is enemy entity. Uh. So what does that get assigned to? So power immunity, weight, this channel, where did that go? Immunity, this one. So if we analyze this real quick, uh, we should be able to figure out where this goes. So that's assigned by 
entity class constructor. Uh, so let's go and have a look at that method. Why Where did you, you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cut and I go. What? Cut and I go. <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Told you it's mad time. Okay. The so, sun's coming up, you see? Let's go and find. Sun or upper's disease. Sun or upper's disease. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> Okay, Sun public door B is chunk of the So let's oh, analyze this. I just made rings with my cigarette. Oh, nice. Uh, right, that's Funny. assigned by... Stop it. <laughs> Child. <laughs> like, like, hey, hey, not. <laughs> honey, stop it. What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> initialize common. So that's assigned by is chunk observer, and then use initialize common here. So what does this do? So... Entity class dot list. So protected vector forward init common copy properties. Am I supposed to ask you that? Says do. The mod is sitting there saying, "What does this do?" And I was like, "Ah, I thought you were supposed to know." Well, I know a lot of why it does, but I'm not sure. Everything does. This is one of them things. So initialize common. If chunk observer, what class is Somebody keeps drinking my coffee. Uh, void create a model initialize MC model post in it uh, physics initializing yeah I think I think it's the chunk observer already but I'm not too sure I have to I have to ask about um, I had to ask around on that one because um, I was I was thinking that's probably what it is it's the ch it's a chunk observer one um, that it is meant to be but yeah I have a little look into that and see what we can do and uh, uh, do you have to do something uh oh wait yeah to do something it doesn't be fun yeah that's um i had to have a look into that because that's the last piece of the puzzle once i got that then we've got like you know then we've got the chickens we've got the stuff we've got the things we've got the, all the good stuff so <sighs> once we got that um once we got that we're we're ready um and then we can make uh i will have to make this like multi-blockable as well so we can have like uh because that'd be something pretty cool to have as well like a um like you can even do it with stuff like a pig pen or something like that, and then it will require you to have like mm. you know you're gonna have chickens like all the yeah. other animals. <laughs> <laughs> what other animals? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing though. You can have like a you, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. You can have like a you know like a, a, a milking thing for cows and stuff like that. If we find like a cow to add into the game. Because that's how you can make milk renewal, It'd right? It'd be cool to be able to find a cow and less of it and take it home. <laughs> Yeah, I have to see if there's a way I can do it. Okay. A bit like with Minecraft, you can kind of grab the, uh, you can kind of make it so that you can put a lasso on something, and then you can like walk and it will follow you, kind of thing like that. So maybe yeah, something like that. I think I've be... seen something like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens in Minecraft. The Lego dudes walking along. <laughs> can you imagine that? You, you, you can imagine that if you try and like lasso a pig. <laughs> They're going to get fucking singing, like skiing along behind it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, ah! <laughs> yeah. You see, see this thing just like, oh. it's like, <laughs> and then there's a character behind it, like, <laughs> yes. then, then the pig gets pissed off and turns around, just bowls your character over. <laughs> oh, this thing got broken leg, broken arm. <laughs> dead <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right guys well i think at this point though we're at a pretty good point to end on stream because you know in this in this six hours we actually got that feature added that i want to a lot quicker than usual actually i i kind of thought we were going to have more issues than that um but it turns out that we we didn't so i'm pretty happy with that so mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and end it off here guys thank you all so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this one and i'll catch you guys in the next one and I'll be back tomorrow for a mystery stream. I don't know what it is yet, and uh, I probably won't know what it is tomorrow anyway. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. So, until then, bye! bye.